Welcome everybody to the 2024 Gorge Waterfalls 50K. I'm Zach Marion from Mountain Outpost, joined by a wonderful co-host here, Simon. How are we doing? Good morning. Very well. Very excited for today's race. Yeah, today's race should be a lot of fun. After yeah. the whole weekend, capping it off with just a thriller of a 50K yeah. really kind of makes it just like a fun, hard finish for uh, the race. So we are really excited today. We do have an update. We are going to be five to 10 minutes late uh according to our fearless leader at free trail dylan bowman we first want to start off by saying thank you to speedland these wonderful shoes right here for sponsoring this broadcast this is brought to you guys by speedland so show them some love give them a little love in the comments there um check out their products honestly some of the best shoes that uh, i've ever had the pleasure of putting on my feet um so definitely thank you to them we've got daybreak racing uh and free trail putting on and collaborating this race together. So for those of you who don't know, Gorge Waterfalls took a little bit of a hiatus because of a wildfire out in this area. And uh, Daybreak Racing and Dylan, who honestly has been just kind of a rock in the PDX culture and the Pacific Northwest culture, knew that this race had to come back. So they they resurrected this this race from the dead. And you know we, we're all here because of them. So huge shout out to those guys. Um, and also you're watching this on mountain outpost. We couldn't be more happy to have you here, um, as we build out this platform and we bring you all of the best events live. Uh, who knew, who knew Simon, like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I don't want to show my age too much. When I first got into this sport, like I thought it was awesome when I would get Twitter updates from yeah. aid stations yeah. randomly. I didn't know that we'd be able to watch a race from start to finish. Crazy. And, and interestingly, yesterday, we obviously with a race like this, where you're in such a beautiful, but somewhat remote area, there are moments where, you know, we were watching a slideshow rather than actual moving images and people are getting uh, all het up. Like, you know, where's the live feed? It's extraordinary what, what people what we're able to do. What we're able to do out here. And I, I can tell you right now, as the man behind the scenes that puts this stuff together, I, it is a, it's a lift yeah. that we have to do yeah. to put this stuff together. And there is a team out there that is running from aid station to aid station that we have several drone operators. We have several field reporters. We have several cam runners. Like yeah. we're doing what we can to bring you everything we've got. And it is, it is astounding what we're able to do. And we, we, I am proud of every single broadcast yeah, that we do. hundred percent. I mean, we saw some of the cam runners yesterday who were following one runner in, they'd be passed by another runner on the outlet. They'd turn around and follow the other runner back out again. Oh yeah. Those guys got a workout. It's great. It's actually so honestly, so I used to do that. This was like my very first uh, foray into this uh, was three years ago. 
Dylan asked me if I'd be willing to show up and okay. run a couple cameras and do this live okay. thing. We did it on like, I think we did a Instagram live and we were able to literally run cameras. Over the weekend, I ran uh, 32 or 34 miles. Carrying a uh, Just running with the gimbal and the camera. So, I mean, it's we've we've made some upgrades since then. You know, we have a full studio we here. Do. It's amazing. We've got everything going on. Yeah, we're excited. So, for those of you who are just joining us, again, we do have a few minute wait before the uh, start. Apparently, we had some buses show up a little late. So, the start line is going to be five, 10 minutes late. Um, we are going to, you can see in the bottom screen here, we're going to be showing what we can there at the uh, at the start line. We would love to get Dylan, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, Dylan actually reads a little poem at the start line yeah. that uh, that his his mother writes, or mother-in-law writes, and it's uh, it's awesome. It's beautiful. So, th so those that weren't on this live stream at, what, 5 a.m. yesterday? At 5 a.m. yesterday. Unfortunately, you didn't get that. Uh, they'll get it again today. They'll hopefully get something we get, today. Hopefully, we get some of that today. So we've got audio. We can see we've got, if you look at the area, I mean, it is just a really densely wooded area. So it's it's not going to be crystal clear, but we're going to get what we can, and it's doing a pretty good job. We're pretty happy with the live feed out there. So, um, yeah, for those who uh, who aren't familiar with Simon, you'll notice there's a little bit of an, an accent there. Tell us about yourself, buddy. Um, I am a Brit. Uh, work with my wife on a magazine called Like the Wind. Uh, we're based in Europe. We currently live in Switzerland, which is beautiful. Not, I mean, not dissimilar to where we are now. Really stunning area that we live in in Switzerland in the mountains and. Uh, yeah, we've been publishing a magazine together called Like the Wind for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, uh, for those who haven't had a chance to get their hands on one, they are they are beautiful. They are awesome. Uh, my partner, Katie, grabbed one yesterday or the other day when you were giving them out, and I'm astonished with the quality in that. Man. They look fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Um, excited to get in and read a little bit. Yeah. But we've got other things. We've got pressing things happening today. We've got a race. We've got a off. race <laughs> that is on its way. So let's, uh, let's actually recap the weekend a little bit. Um, yesterday's broadcast with the 100K... Uh, man, what a fun race that was to watch, like on both men's and women's side for different reasons. We yeah, had a great for race. Sure. I mean, I, I had the opportunity to, to do to be co-commentator with uh, the ever brilliant Kareen yesterday. Uh, she carried the broadcast. I just sort of added a few stupid comments and questions along the way for, for five hours. That's all uh, we do. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought the women's race yesterday was super exciting. Really, I mean, yeah. both races were great, but the women's race really, for me, was really captivating. Absolutely, I will say with one hundred percent certainty that the the women's one hundred k race is going to be uh, one to be remembered this year. Um, I think it was it was so much fun to watch the the late pass by Lottie Brinks making up almost twenty minutes of a deficit that she had on Elsa. Yeah, Elsa McDonald, just one of the most brilliant runners in the ultra running space, doing it you know, in her forties, just crushing, crushing the talent around her. You know, what's funny is I saw her in the lead at mile five or six when they hit that first aid station. She texted me 45 minutes before the start of the race and said, don't plan on seeing me towards the front until at least the halfway point. Okay. And when I saw her in the lead <laughs> at, at mile, I was like, you liar, you sandbagger. So I don't know if she had, you know, just got out there and thought, man, this is so beautiful. This is so amazing. I'm just going to go for it or what. But uh, she had such a great race. She was running super hard. Um, and, you know, there's no shame in being passed by Lottie Brinks in the final minutes of the race. I mean, uh, you know, she Elsa did say her, her, her quads were a little tender. You know, she was getting beat up a little bit on this terrain. And, uh, you know, for Lottie Brinks, such a strong closer to not only not only create a tent, not only make up a 20 minute deficit, but to add to that was just amazing. Absolutely. And again, because of the nature of the course, there was this out and back section. It's 10, there's 10 miles out, 10 miles back just before the last 5k. Right. And we saw them with the live cam. We saw them oop, losing one. and the shoes are getting excited. Yeah. They're, they're, they're popping off. The they're shoes popping are ready off. to go. Um, and we saw Lottie uh, and Elsa as they passed each other, you know, high, basically high fiving each other as, yeah. they, as they crossed. I mean, it was a really, it was a great vibe, really f sort of fun vibe, but but competitive. You know, those guys were were giving it their everything. Yeah, I love it. You know, one of the things that has drawn me to this sport is not just the uh, competition that you're going to get in terms of like, yeah, these these ladies are throwing down for sure, and the men as well, but 
there's usually a camaraderie uh, type of competitiveness of like, you push me, I'll push you, we'll push each other. Whoever has the better day has the better day. Um, and obviously everyone wants to win. No one's going to give up the win for, for their competitor, but they're going to high five each other along the yeah. way. And that's just so indicative of this sport. And one of the things we love, which we will get to see plenty of that. As you see today, this is the beautiful Columbia River Gorge. Everything on your right side of the screen is going to be Oregon. Everything on the left is going to be Washington. So that is the state line divider. Uh, this is what all of our runners get to traverse today. So uh, let's, let's actually go over the course a little bit now that you can see it. Today's race is going to start off there at the wonderful Multnomah Falls, which is just an icon here in the Oregon, the Pacific Northwest. Um, like people come from all over the world to see it. It's the busiest mm. state park in uh, Oregon by far and away. Um, absolutely gorgeous. You can see that wooded area at the bottom of your screen. That is where the runners are starting. And they are going to run out along the fence line and make their way to the falls just kind of off in the distance to the middle left there. You can see the falls to the right side as well. I mean, this is just beautiful, beautiful landscape. So they get to start off a little spicy today. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not a gentle introduction to this course. No, no, they get uh, they get a hard awakening to the Pacific Northwest and just how challenging it can be out here with the steep climbs, the punchy climbs. These gorges are gorgeous, but they are also challenging. Yeah. They, the, the gorge bites. The that gorge, is a, we heard this from Yassine yesterday. It, the gorge has teeth. It does. It absolutely does. And if you look at the elevation profile, you can see 100% that it does have some gnarly teeth on there, some gnashers. We start off with a fantastic 1,400 foot climb, 1,500 feet almost. Straight out the gate. Two miles in, you are 1,500 feet up. That's The problem with that is a lot of it's runnable, but it's that painful runnable okay. where you don't want it to be. Yep. So these front runners are definitely going to be shredding out there. They're going to be pushing themselves hard. They're going to be trying to, you know, get that. You want to find that balance of, I want to get out in the lead because this does tighten up pretty quick. The trail does, but also you don't want to be out there and being pushed uh, to discomfort. So 100%. it's going to start off with a really interesting gameplay. I believe you can see Multnomah falls right there. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, so we start off with that. They go up and over those waterfalls. And then we have a screaming descent back down to uh, about 200 feet elevation up by mile four. So they go straight up, straight down. And, and that's, a, that's something you want to watch out for, you know, quad crushing downhill can actually Absolutely. be worse than the climb, right? Yeah, you're, you're never gonna, no one ever wins the race in the first four miles, but you can lose it. Yeah. You can lose the race yeah. in the first four miles just based off of that profile alone. If you go out a little hot, get yourself in a position where you're pushing a little harder, um, then you want to, and then you free fall down that and you're not respecting the fact that there is still, I mean, there's 5,800 feet of elevation gain on this course. So it and about is, a third of it in the first two miles. Yeah. So you, you, you still have a lot of punches to climb. So I would say nothing on this course is a gradual up. It's always like a quick shot down and then a quick shot up. Yep. It's never long. Yep. So you've got to learn how to change gears on the go, yep. which is, which is so much fun. Um, you can see the runners are coming in here. We've got Rich out there. Oh, we even got some, got some audio. Rich, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. How are things going down there, bud? Great. Great. Good morning. Um, yeah, as you can see, runners are starting to come on down. All the buses have showed up. So people are lining up. Um, looks like for that awesome poem that Dylan's going to read before the race. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely thrasher out there. How's the temperature out there? How are the, how's things feeling? Temps are pretty perfect right now. Um, I could see it feeling a little bit muggy, maybe an hour into this race though. It's definitely humid out here, but it's, it's pretty nice right now. Yeah, it looks absolutely stunning. We've got some amazing drone footage. Uh, we've got you there at the start line. Um, you know, tell us about you've, you've, you're not you're pretty familiar with this course you've been out here before how is this first climb when they are screaming up uh around multnomah falls yeah and i actually um i just showed up early and got an, a little sampling of the goods as well just to remind myself um it's definitely a crusher right off the bat <laughs> like you said probably 1500 foot climb and half of it is just like 
a mellow grade on like paved trail. So it's something that you can really rip up. And at the start of a race, when the adrenaline's pumping and you're feeling stoked, it'd be easy to go out and just rip. Um, so I'm sure the guys will, and the gals will be pushing, but um, also watching themselves to not go too lactic out the gate. Um, and there's also a couple blowdowns that have turned a couple of the switchbacks up there into a little bit steep and greasy kind of technical up towards the top once you get out of the first paved part of the climb. So it's going to be a wild start to the race for the 50K runners. Yeah, it's it's going to be fantastic. Who are some of your favorites out there for the day? I want to hear from Rich himself. Who's out there warming <laughs> up? Who's looking good? What's your call for uh, for some of the top men and women? I mean, I was I was staying at a house out with uh, Tara Fraga last night and White Salmon and, and a few other people and Corinne. Um, so I'm definitely looking. I think I think Tara is going to do phenomenally. Um, I think Corinne's going to do great as well. Um, Alex King's a good buddy of mine. He's just from right across the river here, so look out for him as well. I think him and Chris Myers are going to be battling it out. Um, but there's also Lauren, there's also uh, Dylan Humberger. I don't know. I, I think uh, those are my favorites, but I'm excited to see things get shaken up and hopefully some battling out throughout the race. One thing that Gorge Waterfalls 50K always brings is the competition. Um, I mean, I'll never forget running out of Cascade Locks with the final uh finishers of the course uh or sorry not the final finishers, the first finishers uh you know m1 2 and 3 and uh, in, uh f1 2 and 3 and man they go screaming out of cascade locks to the finish and it's always within almost always within eyesight of each other uh at that final 5k you know we've had some historic battles between tyler green and ryan miller who we just saw a comment on the screen here that he can't wait to come back like that was a final, like Ryan Miller passed Tyler in the final mile and a half of the course. So the action is hot all day long. It's going to be so much fun. Rich, you're no stranger to this course. You've had a fantastic day out here yourself. What's one of your favorite parts of the Gorge Waterfalls race? Oh, man. Other than beer at the um, finish line. <laughs> of course. Uh, I mean, the section I got to pace yesterday in the 100K, which uh, they'll get to do a little bit, the section of the PCT that they'll out and back on today in the 50K is so cruisy and fun, even though it's, you know, deep into the 100K when you're hurting a bit more. Um, but also, you know, all the waterfalls, you know, ponytail falls that they get to run through along the way. There's, yeah, so many amazing sections of this course. Yeah. So speak also speak to us about kind of the technicality of this course. I was out with, uh, Jamil yesterday. We went to a little shakeout and even within like the first four miles, I cracked an ankle coming into the waterfall. I don't know if it was because I was just like watching the waterfalls and not where I was stepping. Maybe that's my fault, but yeah, I mean, this is a pretty fairly technical course, even though it can be fast and cruisy, it can also be gnarly and technical. Talk to me about that a little bit. I think it's tricky because it's, it's kind of, mellow ish and rolling once you you know get into the traversing sections but out here in the gorge you constantly are like pushing off and like ducking through just like rock gardens there's just rocks along every trail so even though it's like kind of a flowing path that you're on it, it's it jacks up the quads you're always like full mental focus to not take a digger or turn an ankle or something um I'm, I'm really stoked to see uh, how fast these 50K runners rip through this. And uh, it's just a testament to how talented all these people are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my two top two picks were going to be uh, Alex King uh, and, and Tara Fraga myself. So you took, you took those right away from me. Um, but they're no stranger to, A, this course and this area. Obviously, Alex living here, Tara having done incredibly well in the 100K a couple years ago. Um, so she's no stranger to this. I know that she's also kind of ramping up for um, another race. So we'll see where she's at in terms of, you know, what's in her legs. Um, I would, you know, I would have given you Chris, uh, Myers is one of my top picks, but he already by Thursday had like 40 miles in his legs with 
a ridiculous amount of vert. So he's also training for Western States. This is kind of a tune up. That's not to say he can't go fast. I've been passed by him many a times, um, on training runs, uh, out there in, uh, Boulder, Colorado. And so he's an absolute shredder. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with Alex King. I think he's got some redemption. I think he wants to come back, you know, having come back from injury. I think he's forever the most humble person in the world. And he'd never, he was not, he was not showing his hand at all yesterday when I was talking about it, but he's, he's a shredder. The dude doesn't, he only knows one speed and it's, uh, it's death speed. So we're going to see what happens there. Absolutely. So do you have any update for us on how things are looking when we're looking at the start line right now? Um, looks like people are still lined up in the same spot. Don't think that they've read the poem yet. I see. I see the race director standing at the start line. So hopefully he might be calling. Yeah, some people Jeremy's up right over here. Yep, looks like he's so, sending out a text here. Rich, so. I've got you a. I've got you a couple times uh, down the course today. Uh, you're going to be following our our field reporter out there. We have some other fantastic field reporters that we had yesterday. We will have the ever lovable and affable Yasin to Boone at Cascade Locks. And we will also have uh, our buddy Chris over at Speedland. He will be sitting at Ainsworth Aid Station. Where are you going to be today, Rich? Uh, I'll be at at least the next A, uh, the next A that they're going to be going through. Um, and then do you have me at one more after that as well? I may have had you out at Waclella, uh, but yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I get so confused by all the names, Wakina, Waclella, Ainsworth, yeah. Cascade Locks. <laughs> like that one's fairly easy because we're here in Cascade, uh, Cascade Locks, Oregon. So yeah, fantastic, man. Um, you know, while we're waiting, I want to hear a little bit from you. You had an epic battle out here years ago. Um, you know, running this course, you also had the chance to pace, uh, Christina Randrup yesterday, I believe. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. It was yeah. such a blast. Tell us about that. Cause she, I know she was feeling a little, a little, uh, you know, in the head a little bit, and then she just got out of her head and into her legs and kind of turned it on, secured that third place. Where did you pace her and how did that go? I pay, I picked her up at Wyeth to the finish. Um, and yeah, I think that she had gotten into a really good gear at that point. I just tried to keep the ball rolling with her, um, keep her eating a lot, drinking a lot, um, and keeping her head in the game. Um, I think the it had gotten a little bit warm at that point. I mean, you get that far into 100K, uh, you start getting a little bit frazzled and, and frayed out. But she kept kept her head in the game, and uh, we were, I was like, it's not a question if but when we're gonna pass andrea and so we just you know made it made a plan about when we were gonna pass and and did it and she executed amazingly it was so fun yeah it was awesome to see her come through she is also starting to gather up a lot of podium spots here in the pacific northwest uh the girl is on a tear lately and it's been fun to see her you know years ago i met you know met her i think two three two years ago here and just to watch her consistently rise the ranks and show up and show out at all these races and competitive races too. She's not cherry picking just your local, you know, Ma and Pa 50 Ks. She's, she's going at the talent, um, head first. And speaking of talent, she got to race two of some of what I would consider the best ultra runners in the sport right now. And Lottie Brinks and Elsa McDonald. Uh, did you get to catch any of that race yesterday while you were out crew and duty? I got to caught a li catch a little bit of it, yeah. Um, so I saw at mile 33 when Elsa came through and was just looking so strong. Um, and I think at that point had like a 20 minute lead on Lottie, and then uh, and then Lottie and Christina were fairly close at that point. Both came through, both looking great as well. Um, and it's just mind blowing and amazing that. Lottie made up that time and passed Elsa uh, in the end of that race. Um, but if you're feeling good and and you're really going for it, I think the end of the race, you cut through so many little, like the line of sight is actually pretty good for it being a pretty forested race. I, when I was running with Christina, we kept on, we would catch glimpses like every 
minute or so. So um, if you're hungry, it, it really feeds into that for you. And Lottie obviously was yesterday. So cool. Yeah. I mean, not only did she eat up that 20 minute gap, but then she put on another few minutes by the time they got to the finish line. And she did that all. I mean, that was all in the final final miles of the race. You know, it was pretty insane. So yeah. to your point, this course is a really unique course and that you do get not a great line of sight, but often you're able to see your competitors from a distance, given like the little small road section in the middle. You've got some of like yeah. the p parts you said around uh, Cascade Locks where it is flowy enough and enough switchbacks where you can catch them. Or if you're running in and out of some of those little gorges and waterfalls, you can see them on the other end. So I think it keeps you engaged. It keeps that carrot dangling, uh, which is always exciting. I think we got some action behind you. Let's you can uh, see. Yep. Awesome. We can barely, barely yep. hear Debo. Sounds like we're going to get things started here. Maybe if I move my mic a little closer. Debbie's poem. A little moment of silence as we hear Debbie read her poem. This is truly one of the special moments of the race is hearing Debbie's poem. It's pretty unique. It is very unique. It is beautiful. We can't we can't leak it here on yeah. YouTube. You have to show up to the race yeah. in order to be graced with such so a beautiful poem. It's like being poem. at one of those Dylan concerts, you know, that was never recorded. Exactly. You can say you were there, but were you? It is it is a a legend here at uh at the gorge waterfalls 50k oh so amazing this is you know some people might not appreciate it but this is just one of the beautiful things that uh makes it what it is and having been there myself i can tell you that it's it's a special moment um and i enjoyed it quite thoroughly as a competitive runner being there we had some buses show up a little late today, so our delayed race start time here, um, we moved it to 8.15, so for those of you who are just joining us, uh, that is where we are at right now. We are going to start, start here shortly, so thank you, everybody, for your patience. Um, you know, these are wild races. It takes a lot to get them happening, and they don't always go off as planned. Well, exactly, and a 15-minute delay in a race that's going to take as long as this is yeah. no big deal. For me, I actually kind of like it as a competitive athlete. It gives me like a little bit of a breath, you know, like take a moment. Yeah. And we've got great temperature out there. Um, you know, no one's freezing, no one's shivering. There's a little bit of a breeze, but it's definitely uh, nice, t nice weather. This is great racing weather, as Rich brought up earlier. It's going to be a little bit of a humid day. Yeah. There's some moisture in the air. And that creates its own challenges, but uh, it's still going to be beautiful. I think yesterday the the runners were saying that. Uh, oh, this is how we're about to start. We'll, there we'll get we back go. To this. And yeah. there we go. Jeremy's giving a little debriefing before the race. People are stoked, though. I just locked There's eyes with Alex King. He's ready to rip. Alex King. I just saw Chris Myers. Uh, we go. We've got a shredder's row of athletes. And there they are. And as you were saying, you know, they, they relatively quickly get onto a relative to a quite narrow bit of trail so they look as though they're going off hard but some of them because they want to make sure that they're not getting caught up behind other runners right? exactly and you know some game plans can be to set the pace and say hey i don't i want this to go out a little slower yep. so i'm going to get out front and i'm going to hold the slow, pace back a little bit. down a little bit um i don't know if anyone's got the the courage to do that today it looks like is that chris out in the lead there rich 
Oh gosh, they turned the corner and they're up. I can't see who's in the lead now. Chris, I'm a little upset you're not out there running or uh, running and uh, helping us out there, Rich. Why, why are you Why are you not strapped should to I be a GoPro? Running out there? Yeah, you should you should be running there with them, <laughs> I wish, GoPro man. the whole time. You can use the same excuse that uh, Yasin used yesterday, which is that your mic has got a wire on it and you can't go anywhere. You're sort of tethered to the <laughs> to the start finish that's, line. That's what I'm going to stick to as well. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Right, so here we go. Up here. We're going to watch the second uh, wave here, and as you can see, there is our drone footage um, in the area. I mean, you can see how densely wooded this place is. Um, you know, it's 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 a challenge to get these runners out on the course, you know, through these trees. But, you know, we do we do some amazing work. We've got some amazing drone pilots out there, you know, doing doing the Lord's work, giving us the great views. I mean, props to the drone pilots because I drove down from Hood River this morning and it's windy. Like, it's really windy. And I don't know whether that will have an effect on the race. It sort of seems to be coming you're, up the river. I don't know if that makes any yeah, sense. You're, you know the direction. Yeah, it's, it's, it's traveling east to west and you are heading uh, east Broadly. on this course. Yeah. But you're also in and out of these little gorges. You get a lot of cover from those and a lot of cover from the trees as well. We've got our second wave start here. It's uh, for those of you who are not familiar, they actually changed the start date of this race. They pushed it back a couple weeks. Um, for two years in a row, they had questionable weather, like rainy on and off. Last it was colder. Was, yeah. Last year was a you know kind of a muddy mess and yeah. you know a bit more challenging with the weather. So they pushed it back a couple weeks, and so now we've got you know this much better weather. You can kind of see a little zoom in there of some of the athletes making their way. You can see exactly what that uphill grade looks like. You know, it's no, it's no joke. And again, exactly he said it is runnable, runnable, but, but that but also frustrating runnable. Yeah. Not easy. <laughs> exactly. Catch the first waterfalls here. We can see the runners. Ah, oh, so this is, I mean, you get to start off with just some banger views, yeah, just knock it right out of incredible. the park. So gorgeous. Hey, Rich, how many waves do we have starting this morning? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. Dang, you're catching me off guard. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say four or five waves, but that's just purely a guess. I'm sorry. Oh, you're all good, buddy. Yeah, it does, it does get onto some single track pretty quick, so it makes sense to start it in waves in order to keep the congestion. Uh, and it looks like we've got – what uh, What was Alex wearing today, Rich? He's wearing uh, like some dark blue shorts and uh, like a gray top. Awesome. We've got black and white and gray and dark blue. It's going to be real easy to tell these guys apart from each other from a distance. Uh, yeah, the lead men yesterday were all in black. We're all in black or gray. Oh, we can we can Kareem, we get Kareem's some eyesight though. Yes. Can we get some like amazing like neon orange hunter color you know, like, vests out there? Like like jockeys. Help us out, guys. Like jockeys, horse racing. They all wear different colors. Super easy for us to spot them. Yeah, that's what we need there. Looks like that's Chris. If I, oh, that's a great. Yeah, show. that's Chris out front. That's definitely Chris out front, uh, rocking the white and black. For those who aren't familiar, Chris Myers, our uh, golden ticket over at Black Canyon 100K. He is training himself up for Western States. Young gun, just really talented athlete. I expect him to have a fantastic day. And there goes our second wave in the bottom corner. I mean, this is awesome. We're watching our second wave start, and we've got some amazing runners up front there. I'm excited to see who, how things shake out, who wants to chase. You see blue top. That would be Mr. Alex King, a local legend and shredder on this course. That dude is going to sit back, bite his time for the first climb, and then let it rip. Uh, you know, he's got probably almost... 75 percent of the fkts on the mountains and volcanoes around here dude mm -hmm. loves the more technical steep stuff so expect this to be a walk in the park for him to warm up around this hey rich let's see do we have a can we get debo over here is he still over there pull debo over yeah hold on a second i'll find no. him let's go get him let's let's have him chat a little bit 
These guys are moving really well, though. Yeah, look at just the smooth consistency Beautiful. up this hill. And just a reminder, I mean, for anyone that's not checking the course elevation, I mean, they're doing this 1,400 feet of climb. I mean, literally straight from the start line. Yeah, you've got uh, maybe 100 yards, 200 yards of, of flat-ish before you hit these climbs. And this is this is the punchy Pacific Northwest, man. This is the kind of terrain you get. This is really smooth to Rich's point. This is the smooth part of the course. It's like almost paved, half paved yep. climbing. And you can see all the little switchbacks there. So tons of switchbacks cut into the course, which means we're not going straight uphill, but it makes it all runnable, which is almost worse because then you just climbing. you burn those legs so fast. And we've got Mr. Dylan Bowman on the mic. What is going on, buddy? Good morning in studio. Here we are. The 50K well underway. We're just waiting for wave three to start here. How's everybody feeling? Oh, we're all stoked, man. This is uh, shaking up to be a great race. We've got some amazing competition out there on the men's and women's field. We've got beautiful views. I've got my my 20 ounce Americano black sitting right here. Like I'm stoked, man. How is the weather out there? It's actually perfect. Yeah, it's a little overcast this morning, but they're predicting bluebird day starting mid morning. So by the time the winters come through, we shouldn't have a cloud in the sky. Of course, this is Oregon, so no promises, right? We got to, you know, deal the hands that were dealt. But either way, it couldn't be a better weekend weather wise. And we feel blessed. So it's amazing. Yeah, much better than last I'm a year's race, right? Haggard, I got to say. Yeah, much better than last year's race. We bumped it back two weeks, part, partly because we sort of destroyed the park where we staged our event last year based on how horrific the weather was. Then here we are, gifted with a blessed weekend of perfect weather and we couldn't be more uh honored to host 1200 runners here this year it's so so fun i gotta say your boy's brain's not working super well this morning could you not you couldn't drag yourself away from the finish person. i couldn't drag myself away from the finish man that's my job yeah to say hello to each and every person that crosses the finish line i collapsed at about midnight last night Alarm went off at 4.45. I nearly threw my iPhone against a wall, but here we are. Yeah, here Sorry, we are I getting the- an air bud here. We're getting the final final, fin final starters of, uh, of the weekend that we're sending them off to have a beautiful capstone to this event that is just an awesome weekend here in the Pacific Northwest. I don't think there are many races that rival not only the views the course the competition but just like the community like what you guys have done here with daybreak and free trail like talk to us a bit about this community that shows up here because i don't think anyone can really do it justice more than the leader sure. of free trail himself yes well zach you got a big part of it. i got it's your third year in a row just helping out and i'm so honored to have you each and every year this year in a new capacity as the director of our live stream. This is the first time we're trying this, <laughs> but to your point, yeah, we've got just an army of volunteers who I've now gotten to know over the last three years, some familiar faces who are just so selfless and who give their heart and soul to ensure that each and every runner has an amazing experience. And that's just something that really inspires me as somebody who dedicates everything to this sport and this community to be able to, you know, be at least a co-leader of this event is truly an honor. Here's wave three taking off here. It's so awesome. The All stoke right. there is so high. I don't know if you're catching this like I'm catching this, Dylan, but it seems like every wave that goes gets more and more jazzed and more and more excited. Like first wave's a little more competitive, and then after that, these are the people who just love it. Yeah. They're so jazzed. They're going to be, they're yeah, gonna be having great. a great day out. They're going to be making the most of every yeah, and, moment on the trails. Yeah, And all the like friends and family who made a point to be down here for wave one have stuck around to see all the waves off this morning as we count down to the fourth and final wave that'll take off here in Did just you... a second. Building off what you just said, Zach, I want to give a quick shout out to my buddy, Phil Wright, who's going to be in this fourth wave. He's wearing all black with a white and pink hat on. Last night at 11.30 p.m., we're 30 minutes before the cutoff. 
a guy comes through. I think his name was Daniel Chang. Don't quote me on that. I said 400 names last night. I think it was Daniel Chang. But what Daniel Chang said to me was, God damn it. Sorry for cursing <laughs> on the Daniel. live stream. <laughs> <laughs> what Daniel said to me was, hey, I was going to drop out at the Wyeth Aid Station, which is, of course, the free trail aid station in the 100K, where a bunch of free trail community members band together to help triage the carnage at 50 miles of 100K. So critical aid station. This guy, Daniel, finishes and he says, hey, this guy, Phil, at the Wyeth Aid Station saved my ass. He fixed my ankle. He fixed my knee. There's no way I would have finished without him. Phil flew all the way from the UK to be here for this race weekend, and he's about to start for the 50K. So he volunteered all night last night, saved a guy who ultimately finished 30 minutes before the cutoff, and he's about to take off this morning. So to your question about community, Zach, that's it right there. Those Brits, oh. Dylan. you gotta, you got to give props to those Brits. The Brits, <laughs> Simon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is people out there. I, I have two none. questions. I have two questions. I don't know whether you're going to be able to, able to answer the second one, but have you seen Corinne this morning? I did see Corinne this morning. How's she, she feeling? Uh, stole a free trail hoodie from me because she showed up to the staging area to jump on the bus just wearing a singlet. I said, you look cold. <laughs> you need a hoodie? So I gave her a hoodie. So I saved the day, not to brag. Hero. And then, uh, yeah, she started with wave one. And I'm really excited. I think, you know, she sort of sandbags after a 12 hour shift in the booth yesterday. She's like, you know, approaching this more as a training day, but Corinne's I think has some good momentum in her training right now. So I think she's going to do great. I mean, there's a lot of for myself. She's in my fantasy team. So there's a lot of people in the, in the YouTube chat going, yo, go, go Corinne. I mean, these chairs are not super comfortable. She was in this chair for 12 hours. So if, <laughs> if she doesn't have a perfect day, she's got an excuse, but I I'm with you. I think she might sandbag. And and the other yeah, big question, you know, which you which you might not be able to answer, is whether Yassine managed to get the chocolate fondue machine working. I, honestly, I don't know. I or don't care. know. What I will <laughs> say though is that Corinne somehow I think gets energized by twelve hours of broadcasting. Yeah. I completely collapse after things like that. So anyway, we were very just happy that she would come out and contribute in two ways. It's sort of like Phil last night, volunteering and then racing. Corinne also broadcasting and racing. It, uh, it's a team effort to put this whole thing together. Amazing. Now, Dylan, before we let you go, I've got one more question for you. One more thing I want you to kind of touch on a little bit. You have been uh, all over the trail running community in terms of capacities you know, you've you've commentated you are an rd now you are leader of free trail that that community um podcaster elite athlete talk to me about now that you've had the opportunity to step in as a race director exactly how much more do you see the volunteers and the people that step up the fills of the world um, you know, who, who make these things happen, the race directors. I mean, just, I want you to speak a little bit and give those l viewers and listeners at home kind of your perspective from, you know, front of the pack running athlete to now sitting back, making these things work. And you and I have talked a little bit about just the exhaustion that incurs. Tell me a little bit about that and, and what the community means to you from that respect. Yeah, I'm glad you asked, Zach. So hold on, let's quickly see these people off and I'll answer your great question. Go, 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 yeah, 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 go, Phil, let's go. Woo! Great one, guys, we'll see you at the finish. Okay, so Zach, I love that question. First of all, I just want to say race directors are heroes. And first of all, there's no way that free trail <laughs> could do this without our friends and partners at Daybreak Racing. Race directing is a very hard game that requires every ounce of your heart and soul and your energy. I am at the bottom of the well right now. I think I've got, you know, at least one more day left in me, but the next week I will basically be in a sleep deprived coma. And that's based on just the level of energy that it takes to 
put on uh, an event like this. The um, you know just giving a shout out to race directors in general first. There's no way that we could do this without a really professional race organization like Daybreak Racing backing it up, allowing us to focus on the other stuff to make the experience special for the runners. But yes, you're right. The volunteers, absolutely critical. And here in the Pacific Northwest, in a lot of communities, I'm sure something you guys experience with a lot of the Aravipa events too, is that there's a core group of individuals who really dedicate hundreds of hours a year to make sure that the races go off without a hitch, without any reward in return, except for the satisfaction that comes from just helping people out. And that's a beautiful thing. That's something we only get in this type of a sport. And I think one of the things that sets our sport apart uh, and makes it so incredibly special. Obviously, we've got medical people. We've got the, you know, food and catering providers and vendors. We've got the people who just help our runners cross the road here as they go out on their 50K journey. So it takes a lot of organization. I'm a very disorganized guy. We leave that to the race directors. Uh, but everybody plays a role. And um, yeah, anyway, it's an honor, honor to play our role too. Yeah, we definitely wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of speak to that because I think it's so easy to get caught up in you know, the competitiveness of the race. And, you know, obviously we're here showcasing, uh, you know, just that exact part of this race that it's, you know, we get caught up in the numbers and the finishes and the glory of, of what's going on. And we, we forget that that is just the tip of the iceberg of, of the whole entire weekend of what it takes for that to happen. And it's yeah. just, it's a beautiful thing. It's something I'm learning more of as I step into this role of, you know, director of live stream, adding one more layer to, what goes on in these events, but, uh, yeah, it's been a beautiful thing to see. And I'm so grateful we got to hear you say that. Thank you, Dylan, for giving us some insight there. Um, and you know, get, get down here and, uh, check out some of the, Oh, yeah. you've got a runner cam. No, you get I'm to run go, more. Yeah. I'm going to go run. I'm going to go run with the, the athletes, not to brag. One quick thing before we go, guys, yes. I just want to give a quick shout out to mountain outpost. Thank you guys so much for helping bring this to life for the first time here at Gorge Waterfalls. It's an honor. I haven't been able to watch hardly any of it, but I heard some awesome stuff going on in the 100K yesterday and can't wait to catch up on everything later next week. Also, big thank you to our presenting sponsor, Speedland. If you have a shot in the studio, we got a new shoe coming May 1st for pre-sale. It's going to be sweet. Runspeedland.com. Big thank you to Speedland for investing in our event and being the presenting sponsor for the third year in a row. And also to my boy, Simon Freeman in studio. You <laughs> got to subscribe to like the wind magazine okay trust me i'm a media guy i'm a sports media guy like the wind magazine is a piece of art it is a coffee table book effectively in magazine form i look forward to receiving each and every issue and i'm honored that simon would come to our race and help out a little bit on his u.s tour Thanks, with all Tom. that being said welcome to the 2024 gorge waterfalls i love you all and i'll see you out on the race course can't wait to hear your updates. Thank you so much, Dylan Bowman. And speaking of Speedland, we are going to cut to a nice Dylan little Bowman, Speedland commercial. ESPN. <laughs> Today's broadcast is also brought to you by Speedland, the best trail shoes ever created. This is the brand new commission, the GS PDX, the sixth model in Speedland's short but illustrious history. You'll notice it's a throwback to the initial colorway of the first model, the SL. PDX though, this is built on the GS platform. Plenty of cushioning to take you as long as you wanna go on the trail. Everything you've come to expect, the double boa fit system, the HTPU midsole, the drop-in PBAX, uh, secondary midsole, also removable carbon plate. Nothing better than the Speedland. Go pick up a pair of the GS PDX. You'll find a link and a discount code here in the description on YouTube. Welcome back, everybody, to the 2024 Gorge Waterfalls 50K. You are getting some beautiful views here of the Pacific Northwest. I'm Zach Marion, and I am sitting here with Simon Freeman. How are you, buddy? Very well. Very awesome. well. Really enjoying this weekend. It's um, It almost feels as though it's uh, an embarrassment of riches. I mean, we had a fantastic 30K on Friday. Shouldn't forget that. That was an amazing race. Absolutely. Brilliant day yesterday. Yeah. Fantastic racing. We talked about the women earlier we didn't really have much of a chance to talk about the men from yesterday and now today 
this this 50 another shred fest another fantastic shred fest uh it's 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 gonna it's shaping up to be honestly one of my favorite weekends i look for there are very few weekends i look forward to in the trail running mm-hmm. sport um you know there's a handful out there gorge waterfalls weekend lf gorge let's do this it kind of starts off the season i love it uh we've got another great weekend over at black canyon 100k and 55k or 60k i can never remember the distance it's changed a couple times but awesome races um in and of themselves and then we've got the double weekend coming up here with a broken arrow into a western states which is oh that whole week is just fantastic so this is definitely one of them i love it i look forward to it and it's because of this right here the beautiful views that we get um we have some fantastic racing happening today let's talk a little bit about what the runners are coming into at this point we're going to get updates from ainsworth aid station so the first handful of miles before they hit ainsworth they got 7.8 miles to get there um and as we noted earlier the biggest climb of the day is your first two miles of the day massive i mean yeah really i think uh, as you said quite rightly i think it's unlikely that anyone's going to open up a lead that will be definitive but they can definitely burn all their matches. They exactly. Come into Ainsworth and be thinking, "Oops, that was a little too much." Yeah. And you, unfortunately, you don't know it until it's already there. You get caught sure. up in the adrenaline of the race, the competition of the race. You've been training so long, you're excited. It all comes down to this moment. And if you've got some big goals and some big game plans, it's really easy to kind of lose sight of your effort and yep. just feel like you're getting into it. It's also a sleeper of a course because you feel like, oh, you know, it's, it's. It's a big climb up front, but then when you look at the profile, it's like, I got to save a little bit for the end, but most of it's pretty runnable. And it's true. There are a lot of runnable sections uh, through the middle. You got a nice little road section for about two miles, which is great. Um, but then you get into this last, you know, 20, 20 miles to 28 miles. It's suddenly, you're, you're back up here, up the side of the gorge. Exactly. Getting serious. And it does. It does get serious. But as we heard from Mr. Rich Lockwood there at the start line, that if you if you play the game right, miles 24 ish to 30 is just really, really smooth, runnable downhill uh, for the most part. Little little bumps here and there. You got to climb a little bit, but uh, it's a lot of rolly downhill. And we've seen things like in this 50K, Matt Daniels being uh you know eight ten twelve minutes behind at one point in the race leaving the cascade locks aid station which is right there um you know kind of right before you make that last final climb by the time he made that that climb turn around and came back he had like a six minute lead yeah so just you can do a lot there if you play your cards right you can also burn on too many matches in the beginning and not have it for the end so this race will be exciting from start to finish that i can guarantee um we have had some amazing shredders in the course already let's talk a little bit about the men's field yesterday we kind of got cut off there so let's just recap that first you know our top three men yesterday who absolutely had a fantastic battle mr adam loomis uh and my guy brandon miller from calgary uh alberta up there in the great white north they just shredded for the first handful of aid stations just really putting it down um adam out of camas utah park city utah um he is a you know you know avid skier all winter long he is just getting that vo2 max on the uphills um, so we know he's fit. Um, he says that he actually did a lot more running this winter he so that he could be like ready through for Through November, it. he was running. Which... Yeah. And we actually had, there was a pretty good, good uh, out in the Rockies. We had a pretty good winter for running. So I'm sure he got some great training in um, those trails straight, stayed dry for a while. Um, you know, he, he ran a very, very great race. He said he just gassed it from, you know, that 50K point on. It was just like, I'm just going to throw down and see what happens. Uh, Brandon Miller, although he put up his, an incredible valiant effort, um, and he's still finishing a very, very respectable, uh, you know, 13th place overall. Um, you know, he, he marched it in, uh, and he just, you know, didn't have the day he wanted, but, you know, kudos to him for having the guts and courage to go out there and, and lay it all out there. 100%. You know, that, that guy knows one thing and it's, it's the pre Fontaine, like, let's just go and see what happens. And, you know, it works for him so much of the time. But Mr. Elliot Cardine had a fantastic race yesterday, second place overall, yep. just consistent and smooth out there. Another 
Canadian making Canada proud out here with so many others. And he, he uh, Adam, uh, Adam and, and uh, Elliot, they, they pretty much matched each other for pace. There was, a, there was a point where there was this gap that opened up. It was about 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes. But then they pretty much held that gap the whole way through, despite the fact that, I mean, they were in and out of aid stations so fast. Oh. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, at best, a solid mid packer, and I go into aid stations and you know, it's like sit down, have lunch, change my shoes, yeah. change my socks, or whatever. Right. These guys were coming in, dropping a pack, grabbing a handheld, and they were out. And they managed, they they sort of held this 10, 12 minute gap all the way through the race, which shows that they were both moving really well, really consistently. Um, so yeah, very very impressive. Very and it impressive. really comes down to in those types of things, it comes down to like. You know, Elliot was able to match everything that Adam was throwing down. Adam was throwing down at his leisure because he did have control of the race. But, you know, Elliot was matching everything. And he, he it seems like they almost had the same game plan and how they approached the race. Yep. And uh, that just Adam was able to put in that 10 minute gap and then just held it. So yeah, held it. some of those moves can be really important. So we're hoping to see what shakes out here today in terms of race strategy. Um, it's, you know, it's so much more than just about going for it and seeing what happens. There is a lot of strategy behind this and everybody is calculating their moves and when they want to make them. And then to round out that top three, we had Andrew Simpson, uh, who's just, you know, he, he says he loves competition. He loves to chase competition. And that's why he showed up here. And that's why he shows up to other races where he says, you know what? I'm not exactly like, don't want to run the course like JFK. It's not inspiring to me, but man, there's so much competition and he'll be back there again. We found out, uh, this year to do another one, but an East Coast Beast Coast shredder, he should feel pretty comfortable on the technical terrain coming yeah. from the East Coast. Yeah, that, it would have felt familiar to him. Um, yeah, and again, he he just he ran his race. I don't think he got phased by what was going on. He just he did his thing. He had a plan. He executed. Um, that was it. Was great to watch to see these guys. Absolutely, and the, and the women's race again, as we as we discussed earlier, I thought the women's race was super exciting. There were there were changes in the lead a little bit more in the final six miles. Yeah. There was changes in the yeah. lead. It, it seems like Lottie Brinks passed Elsa McDonald on you know the descents coming um, back into Cascade Locks, took that lead there with the final three miles at the aid station, and you know just maintained that lead, and and you know it really wasn't as much of a threat. Uh, from that point, but Elsa went out pretty hot. You know, she, she went, she's a notorious hard finisher. Um, she likes to, to finish on like a really aggressive, leave it all out there kind of way. And I think she pulled that trigger pretty early yesterday and, you know, she found out that those, the gorge has teeth It bites back a little bit and it, it ate up those quads a touch. Um, but then Christina Randrup having a great race, moving herself consistently up the pack all day long, making her final chain, her final moves. Um, as we heard from Rich Lockwood, that final pass on the descent. And, you know, you come in with a game plan because this course is really, it suits those who plan well mm-hmm. versus those who just race hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and we found that out yesterday as we have with previous years. And, you know, uh, Matt Daniels not only taken out the 50K previously, but... Um, you know, coming here at the 30k and crushing it. And one of the one of the aspects of of today's race that's different, obviously, from yesterday, apart from the distance, is no pacers today. Yep. Which you know, pacers made a difference. I think yesterday it was interesting watching who had pacers, who who had who picked up pacers, uh, who who didn't. Um, and I and and it's always I think it's interesting to to think about how that makes an impact i mean obviously nobody everyone plans if they're going to have a pace that they have a plan in place or not um but today it's just the racers they're just they're out there on their own obviously they can have uh, people at the aid stations but there's big gaps between the aid stations and right they're just racing it's just them and, and their competitors. Sometimes all it takes is someone to just remind you of what your game plan was. Right. Because uh, you can get so caught. I have a saying out there on the course, like, uh, you know, I always remind myself, get out of your head and into your legs. Because you can spend more energy thinking about and overthinking the race versus just executing the game plan that you had. And you should be somewhat adaptable out there. You should be able to, you know, make some changes on the fly. Um, adapt to what's in front of you, but also like you can overthink it. And when you have a, a pacer there, who's just like, buddy, just move. Like, let's go. Like, let's get on this. Um, Hey, remember you said you were going to do this. Like it's time to show up uh, and do, do just that. And it's, 
Absolutely. It is awesome. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday with with um, with Corinne. It was really interesting that uh, Elliot picked up a pacer, but the pacer was like eight meters ahead of him. Like they they didn't. It was just almost like the pacer was just like, right, I'm just a rabbit. You're going to chase me. Yep. They didn't talk. They weren't like having a conversation, um, which was really interesting because obviously other athletes picked up a pacer who is, uh, you know, a, yeah, a, a stride member, behind a family him. member, a buddy, or, or yeah. somebody that they know well, and they're. You could see that they were engaging and talking. Fantastic shot of the water. Yeah, we're getting some it's amazing shots over there. At uh, This is Multnomah Falls, the classic, iconic Multnomah Falls of the Pacific Northwest here in Oregon. Uh, we are coming to you from Cascade Locks, Oregon. So for those who are not familiar, this is along the Columbia River Gorge, the Oregon side of the gorge, um, just about an hour outside of Portland. It's stunning country beautiful country you know i've run quite a bit in portland myself um and the surrounding areas but there is nothing that looks quite like the gorge and quite yeah, like really multnomah amazing. falls yeah stunning i mean the grandiosity of you know these waterfalls um you know we're grateful to have the moisture out here so we have waterfalls this year and we have uh you know something that's kind of a mainstay here but we've had some dry years and uh, you know, to have this area being protected by the, you know, the levels of water that we have is is great to see so that, you know, hopefully, hopefully we don't have a repeat of the wildfires uh, anytime soon. Because as you as we are going to be moving down the course, you will see that, uh, you know, there are some burn scars out here still yeah. years later. Um, and we will see some of that. And I think that that's also something to maybe talk about a little bit while we're waiting for some updates on on how the athletes are doing. I mean, the the team at Daybreak and and uh, well, everyone involved in the race, the team at Free Trail, they've done a lot of work to make the trails accessible. You know, obviously with the race in mind, but they're 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 making the trails. They're, they're doing their best to make the trails right after that devastating fire um, for everyone. You know, to use all year round. Um, which I think is a brilliant, I think that's a brilliant aspect of of a race using an area like this or being in an area like this where it's able to contribute beyond just the race. Itself. Right. They're out here selfishly doing it for the race, but it, it benefits so many others in the community. Sure. And, you know, huge shout out to Daybreak um, and Free Trail for getting their community to rally behind yeah. and do some big trail work days. Um, I know you can always go on to the daybreak racing website and sign up for volunteer days of coming out and, you know, helping maintain these trails because they need it. I mean, these, these trails don't just clear themselves out when these trees fall, they don't, you know, no one's coming out here and cleaning them out, uh, naturally. So, um, we need, we need crews out here to help with that. So if you can ever get out and volunteer, even for your own local stuff, if you like watching this, if you enjoy the race, we can see some runners out there in the distance, small little dots out there. Uh, making their way through. We did get a bit of an update. We're going to look for some numbers here. We've got s an update that 795 made their way through. Um, I am not seeing a bib 795, but let's see what the other one was. Alex King in fourth place. Kyle. Kyle, Thanks, Kyle. Peterson. Awesome. Thank you for giving us some updates out there. This helps tremendously. Yeah, I'm not catching any of those bib numbers coming through. We'll get some updates uh, here at Ainsworth Aid Station where we've got uh, a timing pad there that should update with mile 7.8 splits. It usually takes them about an hour to get there is what we've projected. We're going to have uh, some drone up there and a videographer up there, but just look at how amazing these views are. I don't know. That, hour, that first hour goes by pretty quick mentally just because you've got these huge waterfalls amazing areas uh trail runners out there it's just it's gonna be amazing greg cool. Connolly giving us his uh update on the conditions of friday you know he must have run the 30k conditions were great few slick muddy spots it had rained the night before yep um so they did get a little bit of that but not since. So we've got amazing conditions. Jamil and I were out on the course yesterday after the broadcast, gave a little shakeout on it, and it worked great. It was perfect. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that we're in for a fast day comparative to last year's times. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and yesterday, I mean, well, interestingly, 2023, the, the course records 
stood right from 2023 despite the conditions arguably being i was gonna yesterday. say it had, it had gnarlier conditions but actually did have that uh that fkt um it it or the fastest course record uh for that was fantastic okay um so well i was going to ask a little bit about that because uh this is not a theory that has any scientific backing but when the conditions are bad maybe the athletes push through quicker because i mean not the guys not the people at the front obviously they're they're racing for the win or for the podium but but i was i'm really interested in the people that are you know going to spend the day on the trails today you know i i guess we could call them mid packers you know the people that are here challenging themselves um for them this is an amazing opportunity and experience to spend a day uh in a beautiful location challenging themselves exactly i actually so my girlfriend is actually running the race um oh well, we can see the runners ripping down the course right now coming through the trees my girlfriend's actually running the race and you know she had just run a marathon like a month and a half ago that was her goal and she you know crushed her goal time significantly um you know well, speaking of sleepers she told me i just want to run a 335 and you know break that and she ran 313 like yeah. I know Sleeper. we talked about this on Thursday. Just, yeah. just a little sandbagger. Um, so <laughs> she's out running today, and I was like, "Hey, just go enjoy it. You've got beautiful conditions. You've got bluebird skies on the way, and this course is so fantastic that just take your time." So to yeah. your point, yeah, I think when the conditions are nice like this, you're probably going to see some mid packers and backpackers be like, "Hey, this is this is beautiful. Why yeah. am I trying to end this day early?" But these shredders coming up now, they are wanting to get this race done as soon as possible. Um, you know, we, we saw them, you can kind of see them through the trees on the upper section. So this uh, trail right in front of us that slants towards the bottom right, they are not using that trail. They are going straight across into the, the woods, about eye level with where the waterfalls disappear in the trees. So you can see them back there and the, the wooded trail. They're just going straight through onto the left side of the screen. So they actually won't come down that trail, but beautiful views nonetheless. Um, they are moving quick. They're getting some of that downhill energy going. This would be kind of the, the precipice of the climb where you dip over and you're able to really start that screaming descent down into the Ainsworth aid station. And on their way to Ainsworth aid station, they cross another copper couple waterfalls. Yep. Um, I believe the bridges are up. Oh, there we go. Some more of that beautiful terrain. Yeah, it looks fantastic. We actually have a bit of a special guest here. We are going to keep an eye on the waterfalls and on the action while we bring her in. Give us just a moment and we will be back with you. Hey, how's it going? Good morning. Let's adjust this to whatever feels comfortable. All right. Try to keep it about that length away. So. Okay. We are joined here in studio with the one, the only, the ever affable Lottie Brinks. How are you doing? I'm a little sore. Um, well earned. But. <laughs> Other than that, I feel good. Yeah, I just got some breakfast in me. I have a coffee. It's good. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Well, first and foremost, congratulations on your race yesterday. It was a pleasure watching it from behind the screen. You know, we got to see you do all the hard work while we sat back and enjoyed it. Um, but it was fantastic. It was beautiful. It was a very well done race. Um, speak to the beauty of the course that we're seeing right now going through Multnomah Falls. What it's, was going through your mind when you saw this? It's so, so beautiful. And it's really exciting when you approach the waterfalls because you can, before you even see them, you can feel them. Well, you can obviously hear them, but you can feel kind of the mist in the air too. And it's very just refreshing. I always love going to the waterfalls. But yeah, the course is incredible. It's beautiful. It's a lot rockier than I remembered from last year. <laughs> Somehow, I don't know why. I think last year was just very wet and rainy that my focus was somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, I think you also kind of get lulled into a false sense of like remembering the smooth parts of the course because it is 
it is very technical and then it's very smooth yeah. and then it's very technical and then and very, very smooth. smooth. So like you get, you get lulled into remembering the, the fun parts that were smooth and easy and you forget how gnarly this course can be. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Did you, did you feel with the conditions yesterday, you were really able to let, let rip, like you weren't worried about the conditions underfoot thinking about how fast some of the athletes were moving through the course yesterday? The course felt really good. It wasn't like wet or slippery or anything like that. Um, there were maybe a couple little muddy spots, but it was nothing yeah. where I felt like I had to be very careful. Um, I, I kind of took it a little easy in the beginning on the more technical sections. I also like semi sprained my ankle on Monday. So I was oh, a no. little extra cautious because <laughs> I didn't want to roll it again. <laughs> Um, but especially on the 100k course, the last out and back is a lot less technical. So that one was like easy to rip mm -hmm. and go. And the Which, section they are on right now, it looks like that's the very like smooth path. Yeah, they move from this really smooth section into as they go through a couple of those more waterfalls into Ainsworth, where mm -hmm. it gets really technical yeah. into Ainsworth. Those boulders that are you know just loaf of bread size that you have to hop around and you can't ever trust them because mm -hmm. some move some don't um but we see them screaming down this smooth 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 yeah, uh wide fast. single track it it can be really quick but you can also we mentioned earlier you can kind of blow your legs up going down that a little too fast um yeah. but i want to hear a little bit of, more about um your race yesterday and how that played out, your battle with Ailsa McDonald and Christina Randra for the podium. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like you moved your way up really, really well into um, into a, a place where you could really make some moves. Mm -hmm. And at, at one point you, I don't know if you've known this, but you had 20 minute gap to make up on <laughs> Ailsa. And you not only that. ate up that gap, but you went beyond that and crushed it. So. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Was that more just kind of biding your time? Is that how the race unfolded for you? Tell me about. It. Was it a plan? It was. It was a. It was a plan. You never really know with races. Like the gun goes off and anything can really happen. But my plan was to take it really easy the first twenty miles and be comfortable and just like have a good time, talk to people, um, you know, find someone to run with. And I ran with Christina for a good bit in the first twenty miles. And then the second 20 miles, I wanted to put myself into position. That's when I made the move to pass Christina and Andrea around like the like mile 33, eight station. Mm -hmm. And then the last 20 were chase and hold on. <laughs> and that you absolutely did. Yeah. We were talking earlier about how fantastic it is that we're able to do this, to set, to have all this, these updates and, and live footage and the drones and everything else. But the, but the moment when you took the lead, we, we didn't, like it was a complete surprise mm -hmm. to us here in the studio. Suddenly you popped out into the, into the A station. We were like, oh, crumbs, what's happened? <laughs> what was the, what, what, can you just describe briefly the moment? I mean, how did that play out? You mean how the past going? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I was working really hard going out of Wyeth because I saw Christina and Andrea coming in and it's always a little bit misleading because you kind of have to double the time yep. um, to like get the actual gap but in my head I'm like oh they're right there they're basically at the aid station so I did have probably four minutes on them at that point but I, I just thought it was too close so I worked really really hard getting out of it and then all of a sudden I caught up to Elsa like you I just saw her yeah, I I wanted to catch her, but I also knew very well that there was a huge gap. And I heard on my way down to Wyeth, I was running with a camera runner and he had the sound on. So I heard Corinne say, oh, the like, gap is going to be in double digits. Like, Using the media crew is like, <laughs> nice. Just sniping some information. That yeah, is a it new was move. Great. Um, they were talking about shoes and everything. I'm like, you guys, if only you could hear me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's. I ended up passing Elsa on the on the like. There's a little dip, like you climb, you go down, and you climb again. And she wasn't. Um, she wasn't feeling so well on the climbs. I think on the descent, she was running really fast still. But the the climbs, she took a little bit easier, and that's why I passed her. And then I just kind of hammered for a while because I was just really worried she's going to held on, on to for me. dear life yeah. and went for it. Um, I mean, this race does that. There's a lot of changing in the final 10 miles of the course mm -hmm. just because 
uh, how that works with like that final last climb out of Wyeth and then dropping into Cascade and then obviously the subsequent mm-hmm. finish is a nice scream downhill as well. Um, we've heard from a handful of people that, you know, as you're coming down off of, you know, come up Wyeth and then you drop down to Cascade Locks for the second time, that is really kind of visible. You can kind of see because of the switchbacks and it's really flowy. Um, did you know how close Elsa was or did you just go for it and not even look back? I didn't really. Um, I, she just kind of came, like I went around the switch back and there she was. Like I didn't see her coming or I didn't see her in front of me, I guess. Um, but what kind of stressed me out a little bit once I passed her is that there were all these people coming towards us. Um, and they all I, I was i just knew that they were all just like g- giving out to the like intel they're like 30 seconds 45 <laughs> seconds that's awesome and i i didn't have that luxury because like no one can tell me when i'm in the front how far elsa is back so i just I kept running and tried to not think about it well you executed fantastically um tell us this was in a lead up to western states correct yeah do you have any other plans where are we going to see you between now and western states are you just going back to idaho and training or what do we got going on i'm i'm going back to boise later today and i'll i'll stay mostly there there are no more races in between now and states but i will go and do that training camp and the memorial day training camp awesome excited for that I'm really. I'm actually going to be there, so I'm really excited cool. to see you there. It's going to be fantastic. That is a wonderful weekend if you've never been. I have. Uh, no. It's so fantastic, so much fun. Um, I always want to end with this because I think that our community and our crew and our pacers are just everything to us. They really make or break our races. Um, who did you have out there crewing and pacing for you? Um, you had no pacers, but who did you have out there crewing for you? Um, and you know, why did you bring them along? Who, what did they mean to you? I, I did actually have a pacer who was also my crew. It's my buddy, Anton, um, from Boise. He uh, did an amazing job, um, had everything ready that I needed to have, encouraged me, gave me all the gaps. Um, he did pace me for, I don't know, maybe six miles or so out of Wyeth. And then I think he kind of took a wrong step and rolled his ankle or something. And then I just... I think, I think you're being generous because he's just commented in the YouTube. He says, getting dropped by Lotte <laughs> yesterday was one of the funnest running experiences. And he came into the aid station. You, you appeared in the aid station at uh, Cascade Falls. You dropped him before then, right? Y- I think yeah. you came in. Yeah, I dropped him after we Let's, passed we, Elsa. We're now just saying you dropped him. We're now making that clear. He seems yeah. to be okay with yeah. that. She, she was being very she's gracious been very and kind. And yeah. now and she's and like, and, and I you, dropped it. And, and I dropped him. And you popped into the aid station. Obviously, Yassin was like, oh, here you are. And we were getting super excited. And then Anton like appeared just a few minutes after you. And we were like, what happened? He was like, oh, I, don't, I can't talk about it. I'm going to take a shortcut. So he kind of just tried I did, to... Sh- he, I did see him again on the road, which <laughs> he was tried awesome. To catch I'm like, where did you come from? <laughs> what happened? Well, he says it's being dropped by you was the funnest running experience. Awesome. So there you go. I love that. Shout out to Anton. Yeah, he's great. I, I can't imagine running with you not being a fantastic experience. You have just one of the most kindest demeanors out there a a low key i think low key inside you're an an absolute shredder and you are just as aggressive as it gets but no one would ever know because you hit the aid station smiling and you are just so fantastic seeing you give the other girls high fives out there and passing each other and just always cheering each other on you bring out kind of what this sport really means in terms of it's it's high competition but also high camaraderie so you are one of the most beloved um here in the sport thank you lottie for joining us we will let you you. continue on about your morning and get some get some more food in you because i'm sure you just went through the calories yesterday so go rest go recover Um, and we can't wait to see you at states awesome i'm gonna go crew for sarah beal go sarah beal that'll be awesome we're excited thanks for joining us That was the ever lovable Lottie Brinks there bringing us her updates from uh, her race yesterday in the 100K as a nice little tune up getting ready for her Western States thrashing that I imagine she's going to do out on the course if it's anything like it was yesterday. Um, 
Yeah, such a such such an amazing human. Love her to death. Crazy. She is fantastic. She just made everything look fun yesterday. And I think that's, you know, I think that's that's her special weapon, right? We all have special weapons. I think every athlete has something that they do better than others. Um, you know, I think for some people it can be they can just tolerate a lot of eating and other people they make it a game. They're fun. Their mental game is super strong. For others it's they know how to make it not fun and yep. hurt for yep. many, many hours. But her her strong suit on top of her athletic abilities, her special power, I think, is making this just enjoying every moment of the step and she making it a beautiful experience. experience. having a great time, yeah, absolutely. So we, uh, we're still waiting for some updates. I guess we're looking for athletes who are going to be coming into the Ainsworth aid station. They had 7.8 miles, obviously, with that, that big climb um, to start off with. And then the potentially quad destroying uh, descent um, but it shouldn't be too long I mean they started 10 minutes late for anyone that's joining us uh, 10 or 15 minutes late yeah they're about 15 minutes late um, so and Ainsworth is usually minutes. about an hour ish yeah. to get there um, yeah. so we should be seeing them based on some of those hot paces and that chase pack that we had we definitely should be seeing them relatively soon and we can pick up some positions. We are getting some news from people that are on the course who are helpfully um, giving us some updates in the in the YouTube live chat, um, which is which is great. But we'll we'll have some uh, we'll have some sort of real numbers um, when people go through the Ainsworth Aid Station. Yeah, we'll definitely see what we can get from there. Until then, we are graced with some of these beautiful, beautiful views as they roll into Ainsworth. Um, you know, Jamil and I went out on the course, as I've said, uh, we ran from roughly the Ainsworth aid station up into some of the, those first couple waterfalls, uh, heading directly west of that. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful country. It is gnarly though. It is very, very technical through those sections. Um, even, and you get all these beautiful views that you can't be distracted by, which is almost frustrating because you're like this is such an amazing place feet. but yeah, i also watch like, where you put your feet <laughs> i need to be looking two feet in front of me yeah. and not you know down at these beautiful views um absolutely stunning stunning views today yeah crazy. and we got the sun coming out now i think the clouds are burning off we're gonna get some some beautiful bluebird oh here we go that is mr chris myers right there we've got our runner cams chasing and if I am not mistaken, that is Chris with the backwards ball cap. Instagram handle at half Asian Chris just had a shredder of a day over at the Black Canyons 100K earning his golden ticket to Western States. This is a tune up into Western States um, for Chris. I'm not sure who that is in front. We don't have a bib. But this is those technical sections I was talking about. So they're going to do this quick little step up these rocks, really, really technical, um, around the corner, and then they are going to drop into uh, like around Horse Tooth Falls area. So they're going to get these a couple really amazing views. These these runner cams are just getting back into cell coverage, so it's going to get stronger and stronger as they're running through. One thing I'm noticing is, you know, this runner in front of us has a strong lean forward and they're getting really springy off their steps. Mm. Uh, so he's putting a lot of power and torque into these little climbs. And you can see that that exaggerated kickback right there, that is definitely Chris. Um, that exaggerated kickback on the descent uh, lets us know that he's still trying to push through the descent and not just rolling it. I mean, clearly. This is uh, it, it, it's so early in the race, but it, you could almost imagine that this looks like a move. Yeah. I, I, I mean, think, it's hard because we can't see whether there's anyone right behind him, but. Uh, I think we're absolutely getting kind of a glimpse into the type of race that Chris wanted to have, which already <laughs> put a gap on our camera guy. Yeah. Uh, which is fantastic. We're going to turn this corner and you're going to be blessed with some of my favorite views on this entire course. This is a really fun section to run through because you get to run under the waterfall itself. And there's Harmony out there just snapping shots. Oh, uh, yeah. Looking like Bigfoot coming out of the corner. 
Yeah, that's definitely Chris. Uh, I know that gate, even though it's a little choppy, we got the slideshow. Um, it's absolutely fun to see him run. He's just on top of being one of the nicest guys ever and just an absolute shredder. Um, you know, he's humble and he's hungry. So today might be one of those things where, you know, he already has his golden ticket secured. He's really not racing for much more than just added fitness. I mean, he had 40 miles in his legs and a decent chunk of elevation by Thursday. Yeah. So it's not like he's like fully tapering for this. Doesn't sound like it. But, you know, it's, this is one of those races. I don't want to say it's ever like a throwaway race, but he's already proven what he needed to prove. He's got a bigger race ahead of him with Western States. So is this like, hey, I want to test something. I want to see how my body responds to going out hard and just throttling it. Yeah. Um, here they come up around the falls there with our camera just giving us some stunning views, even though we are in our slideshow mode. And that is that is the ever lovable photographer over there, Summer, who does the race photography for the course. She does just an incredible job. We got a glimpse of her for a hot second. You will see her as the official, one of the official race photographers. You'll see her number pop up a lot throughout the next week as runners get their photos um, and tag her in them. I mean, having the opportunity to uh, shoot a race like this in such a beautiful location must be fantastic. I mean, as a, as a co-founder of a magazine, you know, a print ink on paper magazine where we absolutely love uh, photography as well as words, um, it, it, sometimes we get photos and you can see that the photographer is just having the time of their lives because they've got such a great backdrop. You know, they've got some really... Absolutely. I'm not saying it's easy, but but being in a, in a place like this m makes taking amazing shots, I guess, less, less challenging. Um, right. When everywhere you look, there's a beautiful backdrop. It's, right. uh, it makes it a little easier. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, Summer, along with the other photographers out here, you know, these, these runners are getting moments of their lives that they are going to cherish forever. Absolutely. Um, you know, whether they're out there winning the race or whether they're out there just getting the race done, their first 50K, 100K, et cetera, first time in the Pacific Northwest, they get to capture that. So it's a beautiful shout out to all the, the wonderful photographers out there that capture our moments that mean so much to us. And that we're at the finish line with Dylan until midnight last night. Yeah. Catching, catching everyone coming in. Their, uh, their days are pretty hard. Their moment. Yeah. They're pretty long and arduous for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've got, you can kind of see this is that m moving into the Ainsworth aid station where these rocks can get pretty gnarly off these rock slides. Um, looks like they actually cleared a bunch out from they, previous yeah, years because yeah. that used to be a just bedrock, just nothing but, you know, small boulders that you were having to hop over. Yeah, the the course, the trail itself looks fantastic i mean the 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 um steep whether whether or not it's too steep to run or just about runnable but actually underfoot it looks it looks fantastic i mean you mentioned about turning an ankle but uh but it looks as though you know a lot of the athletes can really kind of put their foot down um, yeah and you don't have to worry about the steps as much just because we're not we don't have the the it's not wet mm. uh it's it's I wouldn't say it's dry. There's enough, there's been enough rain and moisture that it's like, it's packed it. So you're not going to get dusty dry, but you're also not getting wet and slick. It yeah, really yeah. is honestly the best conditions to run in, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, other than like the terrain can be a little rocky and challenging, but as you're seeing, you get a combination of both smooth and uh, so not like... We've yeah, got, I think we're yeah. getting a first athlete coming into the Ainsworth aid station. We've had an update from Cole on the ground. We're just waiting to get audio from Cole. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got our camera crew out there watching. You can see them hustling around. They know someone's on the way. They are getting prepared, nope. and here he comes. A quick stop. Oh, that was super fast. That was amazing. He didn't. He didn't waste any time. I. I think he just grabbed uh, a a gel 
and maybe a little bit of water and yeah, was gone. Dunk some water Once we get some audio from Clark, we'll get a check in to see exactly how that went. I don't know if there really was much of a, a I wouldn't call that an aid station stop. That, that was more of an aid station breath. Pause. Yeah, you kind of skipped and then yeah. straight through. So as soon as we get that audio up, we will hear what's going on there. But good to good to stay here and now and and, and start to see some of the gaps. Uh, have a have a sense of yeah. We want to we want to catch these top men and women, kind of see what's happening out there and who's who's striking matches early and who's going to be conservative and try to take that that climb. Now I will say, historically, whoever has been first here has not been first at the finish except for last year's winner. So it will be exciting to see how it shakes out. Um, I I love this race for that reason. Uh, again, it's a game plan. So. We'll have to see. I mean, honestly, already kind of a gap. Like, now I'm excited. Now you're seeing uh, a little bit more of excitement come out of me yeah, as yeah. a former competitor being like, yeah, this is this is what gets fun. This is this is us sat in a studio. This is part of the problem, isn't it? We're, we're, we don't, we're, we're desperate for information. We need, uh, we need to hear from our own on-field correspondents. I think we're having a bit of a challenge getting the sound from Clark. Yeah, a little, little bit of an audio challenge, but we do get these awesome views and we can actually see who's coming in. As we know, it was Chris Myers up front and then hopefully we can get Clark to give us some, uh, maybe text us some updates on what numbers we are seeing. I called him Cole a second ago. I didn't mean to do that. Clark, sorry. Yeah, with your accent, we couldn't tell anyway. Okay, so good. you're you're golden. Okay. You could have got away with That's it perfect. for sure. <laughs> Oh, so this is really, this is kind of where like the excitement happens to me. Um, we can kind of get a tell for how people are looking here in the aid stations. Are they smooth controlled? Are they frantic? Um, like what are we getting from these athletes in the aid station? We might even be able to get a, an awesome, uh, so we've got another second athlete through there. Yeah, we've got, that was number two that went through there. I have a feeling we're going to be able to get uh, Clark is going to uh, give us his replay us again. Update. He's going to show us his phone that he recorded the, the finishers coming through. Yeah. Awesome. So after this, they leave that Ainsworth the aid station. You should see that was actually on the road. Um, they drop off the trail onto the road for nice, like, nice, just nice. a few feet, and then they shoot back up onto the trail. And I think we've got Clark audio. Yeah, yeah you well, have fun. Oh, do you have buddy? Audio I now? think we yeah, can hear you, you, my man. Great. Okay, perfect. Wow, action packed over here. Okay, so could you see any of that? video just so i know for context okay cool we we could see we did uh, not so get yeah, any audio first though in first uh, yeah, he is freaking crushing it through here it was actually pretty hilarious. he came to the water jug just threw some water bread and body and house. no food no nothing. yeah nice you got this you got this well played sir you're good nice nice well done that's 711 for your reference um and that is men's five also just you can see some of the uh gels being put back onto the table there uh for those who haven't been in the race or knew sort of the context of that uh the the respectful thing to do is to only take two gels from each aid station <laughs> Accidentally, and then he dropped two right here. So he was, um, in the yeah. yeah, so we're losing we're losing Chris's audio a little bit, so we're gonna cut from him until we can get that cleared up. But it looks like that was Alex King in third place, seven one one. Uh, with Chris Myers in the lead. And then we had a, I did not catch the other number from that, but there is a second place runner out there who is just shredding. Um, and it looked like from what I could gather and what we heard that you know, they just, they all came ripping through 
looking like they were just ready to push and everyone was, you know, executing their game plan so far, which yeah. at seven, eight miles in, I hope, I hope game plans are being executed at this point. So, but, um, but from a, from a, um, from the perspective of somebody who's, who's excited about the race, you know, it's always good to see people challenging themselves, you know, maybe, maybe, um, taking a risk even if it's relatively early in the race, because that makes for more exciting racing. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I think that the one thing I do know about Chris, like I said, I think he's he's got less to lose at this race. So I think he's going to go out and just roll the dice and see what happens, you know, like... And learn something from the experience. Learn something, learn how to push himself. I mean, like, if it were me, I can't say what I would do if I were him, but if it were me, I would look at this as an opportunity to say, nice, okay, nice. like... I'm going to run Western States and I know to be competitive and get that top 10, I've got to take some risks. So I'm going to practice tasting, taking risks here at this race that I've already earned my ticket. I'm already going, this is a training race so I can roll the dice a little bit. I can play with nutrition. I can play with a few things. So that might be his game plan running with nothing to lose, which can be a really exciting way to race. Obviously Alex King, he, like I said, that guy, he knows one effort and it's shred. It's just go. It's just, it's go. And, uh, you know, he, like he's got a lot of the FKTs on the local mountains for a reason, because he, he can run uphill and technical downhill, uh, like nobody's business. Yep. So we're going to get to see him, um, do, I think he's going to be one of those guys that if there is a gap, he's going to try to eat that up at the end on that final climb up to the turnaround and back down to cascade locks so um that'll be awesome dylan humberger is who we have in second place out of ashland oregon young buck 24 years old um just has a a really young hungry uh mentality where he wants to come and make a name for himself um and i actually was just in ashland oregon myself doing some running on my way out here and let me tell you there's there's such thing as Ashland flat, which is not flat. Oh, really? It is, everything's verde out there. Okay. So it's impossible to get any run in without like 1200 feet of vert right off the bat. So he's no stranger to these really steep climbs. And it's going to be really fun to see him, uh, him, Alex and Chris Myers, all very competitive, very talented athletes just push themselves out here. There were, there were a couple of comments yesterday that, that perhaps Dylan Humberger is, is sort of, um, it's perhaps seeing this race as an opportunity to not not get redemption, but like to to sort of you know stamp his name uh, on this on this trail running scene in the Pacific Northwest. So I think it'd be interesting is maybe he's positioned himself really well there in second place, um, and is and is thinking about how maybe in, in the latter stages of the race he can uh, he can start to sort of make moves. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's going to strategize some things. And, you know, when you're running with a chip on your shoulder and something to prove, that could be a really great um, motivator there. Um, and I, I think I misspoke. We had updates that it was Alex King in third. It's actually Matthew Bigman who is in third, according to the updates. So let's keep an eye on that. So just for reference, I said we were going to see someone hit eight, Ainsworth Aid Station at roughly an hour. Chris Myers came in at 59 minutes and 32 seconds. So 28 seconds out. How do you feel about that? Uh, you know, I sh the, the over under, I think I nailed it. So <laughs> we'll, we'll give that. Um, and so the gaps here at this stage of the race here at Ainsworth, we've got Chris Myers who had just come in at 59.30. Dylan Humberger was... Yeah, three minutes behind him. Yeah, just three, I mean, really straightforward, three minutes behind him. And then with Matthew Bigman being a couple seconds behind him, that yep. was a really quick, quick... Uh, route and then a minute behind them is alex king so we've got four within just a few minutes of of each other at this stage in the race that means absolutely nothing but it tells you what their game plans are well yeah and it means that i mean with this big climb i guess as you, you as you were saying earlier i mean some people are going to be particularly strong climbers maybe other people are prepared to really let their legs go on the downhill so they're going to make up time on the downhill maybe um it's hard to know 
what will happen in the latter stages of the race is when what they've actually done is a, is, is this massive climb and a, and a big downhill. Yeah, is um, that going to show up at mile 22 when you're at the top of the Cascade Locks climb and you know you've got to drop down and turn around and come back? You know, the whole, like, I mean, the, the whole of the top 10 men have come through that aid station within eight minutes of each other. Yeah, so we've got... It's not a lot. Yeah, and no, that makes absolute sense. I mean, to put it in perspective, that is a difference of one minute per mile yeah because we're at eight miles um so our eighth is running a minute per mile slower uh than our lead or i should say our lead is running a minute per mile faster yeah than the rest of the top 10. Yeah. um so he's out there doing some work right. um well, it will be you guys really exciting okay. we do got some audio from clark yes my dude oh, i think we can sweet. hear you just okay, fine nice nice the man got it worked out back here thank you cody okay so everything is so exciting right now oh my gosh all right so i've been hearing a little bit of what you're saying you're absolutely right um chris myers absolutely dominating off the front uh no surprise you saw the black Canyon. you've seen in others i saw him win the mcdowell mountain frenzy 50k in a similar fashion dude's fast so so exciting to see him um we saw that yeah man you got this well done well done um, we got to see the follow cam following him down. So we were chatting with his cam guy. Um, he was like borderline dropping him. So that was cool. Um, so he came through, he literally just took one of the pitchers and dumped a bunch of water over his head and back and bounced no food, no nutrition, no nothing. So he is on a mission for sure. Um, two, three. So Matthew Bigman actually came in second into the station and, um, he stopped to grab some water. And then three took through. So um, that's where he, yeah, <laughs> nice. Yes, so good to see you, you're crushing it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so um, yeah, so two, three men's. Matthew comes in in uh, second and then he stops for water. Their former second goes through. So that's why Matthew was at third out the check-in right there. But he looks like he's in great spirits and just absolutely crushing. So that's good, good news. I this believe. is now women's one and now women's two through. Yes. Nice. Great work. Looking so strong. Yes. Oh, uh, man. Nice. This is going to be a we had lot Jason of fun. Baker on the way. Okay. So then there was a pack of must have been six or seven guys. Guys came through all just completely shredding through the entire switchbacks. Um, everybody kind of took different moves through the aid station. Oh, one quick note too. The men's four, he came through super. Jason Baker, dude. Yeah, man. That's my boy right there. Get it. Yeah. The, the stoke is it. alive you. out there at Ainsworth. Look, wow. You. Okay. Dude, so that is Jason. Jason Baker, that is one of our Cleveland ambassadors and a total crusher. He just got second place at, I want to say Badox. Was that Badox? Um, behind, behind Bronco Billy. Um, he is definitely a very strong runner as well. So we are looking for a very awesome day from him today. So, so excited that he's looking as good as he is right now. Um, Clark, I want to hear what you were saying uh, about yeah, uh, Alex on, King. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he came through. Um, he grabbed, nice man, you got this. He grabbed uh, one of the handfuls of the spring energy <laughs> uh, awesome sauce, and he was going so fast to the aid station that he just grabbed the handful. It ended up being about four ish. Nice man, you got this. And honest dude, well done. Get it, get it, get it. Honest dude that he is, he looked at his hand and dropped two right for us to pick up because he knows that we try to take only two from aid stations so there's plenty for everyone and so i i am not shocked at all about that alex is yeah the most awesome. like just <laughs> best dude you're gonna meet on the trail today so man huge shout out to alex for doing that we also looks like we just no had doubt. the women that come through i mean it was clear it was just like instinct it was so sick yeah that's women's one two that just went through so we had michelle um, lutz and sarah was, beale that was that was women's one two right we haven't seen three yet yeah yeah awesome cool yeah it was just michelle lutz and sarah biel which yeah, yeah. i mean sarah's uh, an absolute sarah shredder and super right fast that's, that's everything in that might be heard now yeah yeah so is we this... have an expert um commentator on the side off of here the champion 
Rachel, right? Yeah, nice. Woo -woo. Yep, that is You're absolutely we'll Terra Fraga. Yep, and Terra was asking where a garbage can was very nicely, was going to get it herself. We said drop it and go. So she dropped our the package. We just picked it up, threw it away, and she is out. North Face nice, athlete nice, Terra nice. Fraga, who is preparing for another UTMB race, using this as a nice little tune up race for that, but also just a shredder. She's been out on this course, got second place yeah. in a time a couple of years ago that would have put her in the men's like top five wow like so she's had a shred some good shreds on this course three right now too awesome so it looks sounds like four or five are yeah. coming up pretty quickly let's keep an eye yeah, on women's them four or five coming through yep yep for sure you guys got some good vibes going down there clark tell me about this oh, aid station time. yeah yeah and also just in case you didn't hear it before when i got that intel of who was coming next that is the champion rachel drake over here so um, she was she's helping out from the wings just crushing it one day and then uh coming out and helping out on the aid station the next so that's pretty cool baby in tow right, so, just doing the mom yeah, thing definitely. and the baby is crushing it too like so kidded you got to show the camera this puppy come on this is ridiculous nice woo woo yeah carmen yes nice i don't good know if clark work. is just stoked work, on man. everybody passing on or if he like knows carmen all these people Mango, you get this i think if anyone's been at the the gels it's clark i think he's he's got the energy of someone who's been uh he's been he's nice. been he's been Thank sipping you, on amazing. caffeinated carmen, gels get it. Get it, so get it. by the way that is local shredder carmen um and so yeah i didn't see her bib number but yeah if you can double check that for me if that's carmen bingo that would be awesome um, that would be she came in women's four and left women's five um she just grabbed a couple nutrition and then uh the other uh, the other racer ra uh, ran through but she's basically catching up right now on the single track so that is super cool to see looks like we've got women's six coming through here and looks like women's seven is on the switchback three as well. Awesome. So it looks like the so distance are, between one and two was negligible. They were neck and neck, but Terra Fraga has yep. about two and a half, almost three minutes um, right. of time to make up, which is nothing at this point um, nice, really in nice. the race. But we should be getting updates from what is happening. Crushing it. Yes. Well done. Well done. You got this. So, women's five, Sophie Anders, just behind Tara, a minute and a half behind Tara. Okay, yeah, awesome. So, we got Michelle, up? Sarah, Tara, and Sophie. Nice. So, there's our top three with, uh, oh, looks sorry. like we've yeah. got a nice little chase pack of women coming that through. Was, that was five, I think. Women's five or six. So, Lauren is uh, either five or six, head into Western States. Obviously, really fun to have her on uh friday night i think she was on the the um athlete panel um so she is looking really good just came through aid um big smiles with rachel and definitely crushing it down the the outbound ainsworth i absolutely yeah. love the amount of shredders that are nice. in the pacific northwest and just the the local talent that comes out to these races you know within a few hours drive <laughs> it's just nice. it's incredible to see yeah uh, this good area work, the community is going super strong Have we'll fun. actually get to see You're the cowgill aid station later <laughs> um a local running group that absolutely nice. has shredded here in the past they're um, a, are they're at waklela waklela they're sitting at waklela yep. which is going to be our next aid station nice. that we're going to get to see from um, Clark, tell me a little bit about, was yeah, there anyone please. out there who was looking worse for the wear? Did everybody look like they were just in race mode? Tell me about that. For the most part, race mode. Yeah. I think the major distinction was sort of how everyone's handling what they need to do to prep. There was one person who was sort of adjusting pack for a while. One person who was adjusting his shoes for a while. Um, I'm trying to remember from me, I was running 30 K on Friday. And I, there was one point where you have to walk through the water and I can't really remember where that was, but there was one guy who definitely looked like he was readjusting his shoes to just make sure he's just super efficient. Nice. 782. Get it, man. Um, so nice. Well done. Well done. Get it. Um, so yeah, I think that would be the major distinctions. I wouldn't say anyone 
looked particularly pained or struggled or anything like that through uh for sure the first five to six women um as far as the front men obviously chris was crushing it yeah nice yeah all right so yeah this i mean all all this crew it really comes down to whether or not they grabbed well let's say bookends they stopped it a certain amount of work filling up bottles doing their own nutrition or they just ran through grab nutrition and probably a third of the people just ran straight through didn't do anything so kind of a and this is a good example so that is women six or seven i believe um it looked like bib five six seven but it went around really quickly um but she literally just ran straight through it and looks really strong on the outbound as, as well that was women eight that, women's yeah, eight that just nice. went through nice yeah, Corinne Malcolm in the house. Yes, Corinne that's right who we're now. waiting for. Yes, what's up? Yeah. So it get is it, it is much it. to the viewers' uh, chagrin and dismay that she is out there and not in here yes. because that means they have to listen to me a little bit more. But yeah, Corinne, let's go, Corinne. Up? Everybody's loving you right now. Get it. <laughs> nice absolutely amazing so we, we lost about two seconds with the technical difficulty on the screw top on the bottle <laughs> i love nice. it that was i awesome. love it she's in good oh super good spirits big smiles had a chance to hang out with rachel for a second there for a laugh while we were getting the screw top screwed back on but yeah she looks like she's having fun so and there she cool. goes her classic adidas kit shorts and tank she actually was telling me that she had a uh a men's tank top sent to her because the cap sleeve of the women's shirt was just she was not stoked on it, so huh. she's rocking the men's Adidas kit. You'll see Tara in the nice. North Face kit. Um, and Chris, here we see Chris on the road. Got an update from him. So he's dropped back onto the road. So when they leave nice. Ainsworth Aid Station, they climb, nice, and then they man. drop back down onto yeah. the road. So this section from, <clears throat> excuse me, from Ainsworth nice. looks uh, like... You know, we were talking Good about word. the fact that yes. the, the uphill and the downhill is very runnable, but, but challenging. But now they have a section which is, which is going to be pretty quick. I mean, it's a very fast two miles. Um, before we cut, uh, Clark, I want to go to you. Um, okay. Dude, we've got our women's top men. Absolutely. We've got our women's top men or our women's top 10 uh, coming through. Thank you so much for giving us the updates out there and bringing nice, the man. stoke nice. as always. We no one brings a stoke like you, my dude. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for getting us that. We're gonna let uh, you guys hop down. We're gonna let you guys hop down the crew. Um, yeah, who do you want to shout out right now? Yeah, just it's amazing to be here and seeing all of these. This is personal. Uh, awesome that was clark from speedland over at the ainsworth aid station and what you're getting on your main screen here is a shot of chris myers running the road section so as we said they leave ainsworth aid station they drop down into the aid station off a couple switchbacks they're on you know road level and then they climb back up onto the gorge trail um, and they follow that until they drop here onto this road section. So, um, yeah, this road section is like you said, it's roughly two, two and a half ish miles that they get to run, um, on road. So this course never favors specifically one athlete. It's the, the road runner has their section. Yeah. The smooth shredder has their section. The climber has their sections. The descender has their sections. The technical runner has their sections, which I think adds to the overall excitement of this race because it literally is everything. A hundred percent. And, and it looks as though, I mean, the gaps, I mean, are not insignificant given the, the, the relatively early stage of the race that we're in, but the, those gaps, if, if somebody is a particularly quick road runner or they're just a phenomenal, uh, you know, climber, they can close up. I mean, you were saying earlier, you know, there's a minute, there's almost a minute per mile separating the, the top 10 men as they were coming into that Ainsworth station. But right. by the same token, if somebody can really drop 
some ridiculously fast miles on the uh, on on for example what we're seeing now which is this road section they can close up gaps you know relatively uh relatively significantly absolutely and i think that what you have here is an opportunity for someone who's you know i'm going to throw out some names um and this is not absolute truth but someone like alex king who might be much more uh prone to running uphill hard and descending super hard he's got all that quad strength yep. versus someone like a a matt daniels if you were in the race who's obviously a mountain shredder but the dude can uh really just turn it on the road he's a sub four minute miler that that speed is still I mean, there you've so got that muscle memory exactly you hit the flat bit and you think here we go so maybe maybe those mountain climbers are like hey i'm gonna give this road like dial it back a touch because it's not my strength and i'm just gonna let these quads cool off a bit until we hit the climbs again yeah um it looks like chris just decided he doesn't care what it is he's got one effort and that is all in yeah, um sad. You know, it's a it's a suicide pace kind of day, and and that's what he's going with, and I love it. I cannot wait to see. It looks like that gap has actually opened up a little bit more. Maybe, yeah. He's had three minutes. Looks like he's three minutes over Dylan Humberger coming out of the first aid station where we got the first time split. And yeah, and Dylan some of those followed out by Matthew Bigman like seconds, nine seconds later. So uh, that, that's sort of a little chasing duo. Yeah, that can maybe see him up the road. And that that chase that chase pack has definitely got their work cut out for them, but they're still in the game. No one's out of the game at this point. Um, yeah. As we've said, we've seen uh, you know several runners in the 50k chew up 10 minutes from uh, Cascade Locks the first time mm. back to Cascade Locks into the finish. So <coughs> the out moves can be made at any time. The out and back, which is the same deal as yesterday, you know where they somebody potentially gets to see um the person they're chasing and and as we discussed with lottie this morning when she came in and, and joined us um she was able to see first place on that turnaround and and or or saw in fact she was saying that she saw the two athletes that were chasing her and thought wow they're close so yeah. so really gunned it because she's passed them and saw them coming into the aid station and realized she didn't have so much of a gap on third and fourth gunned it and as a result caught first place and and moved into the lead ended up getting her the motivation however you get the motivation yeah. it doesn't matter no, but it's, uh it's all, getting the motivation, it's all motivation at that yeah stage. at that point you just whatever it takes to light that fire yeah absolutely. you know is is what it takes um again we're back with these beautiful views here of We've got a couple. Let's see if we can get a few updates here as we see they're on. So where Chris made that turn, you can kind of see the, the cars parked there in that parking lot. Um, where he makes that hard turn, that takes you back up onto Gorge Trail 400, the main Gorge Trail. Um, that wasn't in, when I did the race last year or two years ago, that was not in uh the race uh they actually had to stay on the road a little bit more because the conditions were such that that trail had not opened up yet since the fire it is now open so they get this added benefit of some more single track in the course um not less yeah uh but they will run this and they're going to run this very aggressively because it is a very smooth section and extremely runnable and that looks like our second place r male see I mean, i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly what colors they were wearing that looks like our second place mail awesome thank you guys from the chat for for giving the shout outs here um you guys are all awesome you know one of the things that uh, we were talking about yesterday is what makes this so special and so awesome is that our our chat can be involved in the race as well so they're not just watching they are also participating so thank you guys absolutely uh for you know for your cheers for your shout outs um i want to know first and foremost hey where is everyone where where are we seeing people from where are you tuning in from because it'll give us the perspective of exactly how national and international this might be yeah we might have to switch languages or something if we're uh we've got a lot of uh, we've got a second messages. language here we got brit going on oh, so yeah. <laughs> that's English, English versus American. Yeah, English. The proper English. You, oh, I wouldn't you say are that. not tainted quite as much as we have been. That. But yeah, I mean, it is great to to have to know that there's so many people that are stoked on this race and that are that are that are dialing in uh, on the YouTube live stream. 
um, and, and adding their thoughts and lots and lots of people giving shout outs to, to athletes on the course, um, which is great to see as well. Awesome. Ethan from Boston. Thank you for tuning in. Where is everybody else from? Ah, I see Martin from Germany. From head, Germany. There we go. See, we are, we are we are international. Yeah. Head we are, thank Vukulman. you, Martin, for making us international. I love it. North Korea. Yeah. Awesome. Love all you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and for giving us a reason to be here. As much as you know, we, we love doing what we do. We love it even more because you guys are the community that, that supports us, that allows us to be here. You give us a reason for this broadcast. If you weren't watching, we would have no reason to be out here. So thank you all. You're all amazing. Absolutely. We love you all. We've got, we've got a, we've got somebody from Yorkshire. So his, it's, so he can understand tea, you. Yeah, for sure. Well, maybe it's tea time for him. Oh, he's just having, you just, know, he's coming up towards the end of his, at uh, the end of his Sunday. Tea uh, times, tea maybe time, some biscuits. Something like that. We've got a, we've got a few people from Germany. Loving, I love it. Loving having some Germans uh, following the race. Love it. Love it. You guys are all awesome. Thank you again so much. Give us some love. Uh, for those who are just joining us and don't know who Mountain Outpost is, we are striving to become the premier live stream uh, production house here in the ultra running community, the trail community at large in general. We want to see it all. Uh, we want to make all these races happen because they're special. They're all special in their own unique way. They all have certain aspects of beauty to them. As you can see there on the course, it is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, give us a follow. We've got a lot of races that we'll be doing over the next uh, year. So smash that subscribe button. I guess that that's what the kids say these days. Uh, follow us. We've got a lot of races coming up that you will get to enjoy as well. And if you're here in the chat room, throw a like on there. Help us out. It's free. It's easy. Cost you nothing. It just helps us. So hit that like button. I see a lot of chatters and I only see 15 thumbs up. So let's see some more of those. <laughs> All right. So before we get the women coming here into this turnoff, we are going to cut to a short commercial break. Thank you, Speedland, for making it. That is Mr. Alex King as he heads up. And we will come back with the action shortly. Today's broadcast is also brought to you by Speedland, the best trail shoes ever created. This is the brand new commission, the GS PDX, the sixth model in Speedland's short but illustrious history. You'll notice it's a throwback to the initial colorway of the first model, the SL PDX, though this is built on the GS platform. Plenty of cushioning to take you as long as you want to go on the trail. Everything you've come to expect, the double boa fit system, the HTPU midsole, the drop-in P-backs, uh, secondary midsole, also removable carbon plate, nothing better than the Speedland. Go pick up a pair of the GS PDX. You'll find a link and a discount code here in the description on YouTube. So I think we're back. We are back watching Mr. Alex King's calves shred up that hill. Um, Alex, for those who don't know, Alex will never say this because he's one of the most humble dudes out right. there. Um, but Alex had a bit of an injury uh, last year where he ruptured his Achilles. Ouch. And I'm not talking like a strain. He ruptured this thing, had to have it sewn back together. Oh, my goodness. Um, so to see him back and crushing, this is his first race back. I'm sure that he's going to be not only just extremely grateful to be out here, and stoked for the opportunity to race again and something that can be taken away from you like you know that yeah, yeah. literally playing basketball and you rupture your achilles and is that what he was doing yeah you might be out of the sport forever and to have it sewn back and he's here is absolutely amazing um and we're going to try to capture some of those women as they come through because this women's race is also on fire there is only a few minutes that separate the top three so we are so jazzed to see that. There's our Cowgill aid station over at Wakalella. By their noted cow shorts, of, uh, of course. Easy to spot. Yeah, so Waklela, I like, like what you did there. 15 miles. 
Yeah, Wiklela is going to be 15 miles. They have a short section, so they leave that road section, hop up onto that trail, and that trail dumps them into Wiklela Aid Station, and it's only a couple miles from there. So um, I would anticipate that we will likely see... We'll likely see them rolling to that aid station in not too long. Let me turn my audio off here so you don't hear the me repeat myself. On the uh, your prediction that we would see the first man through the first aid station in an hour, and you were the, he came through in fifty nine minutes and thirty seconds. I think we need another prediction for how, uh, for when they're going to hit Waclella. I will. I will. Miles. I will give you give us a, a prediction here. Let me let me consult my. My deep, deep, deep thoughts here. I'm going to say we're going to see them hit it in. I think they should be there within within nine minutes. Nine minutes from now. Nine minutes from now, by 10 o'clock. There you go. We'll see that. The action is nonstop. The action so, is nonstop. I'll say 9.58. I'm going to put an actual time on okay. it, 9.58. Okay. Okay, we're going to see whether you're having you're continuing to have a good day. Okay. Fantastic. So we're just kind of got eyes on the Wiklela aid station there, looking fantastic, uh, getting ready. If my prediction's right, in seven minutes seven we're going to see see the first. We're going to see Chris Myers make his way through there. So yesterday, when uh, when we had Yassine, we were talking to Yassine, and we were talking about aging athletes. Me me being definitely aging not so much an athlete anymore but definitely you, aging. you and me both my dude <laughs> and um i've just seen in the in the uh in the results hal kerner 48 years old you know what's you know what's sad is we're gonna say that name hal kerner and half if not more of our viewers at home are not gonna know who that is wow really former absolute shredder javelina 100 uh winner and had the record for a while and that was the same year he ran Hard Rock 100 yep. and came very close to crushing Inches. that course record. Yeah. I mean, he was yeah. literally, you know, one descent, strong descent away from taking that record uh, that many believed was was untouchable at that point. And so then we're, he, we're a similar age, Hal and I'm, I just turned 49. He's 48. <clears throat> he's... And he's still crushing. Still crushing it. Still crushing. And, and, I've, and, I've raced and with him there. a number of times. Right. He's and a out super there good doing team. it, which is great, you know, to see that uh, he's clearly happy to be spending time out on the trails and, but I guess, competing with himself, feeling competitive in his own in his own right, which is which is fantastic to see. Yeah, I absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be at the finish line for him if I can get there. Yeah, I, I, I love Hal. He's a fixture here in the Pacific Northwest. He is a supporter of the sport, a supporter of uh, of the community, and you know runs the aid station, Brown Bar Aid Station, over at Western States every year. Yep. Um, hilarious story about that. I was pacing uh, one of the top five women at the time at, uh, at Western States, and this was 2017 or 2018. I believe it was like 2018. She comes flying into the aid station. We're at mile, like at that point, what you're like at 88 or something like that. Like yeah. We're on mile 90. Yeah. And this was the first year that they had recreational marijuana usage in California. Ooh, okay. And she goes running up to an aid station, grabs like a cookie or a brownie or something like that. Okay. And Hal pretty much smacks it out of her <laughs> hand. It was like, no, 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 not from that table. That's, 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 you're going to be the top 10. You're going to have a drug test. So <laughs> oh you can't goodness. eat off of that table. <laughs> But they had them in the aid station. They had them in the aid station. Oh. So they had some great edibles and gummies. Or maybe it was gummies she grabbed and she was like going to throw some down. Yeah. He's like, no, not those ones. A handful ones. of gummies. Yeah. How did the end of your race go? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't I remember. Was, I went into an aid station and then it's a blank. I was I was, I was, was in, t I was top five and then all of a sudden I don't know what happened and then <laughs> I got disqualified after a pee test. Yeah. Oh, it was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. One of the best moments of my running career. I'll never forget just the hilarity that ensued. Um, but yeah, Hal's a great, great dude. If you're ever in the Ashland, Oregon, and you want to support local, go check out, uh, Rogue Valley runners, his, uh, his running store there. Um, they are fantastic. You might also see the great Brett Hornig around there. 
Ashland's got their own little little group of shredders for sure. One of those shredders being Dylan Humberger, who's in second place currently and crushing. I'm sure Dylan knows how very well. We got one of our O'Malley brothers there chasing on the chase cam. The long flocks flowing. And is that our top woman right there? That would be Sarah Beal out there. I think that is our F1 with Dylan. Dylan shredding behind her. Debo. Let's see if she can put Dylan through the ringer and make him work right now. If anyone wants to know what running cameras is like, this is it. It is nonstop intervals at race pace. Whilst holding one hand out in front of you. I mean, the cameras are not super heavy, but still. It's not the most efficient. Yeah, slightly awkward position. Oh, and check out this view. I love it. I mean, that's amazing. Props to the to the uh, to the drone guys. They're getting some amazing footage. Our drone pilots out there as we keep moving closer to the city. Uh, our our go. Debo's done. Service is going to get better and better. Dylan's holding on. No, no, he's, he's holding he's, on to he's her. He stopped. He stopped. Oh, it looks like he's right behind. I think no, that's him. There's right another behind athlete her. that came up behind them, and Dylan just stepped off the course. I think. Dylan's in puke mode. He hasn't been sleeping much. We're going to give him some. We're going to we're going to cut him some slack. Oh, no, there he is, chasing her. That's got to be him then. Okay. Nice. Yeah, Sarah Beal, a little shredder in her own right. You know, she's, uh, I, I saw her, uh, you know, warming up, running around here in, in the valley, and I was really excited to see her racing and see what she's capable of doing here on this course that, you know, so many, uh, so many runners have graced the presence of this course and have shredded on these these trails so mm. adding her name to that list of classic shredders just just doing it so we're so we're watching the section here uh between the first aid station at ainsworth and and the second at wakella and this this was the bit that you were describing as they've come off the road they're back on the trail but it just looks beautiful i mean this looks so runnable it's absolutely fantastic. This is, uh, again, I, I keep saying this is my favorite section of the course because they're <laughs> all so amazing. All this is my favorite section of the course at mile 18. Between um, these two aid stations. Yeah, between yeah, these two sure. aid yeah. stations. But, you know, it, no no shock to me that Sarah took that lead um, on the road section as a former JFK 50-mile winner. Mm -hmm. you know, she's got that road speed. Yeah. So, I mean... I could imagine she just put herself in a position of, yeah, you just wait till we hit that road. That's where I'm going to excel. That feels, um, that feels normal to me. It just feels right. And, you know, that that small gap that was there clearly no longer is. Yeah. Um, and she did what she, where she is most comfortable. That's where she decided to take the shred out um, and, and take it to the rest of the competition. So, yeah, she is just lashing it. Check out these amazing, giant, tall pines. You can still see a lot of those burnt trees damage, yeah. from the fire damage. I'm going to have to say I'm selfishly uh, appreciate the fact that they are a little bald and we can see the trail a little bit better. Uh, so That's a silver lining, I guess. But I think, I mean, it's it's very sad to see the amount of damage it was caused. Uh, yeah, I mean, just a ton, tons of damage out there. Yeah. Um, again, why why this race hadn't happened for a couple years until Daybreak Racing and Free Trail decided to pop together and you know make something happen here. Um, so you're getting called out in the YouTube uh, live. It's nine fifty eight. We're being told it's nine fifty eight. We we haven't seen our first. The haters. The, the haters. The, I, they're just they're making a point. They, they're making a point. Called out. <laughs> Called out. Uh, I I definitely I missed it. Um, let's see. Give me an give me an over under of like five minutes. No, that's that's too that gracious of an over you under. Were, um, you were thirty seconds out. Into I would the first say I would say uh, over under of two minutes because with this new section yeah, of them going onto that instead of taking the road, maybe my mind is off. I, I took know. the road when I did it, I so know. I know. I didn't I didn't get this trail. I know. I'm not. I'm not throwing shade. I'm just. I mean, I think that a little. Oh, well, people, yeah, oh, a little. It's okay. It's okay. I think we're we're sat here. We're sat here on hard chairs, being trying to be competitive in our own 
yeah, armchair runway. armchair expert for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm well, getting I'm getting you're some. Not, you're not an armchair expert. You've done this race. I mean, you know, you know this. You I know. would say by no means an expert at this race, but no. but uh, yeah, no. I mean, I have been out on this course a ton and absolutely love it. Um, and I get the, I get the pleasure of uh, having done enough to now be able to sit back here and call the race as it is, um, and you know offer my my two cents if it were. Um, also, I am I am getting a lot of love in the chat for the Unbreakable film and the hilarity of it is we were just talking about this the other day how. I came into trail running when that film was released. Okay. And the unbreakable story of the Western States 100 yeah. in 2010 between Hal Corner, Jeff Rose, Killian Journey. It was just a young pup at the J time. J Killian Journey was like, yeah, 12. Yeah, he, he was like the youngest athlete of the day. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, and Hal Corner was out there as well. So, um, yeah, I've, I've since been able to meet all, all four of those dudes okay. and they're incredibly amazing humans. Tony is a great dude. We've we've bumped into each other so many times in, out in Colorado and at Leadville. Um, you know, Hal is also a great friend now, and Jeff is one of the most kind, humble humans in the world. And Killian, Killian's Killian. He's Killian's he's Killian. Killian. He is our super superstar of the sport. Um, but yeah, that was fantastic, and I thought it was so amazing to get some of those gopro footages and you know i thought that was so incredible at the time and now we're it, live streaming right races. now if you watch that you're like eh, it looks a little uh i mean for the time it was absolutely uh groundbreaking i mean it brought the sport to a, to a new audience in a way that hadn't happened before that film was yeah, uh, exactly and i think this is the next level of it bringing these live streams is elevating the sport and it's allowing us to not only see these incredible places but also like be a part of the action because mm. things that you can't quite see, you know, Sarah Beale's road pass out there. Yep. You, know, you don't get to see that happen. You don't get to see those changes happen in real time yep. um, when you're just sitting and watching and waiting for a live, live tracker to update. Um, well, because, and you're limited, you know, unless you, unless you ask the athletes to carry heavy uh, sort of, you know, transponders, uh, which they obviously don't want to do, you're only getting updates. I mean, in this race, we've got, what um five f well five including the finish uh timing mats so it's so this is a you know this is much more exciting. gone are the days i wouldn't say gone but less frequent are the days we're relying on a a twitter update from someone driving back into service updating <laughs> yeah. their twitter account with some grainy photos <laughs> yeah. and then shooting back, shooting out, back out of the course <laughs> yeah that was like playing chess by by male you know yeah it was hilarious chest, chest i mean gotta gotta throw uh, uh some love out to the uh i run far.com back in the day for sure brian over there just making it happen uh and we having, I mean, arguably having, we wouldn't have that without him no for sure uh, having said that i think a lot of people got some sort of you know rsi re re repetitive strain injury from updating the twitter feed to follow what was going on at barclays I can, that is the only way that you it get, is the only, the way, only way, way these days we are not live streaming barclays i don't no, know if that's no, ever no, in the no. plans I, I i've got a feeling that if there was any suggestion it was going to be live streamed it would get moved to an even more remote location exactly it would change it would change locations in a heartbeat um speaking of all that what like where do you guys in the chat where do you guys want to see us uh like what races would you want to see I mean, there are some iconic ones out there. I've mentioned JFK, you know, Sarah Beale running that. That would be amazing. That was, that's Tara Fraga right there making her way up the course. It looks like Dylan just hopped on uh, with a runner cam. Yep, that's the North Face kit. That is absolutely Tara Fraga. That is Dylan with the Speedland. Nice, Tara making her way up. So Tara's Tara's a really great climber as well. Um, you know, one of her strengths is being able to just push up climbs. You know, I've run with her a couple times, and like every time you hit an incline, it like doesn't phase her. Yeah, like she just keeps her pace on the incline. There's a couple of guys that I run with where I live in Switzerland, and uh, I describe them as the diesel engines. Because they hit the they hit the uphill and the speed doesn't change. No, it's that like power just output down, is constant. Down gear and 
they keep going at the same pace. Whereas I'm, uh, I hit the uphill and suddenly I'm hands on knees walking. So then that uphill thing is, that again can make a huge difference. And you know, if you can gap somebody on an uphill, that's uh, that's a really important skill in a race where you've got plenty of climbing. Obviously. Yeah, I think this is going to suit her on that final climb up out of Cascade Locks. Yeah. And she she heads up there. Um, let's see what kind of work she can do on that gap, which seems to be a couple minutes now. Um, I don't think a, a lot of moves have been made, but I do definitely think that uh, they're they're being maintained at least on the mm. women's side of things. Like no one's other than Sarah Beal, you know, taking that couple minutes or that couple seconds into first place. There's not a lot of definitive moves yet. Oh, there is Mr. Chris Myers making his way. So he is just outside of the Waclella aid station. Ah, you know what? You've just remembered. The, the 10 minute gap. Yeah. We have the 10, 15 minute gap. Okay. Okay. I'm not way off. You're I'm not, not way, way off. off. Whew. Can... Exactly. We, we started, nine, 50, nine, we started 50, 15 minutes late. 9.50 was my first thought, but we were running so close. I was like, oh gosh, I got to give myself some pad. And I went to 9.58. We'll see if I should have stuck with that original 9.50, which is right now. But 9.58. With the 15 minute delay to the start. Yeah. That would be right on. Oh, man. I would have been. Oh. Well, we're hoping that we're going to be able to go over to Leclerc, Waclella and see um, the lead athletes coming in. I need to remember that 10-minute gap because it is... Um... I was going off of a, a 158 total time. I think he's going to beat it. He's definitely going to beat the 158 because he's got just a couple couple switchbacks to make down here as he moves his way down into the aid station. Yeah, he's just turning there, you can see. Now, one of the most exciting things about this course is that, and this is just super smooth runnable too, so he is going to be hauling. And he's going to drop off of this trail onto a road, um, a little paved path that will take him into the aid station and then out of it. Oh, there is. That looks a little... yeah. There's some slides out on that course. Looks like some of the trail has slid off a little bit. But so we'll see him roll into that aid station. I think we should have a live camera at the aid station. So we'll see what things look like. There he is hitting oh, the road. He's just about to turn. Is, yep. that, is that the aid station? Just yeah, that's going to be the aid left? station just off to your left. So he's hitting this aid station. Let's see what he does for stopping because it does not look like he's stopped at the last aid station. He might just be focusing on, I'm going to stop here and then maybe hit Cascade on the way out uh, for a little bit more because he's got a decent little thing. Let's see what Chris does here. Chris Myers, ladies and gentlemen, here your 2024 Gorge Waterfalls 50K leader in a commanding lead at this point. Dropping trash. Sounds like we've got some audio there at... Taking a couple of handhelds and he's out. Okay, yeah, so he's taking some handhelds for these final uh, climbs. A smile. The dude's just happy. He's stoked. He's young. Good job, buddy. Nice job. You. Nice. Looks like he dumped some trash, got his bottles, dumped some water to keep cool. So I think it's deceivingly cool looking out there. But for the guys that are working hard, the, guys, the, the men and women that are working hard, they're, they're probably generating a fair amount of heat yeah they've got a lot of uh heat production going on that body still needs to be cooled um you know 60 degrees out there and humid you still need to make sure you're cooling the body temp it looks like he you know as we heard from clark earlier he dumped some water on himself at the last aid station yeah. sounds like we got some audio from that aid station mr rich lockwood is that you out there that's me guys how's it going it's going fantastic here in the studio. We are just watching the Shred Fest happen live. Um, it's so amazing. Tell us what happened there with Chris coming in. How did he look? It looked like he was all smiles to us. Yeah, exactly. Like a machine. He dropped some trash, picked up new bottles and, and a little bit of nutrition from his crew, but he was in and out like well-oiled machine and then just trodden right up the hill he looks like he's in good spirits and he's moving super well yeah did he look any worse for the wear did he look kind of like he did 
you know, the first time we saw him where he was just doing, doing work, doing business. I think he's, he's still looking the same. Okay. Yeah. And this could be Dylan coming in now. Dylan like Humburger coming in. Yep. Green tank. Yep. He's ripping. Ooh, he another dropped. fast transition. Bottle, up a new bottle. Yeah. He didn't really even stop. Yeah, buddy. Nice job, nice job brother. You. Mr. Dylan Humberger out of Ashland, Oregon, young buck, 24 years old, making a name for himself in the trail and ultra running scene. If he can take out Chris Myers today, which is very possible with how close this is, he is in, he is in title contention for sure. Um, he might be able to put a little stamp on that. that. Two minute gap on my watch. Two minutes. So he's definitely in striking range and his face looked focused. He's hunting. Yeah. He looked like it was all business. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sure. we were talking about this earlier, Rich. I don't know how you prefer to race, but sometimes you race with like a little chip on your shoulder, like you got something to prove. Sometimes you come out and, you know, you're just enjoying the day so much that you're just stoked and it just happened naturally unfolds. Other days, you're like in the hunter's mode uh, and you are like, I can see him, I can catch him. I'm going to out hurt this guy. Uh, well, how do you like to race? What are you? What are your predictions for the day? I mean, I, I definitely like to come from a place of just, you know, enjoying the beauty of the course. And hopefully that just stokes me up enough to where I can run really well. But uh, I think it can also like adapt within the race to once you start getting it within striking range um, and you, you know, your mindset can change when you're like, oh, OK, this can happen. And that seems like where Dylan's at right now. He's like, I'm actually still in this right now um, and not that far out. So the official timing there is that he's one minute 44 seconds back that okay. Dylan's one, one minute 44 seconds behind Chris Meyer. And when he left, when they came out of uh, the first aid station, he was right with Matthew Bigman. Like they left the aid station within nine seconds of each other. And so clearly uh, he's opened a bit of a gap on, on Matthew by the looks of things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen anyone yet. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean... It looks like those two have decided to make it a race amongst themselves for first place. We have seen other people come in and take an eight minute lead, eight minute deficit here and turn it into a pod a top podium spot. So anything can happen here at Gorge Waterfalls, uh, just because the course is so varied and the terrain and the running is so different that, you know, what might not be your strength yet, your strength could be coming up and you could be able to to utilize your strengths there. It looks like we got visual on third place coming in. Uh, he's going to make his way down those switchbacks here shortly. So, uh, Rich, you should see him shortly coming in. Okay. And it's going to be Matthew Bigman still? Uh, it looks, it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like like uh, he's he's still in third place. And Alex King should be shortly behind behind him as well. What is what is your watch telling us, Rich? What's the spread there? Oh no, I was just gonna I was just resetting things so I can start a new one once Matthew comes back in. Uh, it's still like perfect weather out here right now. Nice and cool. There's a little breeze. I know he, they're definitely dumping water over themselves, but it's a nice temperature out here for racing. Yeah, it looks here at Cascade Locks uh, at Gorge Beer Co. Um, we are sitting out looking out the windows and it is starting to clear out the skies are. So the sun should be becoming a little bit more of a factor. Um, slight breeze going on, 60 degrees. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to race in anything else. Right. Like, I can't think of better conditions than that. I mean, you can take the breeze away. I hate, hate wind, but that's a personal thing. <laughs> maybe maybe we're, all, we're all optimists, and it's much harder out there than we imagined sat here watching the race going on. But do you, you guys both thinking, man, why am I doing this commentary lark? I should, be, I should have been racing today. Oh, yeah, 100%. I know Rich wants to be out here racing. I mean, especially after pacing yesterday with Christine, I was like, oh, man, maybe I did. Maybe I should have signed up for the 50K. <laughs> I mean, it seems like really honestly, the uh, the 50K and the the 30K seem to be like the Pacers edition. It is like the crew and Pacers race. Like, okay, yeah. I got a job to do on Saturday, but I'm going to come out and get a good training run on like 
Sunday or a Friday and just just run the course as well because why not? I think you might be yeah. seeing Matthew Matthew, Matthew Bigman coming yep. in now. Yeah. Let's check out this. He doesn't he doesn't look like he has quite the same pop uh, as one and two did. Agreed. Same though, just to drop the bottle, grab the bottle. Yeah. Let's see what he looks like. Uh, you know, Rich, you and I yeah, both buddy. know that Alex <laughs> is an incredible climber. And I am excited to see what he does leaving this aid station, knowing that he's got his climb out of, out of Cascade Locks and his descent, which is going to be his strength. Um, yep. And if we if we look back at what that split was, you know, Alex was right behind Matthew Bigman at Ainsworth, and we saw him on okay. the road. There wasn't much of a spread, so he should be coming in shortly as well. Awesome. Yeah, and Matthew's still moving, um, but looking like he's hurting a little bit. Yeah, yeah, now's the time for the hurt to start to set in, right? We're 18 miles in. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the day is, the day is starting to take its toll. I wouldn't say it's completely there yet, but the day is taking its toll. It looks like we've got eyes on, Someone oh, that is, a, that is not Alex. Some crew, some crew running through here. I heard some cowbells that got excited too, but looks like, okay, that's yet. just somebody making their way down to, to be ready for their run. They, run they fooled us. Yeah. yeah. We got <laughs> fooled. I mean, why? No, no one should be running yes. into an aid yeah. station at that yeah, speed. Run. That's didn't... just false advertising. Yeah, you're gonna panic us. We got someone coming off the trail. It is. It's not gonna be. Okay. Oh, here comes Alex, and he's got someone hot on his heels too. Are they both? Okay, I see someone in a white hat and a singlet coming down right now. It looked like a like a like a darker like navy blue like you said top, um, was on the road. Oh, there he is. Yep, yeah, I see him. Yeah, they're right together. So, yeah, guy in the singlet just passed. But okay. Alex as well. Yeah, so he passed Alex while Alex was getting crew, and it looks like Alex is going to exactly. return the favor. Oh, not quite, but Coming close. Right together. Who is this? Seven. Nice 785, job, 785, Michael you. Moore. Michael yeah, Moore? Michael Moore. Yeah, yeah, Alex. Nice job, brother. Get him. You. Oh, the ever affable, lovable Mr. Alex King taking his way out of the aid station. A he's, he's Trout Lake, Washington, just shredder around here. Yeah. I mean, we right. say he's from Trout, Trout Lake, but the dude is from everywhere, Washington, because on any given weekend, he's sitting on a mountain somewhere. Any big mountain, yeah. He looks calm, composed. And he looked happy. I, I like to see that. You know, He looked like he was enjoying it. Totally. Uh, they were about 204 behind Matthew on my watch. I'm sure you guys will get an official time from there. We got a an official time for Chris Myers, 153.05 out of Ainsworth. And Alex was, oh, we Clella. don't, or sorry, out of Wakala. We don't have a an update on Alex. I don't think he's hit the timer belt yet. Okay. It's a little off the trail. We just had it there, 20201. So nothing between Michael Moore and Alex King. Like Together, seconds. essentially. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. They're three seconds. Mm -hmm. Super exciting. Super exciting. Yeah, and I don't know if you saw this earlier, but it looks like Sarah Beal has taken the lead. And, uh, you know, when we saw... Our runner cams and our drone, she was out there making quick work of the road section, being a former JFK road. winner. That That's makes surprising. a lot of sense. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. So give us a little bit. We got Cowgill uh, rocking that aid station. They are local to you. Am I correct, Rich? Yep. Yep. All the cow print. Let's They're tell right. us a little bit about that crew. They are a super fun loving and fast running running club in Seattle. Um, they're a huge group and they basically have some organized group run almost every single day of the week and then big long runs on the weekends. It's 
super amazing. Um, they, they're they well organized and they love to have a good time. It's an amazing part of the community up here in the Northwest. Yeah, buddy. Nice work, dude. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to assume that was 684. What was, uh, did you catch the number on that one? I, I thought it was like 792 or something. 797 would be Michael Nanansko. He may have taken a shot because after Alex King, 6 through 10. 623 coming through right now. Okay, yeah, Jared, Jared Foreman. Nice job, buddy. Get him. Happy birthday, dude. Eww! Okay, so someone has a birthday. <laughs> Yeah, it's Jared Foreman's birthday today. He just said he's running by. It's my birthday, buddy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what a treat. What what a fantastic. Yeah, he he gets a free beer deal. at the finish. He, get, he gets free beer. Oh. He gets a free beer at the finish. <laughs> courtesy uh, of Dylan. Yeah, courtesy. <laughs> Dylan so that's actually that, yeah. one of the cool things, and we have to give a shout out to uh, Gorge, Gorge Beer Co. here in Cascade Locks because this is where our headquarters is at. Um, we've got some amazing food here we've got a great place they've given us to crash and to make things happen um letting us live off their their internet um and yeah we've got kegs of beer at the finish line for those who want to partake yeah courtesy of gorge beer Co. in fact there's a there's a beer lf gorge beer that's been crafted for this particular event, specifically right? for this race so if you want to beer. take some home oh, nice. you can get yourself some lf gorge uh beer courtesy of gorgeous beer co so i gotta say it's pretty strong it, <laughs> it's strong just they, like every athlete out here yeah they they decided that that one was gonna was gonna hit hard because nothing 92 and 629 in the aid station right now nice. josh fry yeah buddy nice work keep it up Josh Fry. Uh, okay, nice, fantastic. Yeah, we'll be excited to get their their final splits. Um, yeah, so Michelle Lutz and Sarah Beal. That's going to be your one and two with Tara Fraga right behind them. So let's keep an eye out for them. Sarah did make a decisive move on that road. Let's see if she was able to maintain it rolling through that uh, trail section on Trail Four Hundred. And then after this, Rich, uh, help me remind me of what this course looks like coming out of here and going into Cascade Locks. They do have this climb right behind you leaving, and then it it's dumps a onto climb. a little bit of a road uh, that takes you to the next trail section to get to Cascade Locks. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's a, it's a decent climb coming up through here. Uh, it goes on for a little while, and then, like you said, yeah, then they'll get on, like, a traverse that dumps you onto a – forest service road um and then they actually i think they'll get on like a bit of a paved bike path section um before hitting some rollers into the cascade locks aid station so big climb then kind of a lot of a lot of traversing rolling through over to cascade locks yeah it looks like it's about a five to six hundred foot climb in a mile leaving that aid station so it's significant it's not nothing um at this point in the race yeah yeah legs are going to start to feel it um and then you got to do that again when you leave cascade locks another uh five six hundred foot climb leaving that aid station and some good rolling uphill in between so mm -hmm. uh i really think the stronger runners are gonna gonna be favored later in this race in terms of not just raw speed but also strength to keep moving through those climbs and descents as well yeah it's so technical and rolling out here. If your quads are blasted towards the end of this race, it can it can eat up a lot of time if you're not moving quickly still. Uh, I remember when I did the 30K last year, uh, I was incredibly grateful that I did not have to roll the trail up into Cascade Locks and just follow the bike path all the way That's into right. town because right my back. quads were done. <laughs> yep. All right, this is... Eight seven three coming through. Matt Spear. Nice job, buddy. You. Oh man, we are just getting some incredible footage out here. I mean, you are you're crystal clear there, Rich. We can we get all nice. of your beautiful face. 
uh, <laughs> here on screen, which I'm sure everyone at home is so much happier to see than staring at our mugs again for the next couple hours. But um, yeah, so the path seems to be pretty heavily used today. There's still a lot of hikers, bikers coming in through there. It's a beautiful Sunday in the gorge, man. I think we're getting right into prime time in the gorge. Like all the flowers are starting to bloom. Trilliums are coming up. So yeah, everyone's out and about today. Yeah, you're no stranger being out there from Seattle, no stranger to the Pacific Northwest and these types of trails. Can you give like the viewers at home kind of a little, what would you consider the type of running out here in the Pacific Northwest? For, for example, you run in the, uh, you know, the mountains of the Rockies and it's, you know, a lot of switchbacks, fairly smooth, but lots of vert. You get down into California and you're, you're rolling in some Arizona and you've got technical desert. What is the Pacific Northwest like? I'd say it's probably, I feel like just like kind of like a more lush of like kind of what you're explaining about the Rockies. I mean, you get, you can get huge mountain climbs. We have a lot of, Oh, it looks like first uh, ladies coming through here. This could be Sarah Beal running through. I believe she was wearing a pretty paint, like a pink, an orange. Yeah, yep, pink orange. Yep. This is her then. And that is Lottie Brinks running with her. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Waiting to be her. If she jumps in a car. She was just telling her. us her quads are smashed. Yeah, and look at like, her. My legs roll are tired. That. Yeah. So smooth. Not so tired. Off you go. Yeah, Sarah. Nice job. So okay, so let's start that timer. Yep. We've got Alex King on the screen here. He's rolling through that trail section, making that climb, looking strong doing it. He's got, you can tell he's a good uphill runner. He throws his body into the yeah, climb. He's really so every it. arm swing is like a little throw up into the climb and he's like getting his body to move really efficiently. It looks as though Sarah Beale has made up a lot of places overall in the race. Yeah, she has made some moves. Ooh, look at that little dip under the log there. Yeah, <laughs> my jet. That's it. That's that's my that's. A, I think that's a perfect, uh, you know, thing to see out on the course because you you do get to see that it's not just these fun smooth sections. Yeah. It is actually a challenge. Um, you know, the downed logs, the things you got to hop over, step over, the washed out trail. Um, you know, it's nothing is. Nothing's overly aggressive, but nothing's easy. Yeah. But all ch always challenging. Oh, this, okay. So we're just waiting for an update on Sarah's Yeah, let's get Sarah's position when she's here. crossed the timing mat. But I think she's made up. She will have made up a lot of places overall. Like coming out of... Uh, Ainsworth, the first aid station, she was 17th overall. Right, and we'll get to see what she's done on the course once that updates. Yeah, she's definitely made up some positions for sure. She was I mean, in 17th. Yeah, and Rich, how did she look? What was her demeanor? Tell me, tell Amazing. me, tell me that. She looks so stoked. <laughs> I, I said, I said, you're looking great, awesome, and she said, thank you, and smiled. And just <laughs> she looks like really good. Oh, that's amazing. Good yeah, no, she's yeah. she is a sweetheart. Um, you know, love seeing her do what she does. I loved watching her go to JFK, get second place, and be totally unstoked with that and go back the next year and crush it. So yeah, yeah. uh yeah, I would imagine she's she's out having herself a day to day um and just really doing what she does best, which is shred. I think we're gonna get to see an Alex King take over here. We do, we do see an Alex King just past uh michael moore who is in front of him moving okay. up into fourth place Looks yeah like, alex uh, crushed second, him on a climb second female is coming through now oh fantastic so that is still our second place female michelle lutz okay northwest local someone just threw a shoe at her <laughs> tumbled out of her crew bag <laughs> do you need to change your shoes take that she was like, no, I don't need that. Looks like a little blood on her leg. Might have taken a spill on her knee. Yeah, not uncommon here. The gorge yeah, bites back. Sure. Gorge has teeth, man. Yeah, Michelle, looking good. Keep it up. That was about 315 back. 
Okay, awesome. It looks like she took a little bit more time in the aid station, grabbed some bo a water bottle, stuffed it in the the band, yeah, the waistband the headphones there. Headphones in for this climb. So we've got a number. It's Sarah Beal made up uh, six places. She's she's eleventh overall. Oh, she was seventeenth yeah. coming out of Ainsworth Place, uh, uh, coming out of Ainsworth um, aid station. So Absolutely she's, amazing. She's moving up through the field. That's great. Yeah, I mean, the I say this every single broadcast, but the women's races are incredibly stacked. Every single yeah. race that yeah. we've we've done, the, the women's race is the race to watch. Um and also is it just me or are they moving up on the overall board consistently? Consistently. Like we are con we we saw uh, you know what we said yesterday like Tara Fraga's time here 2 years ago would have been a top five top place five. overall. Yep, top five overall, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Elza McDonald was cha was in the top 10, chasing people down, dudes down all day. Um, you know, Lottie finished, like, in the top. It's just amazing to see. In fact, I don't know if you were there, Rich, but we got to see, I think, men's fifth place, maybe sixth place, came ripping around the corner to the finish line, like, full sprint, dead speed. And we were like, dude, this guy's working pretty pretty hard for fifth place like he is yeah. he's going for it and you look over his shoulder 30 seconds later there's lottie Lottie's just tearing just, yeah, down the road <laughs> so we know amazing. exactly what was happening there uh he was being chased down by none other than lottie brinks and i couldn't imagine a more like threatening smile ever being behind me there's no shame in in being destroyed by lottie brinks i mean you know Good, being, being beaten yeah. in a race Absolutely. Yeah, Elsa's beaten me at Terra Wear 100, 100 miler years back. She crushed me for like, I think she was fourth place or fifth place overall. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely shredded it. Okay, so we should be, if that was, uh, if that was Michelle Lutz, then I would imagine you're going to see eyes on Terra Fraga shortly. In a white top running down i can't remember what tara was wearing tara was wearing her white north face top black shorts okay. and she had a pack on so i don't think that's okay, tara no pack on this runner yeah no yeah she had a black ball cap with her hair her ponytail flying in the wind behind yeah. it as usual yep and whoever that is they got some they got some quads on them they're gonna shred the back half Yep. Also, we're gonna keep keep scanning the skies for Miss Terra Fraga, who will be our third place female, if if she's been able to hold off Sophie Anders and Carmen Bango. Yeah, the only downfall of having these aid stations, like nice aid stations right off the road, is that the runners have to run down to the road and then run back up onto the trail. So that, Yeah, that feels very European. You get a you get that a lot in, yeah. in European races where they're like, Okay, so the aid stations are in the villages, which are at the bottom of the valley. So you're like, oh right. goodness me, we gotta we gotta get all the way down there and then you, you know, grab whatever. All right, I think this is Tara coming through right now. That is Tara Fraga. There she is. I mean, she is yeah. moving. Yeah, she's she's cruising. That's a pretty There's Claire Devoe with a little handoff for her. So not stopped, but walking through, filling up bottles, grabbing yep. what she needs. North Face athlete Tara Fraga doing what she does well, which is shred the Pacific Northwest. Heck yeah, Tara! It up. Oh, I love to see it. Love to see it. Always with a smile on her face. She she loves competing. As much as she loves running and loves being out here, she loves competition. She is definitely, yeah, one of the strongest competitors I've ever met. Which is so unassuming when you actually get to know her. <laughs> okay. She's a quiet, quiet assassin. She is a quiet assassin. She she loves running. She loves shredding. She'll be the first person to talk about all these crazy adventures, okay. but she'll be the uh, last person to talk about team. her her performances. That is fourth place. Oh, so she's getting chased down by 
Was that 511? Sophie Anders. Uh, yeah. I believe. Like a... Looks like that Sophie Anders. I think it was 511. Yeah. Sophie Anders out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Same straight through the, you know, very efficient aid station in, grabbed a couple of bottles out. No messing around. Yeah, let's see if we can get some official splits here. Not yet. We don't have official splits yet, so it looks like they've got to go up the trail a little bit to hit that timing mat. And then we should get some. Oh, yeah, the timing mat's right as they, like, make the turn up onto this trail here, so it's a little bit past the aid. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's going to get their time out, which is key. Sarah Beale yeah, everyone's has a... moving right through. Yeah. It looks like the gal the gals are making some some quick work of the aid stations. Just in, walk through, get what you need while you're walking through a few strides, and then then you're back on it. There's some more trail runners there on that washed out section of the trail just before you hit the road coming in. Let's see if you got any more of those females. You should you should definitely be seeing some Corinne Malcolm coming through in the top ten. She's Heck she's yes. doing well. That's awesome to hear. And I believe that is, oh, that's our Speedland dude. Got that Let's iconic Speedland PDX, the GS PDX colors with that Speedland hat. So, you know, we need, we need more Steel. runners wearing kits like that so that we can spot them. Yeah. Like I need to, I'm going <laughs> to advocate for some, some neon colored kits from these, these companies. I'm having, sick. Having said that in the road, in, in road racing, sometimes they'll like the brands will dress every athlete in exactly like, the same yeah. kit. Yeah. They just, they just give them the, this is what you're wearing. And that makes it practically impossible to, to do. So any kind challenging. Of really difficult. Yeah. Out here, luckily there's like a little bit more, you know, you can put a little more personality in your kit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Self-expression. Although we haven't, what we haven't seen, which I was hoping for is like, you know, people in like sort of what I would call slightly unusual trail gear, like, you know, uh, where's Hawaiian the, shirts. Where's the button ups? And, yeah. The button downs and the sort of, um, one, well, we don't, we don't have Scott Trayer out here. True so that. the, the cotton white cotton button up is not a, not a thing. It looks like another female coming in here. The runner with a dude right behind her. She's got the, some bright colors yep. on, so you should be able to spot her. And I think we might actually have Cascade Locks coming up fairly shortly. It looks like we should have. Let's see. Yassin, Yassin had some good energy yesterday. Oh, Yassin is just, he's the dude over here. 827. Lo Lauren Peretz. Lauren Peretz? Yeah. From Colorado uh, Springs. Lauren crushing it. Just rolling right on through, being smooth, being efficient. There's been a bit of, I mean, apart from, you know, the, 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 um, you know, the front of the field, uh, certainly with the men, first, second, and third place is just held steady. But there's been quite a lot of movement within the within um, the w the within women's the is bouncing around a the little bit, is which is awesome. bouncing around a little bit. But like someone like Michael Nanas Nanasco from Salem, Oregon. Sorry for butchering your name. Was ninth, moved up to sixth, leaving um, a strong patient runner. Yeah, exactly. Uh, who else? Reese Desmond, Cambridge. Came, you know, was tenth at Ainsworth, left in eighth place. So we are seeing some men, it's a bit of movement. men shaking it up a little bit. The women have been, I mean, Sarah I mean, Tara, Tara's Sarah held strong in third, but outside of that, it's been yeah. bouncing around on either end of her. Yeah. It's been bookended by some fun excitement. So I mean, Sarah, Sarah Bill moved up overall from 17th to 11th. And, and Tara does have a gal right on her heels. Yeah. So that Which was a very, very the motivation that could, that could also light a fire. I mean, I know, I know Tara is competitive, so no one's going to pass her easily. Uh, not without a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Sharp elbows. Very <laughs> sharp. <laughs> kicking, <laughs> kicking up dirt behind her. 
more female coming through now. Awesome, awesome. Again, looking smooth, looking good, yeah. rolling. 519. I think this aid station is a good tell on how bodies are starting to respond yeah, to the 100%. day. 15 miles in is a good like, okay, either you, you know, either you made the right moves in the beginning or you're paying for it. That climb went well or oops. Yep. It doesn't tell you it doesn't tell you who's a strong finisher yet, but it does tell you who who's gone out a little aggressive and if their day is going to pan out. Well, exactly as you said at the at the top of the show, you know, you're not likely to win the race in that first climb and descent, but you could definitely lose it. But you yep. could definitely cause cause yourself a uh No a, one no a one's gonna win the race being first at uh at Waklella, but you can lose the race being first to Waklella. Yeah. Awesome. These runners are just rolling in smooth. The aid station is giving us some some excitement, some jazz going on. Yeah. Calgill's got the music bumping. People are dancing. It's all good vibes here. Absolutely love it. So we had Sarah Beal, Michelle Lutz, Tara Fraga. Those are going to be your top three women right now. Sophie Anders right behind Tara Fraga. Um, Lauren Peretz. Lauren Peretz behind her. Yep. Let's see if we got here that. Here comes two women basically together. Three women basically all together through the aid. Nice little chase pack. Yep, 851. On the screen here, we get to see Sarah Bill making her way down that double track fire road job, um, before she makes the turn off into Cascade Locks, which we saw Chris earlier. He was in that section between uh, the road turn off and Cascade Locks aid station. So I would expect that we're going to see him at Cascade Locks aid station. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say within the next couple minutes, but we're def he's definitely within probably, a I mean, he's definitely within a mile. Yeah. So let's see where he's this at. This is a somewhat different experience commentating on this race from yesterday. Yesterday was, we had more chance to just shoot the breeze and talk about this. This feels like we're, we're all sort of on the whole time. Fast and furious, yeah. Exactly, and that's that's one hundred percent what this race is. And you know, it's uh, even when I was filling out the call sheets for everyone last night and yeah. putting drone operators and people <laughs> yeah. in their place, I was like, "Oh man, you're gonna have to hurry yeah. between these eight stations." <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to get your how how long will you be where you are? Uh, how long will you stay at uh, Waklela? Or how Me? long will we? Yeah, well, us we will stay there. Oh yeah. Um, we've got, we're going to be at Waklela until, no, we'll be out of there relatively we'll soon. We'll be there. We'll be leaving soon. Okay. Yeah. We'll catch Corinne coming through and then we, we'll do it. I, don't, I haven't seen her yet. We want to see Corinne and then you guys are going to head out to, uh, Cascade Locks and swap out with, or no, sorry. You guys are going to head out to the finish line, which that will be exciting. Yeah, you guys hang out there. You hang tight at Waklella. Let's catch the the ever lovable Corinne Malcolm. Get her through here. Give her some shouts and some yeah, cheering. Yeah, exactly. Every time we mention her name, there's a lot of love in the uh, in the YouTube chat. Who doesn't love oh. that gal? So I'm really enjoying the women's race uh, because it's it feels so competitive. Yesterday as well was a was a really competitive race, and and it's great to see. Um, it's great that you know the women are up at the top of the race and having their own race within a race. You know, and it's yeah. it's and being so competitive. We've yeah, got the, it's um, it's fun to see them shake it up. We we knew the women's race was going to be hot. We knew that we had some speedsters on the course. As long as the as well as these incredible male athletes that are shredding today, yeah. um, names that you are might not be familiar with yet, but I can tell you, you are going to know these these young shredders very very soon. And Chris Myers and Dylan Humberger 
uh, racing first and second, both, you know, 27, 24 respectively. There's Chris on Kids. the screen right now. Kids. And that, that kickback and his stride, him running, I mean, that tells you that he's putting some effort into this and some putting down some flight time. He's not just, you know, cruising it in. He is pushing. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually gotten passed by him a couple times on Gold Hill in uh, Boulder, Colorado, which is a famous route. You leave out of Boulder, you make a 4,000 foot climb, and then you turn oh. around and descend loop. So, no big deal. Uh, he runs that regularly, and there's been a couple times I've been out there and just, I thought I was having a good day. Yeah. And he came ripping past, past me. Past you like you're standing still. You're and like, oh, okay. also just like stoked as can be and happy. So, yeah. we know the dude can shred. Um, he's proving it today. He's earned a golden ticket. You don't do that on accident. He's making his way through that trail section on his way to Cascade Locks, it, moving so well. He's got such a good extension. The the physiologist in me is looking at his mechanics, and I'm like, man, the dude We're is doing gate fit. analysis on the fly. I'm loving this. Yeah, that's yeah. I paid a lot of money to know this stuff, and I uh, probably you're more than you're I should have. <laughs> I'm gonna damn well use it. I'm gonna. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it while I'm commentating here. I'm give you on-the-fly gate, gate, gate analysis and mechanics. Just while we're watching, uh, we're, we're watching out. Oh, oh, here we go. We've here we got, go. We've got Yassine Daboon on the live stream. Sir, how are you doing? Do we got audio? Audio, can you hear me? We've got we you. can hear you. I'm just sitting here with the sun on my face. It feels so good. Our aid station is ready to serve up these athletes that are screaming towards us here on the 400 trail out here in the gorge. Another beautiful day in Oregon. How y'all doing? We are doing fantastic, Mr. Yassin. I see the, uh, the tuxedo is back out. We've got the suit rolling. You don't guys are ready you. to serve. I haven't showered for a couple days. You know, <laughs> uh, it's all don't believe everything you see on the internet. Uh, you just you make up for it in looks, my man. You make up for it in thank looks. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. We the, the internet, the internet, the internet wants to know: Did you manage to get the fondue working last night, or have you just given up on that? Unfortunately, the sad, sad news of the weekend for me is that I killed the fondue fountain. <laughs> Uh, the motor started smoking and making funny noises, so I uh, unfortunately retired that into the dumpster. But I DNF. will be having a new, new DNF, a new improved fondue fountain for 2025. So if anyone's looking, watching the live stream, listening to the commentary, and they're thinking, "Oh, is this race for me next year?" Yasin Dubin promises a working chocolate fondue. If you needed any more, any more encouragement to sign up for this race next year. And yes, we did have some takers uh, yesterday for the chocolate fondue and congratulations to all 100K runners yesterday and 30K runners on Friday. Absolutely inspiring to see the performances, people digging deep. And we've got some real shredders out here. I know Debo loves that, that word shred. So I had to throw that in there today. Well, you seen, uh, it looks like Chris actually just made that hard right turn that parallels the highway there. So he should be to you within literal a minute, minute and a half. Excellent. All right, folks, looks like we have the leaders coming very soon here. We have our camera runner ready to roll. And we have lots of goodies. We have spring energy. We have our champagne flutes with ginger ale, Coke, Sprite, oranges, bananas, normal ultra fair. Usually the leaders don't really stop for much. They're pretty focused and they just kind of rip on through. Uh, the course here, much like yesterday, they're going to have a little bit of a punchy climb out of here and it's going to roll up on the Pacific Crest Trail to the turnaround. Here we go. We got action. I had guessed here. 10 hours and 35 minutes coming into this go. aid First station. Runner. He is two hours and 35 minutes. He's 233. Yeah. Hey. Right. Man, it's looking very smooth. A, very smooth. my splits are great. Okay, quick B, on point. holy crap! To the right here, right. We've yeah, got the whole free trail smile. crew and family there. Honestly, that you was seen just... grab Dylan. Let's uh, let's hear from him what it was like running with Chris. Yeah. So how was it? Uh, you know, oh, tell us about how it was. He's breathing. Running with him. That guy. Do you, is do you need a second fine. to catch your breath, Dylan? He's so strong. 
I just ran 1.2 with him from the bike path into the aid station. I don't know. We got to do the analysis on my Strava, but rest assured the dude's flying. We get some heart rate data from Dylan. Sweat beating off of Dylan's head. He's breathing heavy. You know, this is his interval workout for the weekend. I told him, you know, this is the secret training of your life these days. You're now a new dad. You are uh, you're running this business literally and figuratively. And uh, it's a great way to get in shape out here in the gorge. Interval training, ch chasing world class runners around with a gimbal. So oh, the question man. is, how far do we have the next runners back? So we send, send Dylan out there to go catch yeah, him. Yeah, send Dylan back up the trail. <laughs> hey, Dylan, you got to get back out there, man. Quick rest, grab a PB&J and get back on the trail. So I just wanted to say that I know a couple of these guys that may have um, flown under the radar under this race. One of them is a local Portland guy, Matthew Bigman. And another one is Michael Moore. And I see both of those are near the top right now. You Watch got third and fourth right there, man. Yes. Yep. Um, we had a fun March Mudness trail running tournament in Portland that I put together where it was uh, 64 runners in a bracket where they go head to head on a route in Forest Park. It's a fundraiser for the Forest Park Conservancy. And uh, these guys were getting after it in the March Mudness trail running tournament. So, well, that training so has paid dividends for him, man, because you've got <laughs> third and fourth, respectively. Um, I believe we did see Alex King in fifth pass Michael Moore in fourth. So, that might be uh, a, a little change up that'll come through you here soon. But Dylan Humberger in second place from Ashland, Oregon, uh, should be making his way through on the course here shortly. Um, awesome. I believe that the split between, uh, Dylan and Chris has now, now grown. Yes. It's, it's it was about a one, one and a half yeah. minute. And now yeah. it's looking longer than that. Just a, a quick bit of and news. I Quick bit of news back from Waclella. Uh Kareen Malcolm is is through. Uh, she's picked up three places overall. So, I, I hope Thank she's having a good update. day. Yeah, Corinne, good Corinne Malcolm should be coming through. Excellent. Uh, she'll make Excellent. her she'll make her way up into that top ten, no problem. Yeah. I would love to see Alex King do well. I was at a race last year helping out and. Just after that race, he was gearing up for one of the UTMB races. He had a Achilles tendon injury, nasty, nasty injury, which is, I think, all runners' kind of worst nightmare. But he's worked hard to get back out here. He's a local gorge, local legend, and would love to see him have a great race to kind of get back into the scene here. I think and, he owns 90% yeah, so of the FKTs <laughs> in... If you take a look at any mountain around here, absolutely. he's he's probably on the top Got two or three on. lists. You're absolutely right there. Uh, yeah, no, we talked about that earlier. So great to see him come back after uh, an Achilles tendon rupture, which is no small like injury. That is a no, huge injury exactly. and a big recovery. So for him to come back and to be able to shred in the top five of a race like this lets you know that he's he's done his work and he is he is here to to do business. And again, it looks like he, we, I believe we did see him make a pass from fifth to fourth place. And if I know, uh, one thing about Alex, it's the dude knows how to climb and descend. And so yes, once he leaves correct. cascade locks, he's going to love it. Okay. We got Dylan coming in here. Not Dylan Bowman, Dylan, Dylan Humberger. <laughs> second place Humberger. <laughs> All right. Dylan strong. Bowman still taking a rest yeah, over Dylan, at the yeah, aid Dylan station. Dylan Bowman's having a lay down. Awesome. Water, water up here, water. Guys. Lee, hey. Absolutely fantastic. Making short work of that aid station, filling up a bottle, and then getting himself out of there. That's been the name of the game. I mean, Chris is Chris is just shredding through the aid stations, like literally not giving it any time whatsoever. I think the his longest aid station split was about three to five seconds mm. at uh, at Waclella. He just dropped a bottle and picked up a bottle and and kept running through. So he's been making short work all day. Um, you see, and this reminds me of a couple years ago when we were 
we were chilling at your aid station waiting for the 50k lead men to come through and we had uh ryan miller and tyler green rip through the aid yes. station yes within seconds of each other and you know tyler or ryan miller making that pass in the final two miles of the it. race on the trail but it was one of those hit the aid station and just i think both of them just ejected that. everything they had in terms of bottles got dropped i mean they wanted their arms free to throw down that's for dang sure I, I was literally standing right here when ryan came tyler came through just blitzed right through ryan came through and was just like on a mission he was just like i i've never seen anybody like that so dialed he was in full tilt mode and this is i mean as you can see this is like a little bit uneven terrain there's lots of rocks around it's very narrow in spots he to to pass somebody like tyler in the last you know mile like that wow impressive and we've had matt daniels do similar make similar moves last year uh so fun to witness up close and personal yeah, I was a little mad at Matt Daniels last year because he made me run like I swear on everything <laughs> we were running a sub six minute pace in the final mile on the bike path. And I was like, dude, nobody's around you. Slow down. I got to keep up <laughs> with you. This is unnecessary. This, this is, is unnecessary. This is unnecessary pain. But that dude only it knows like fast. That styles that kind of like turn the screws on people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he has no chill when it comes to that. Looks like we've got some <laughs> beautiful views of someone running up on the trails right yeah, now amazing. um absolutely amazing so just on the time split there dylan humberger he was a minute and a half behind uh, our leader chris myers coming out of waclella now leaving you yasin he's now four and a half minutes back so that that gap's opened up a little bit but uh hopefully he can hold yeah, and strong according to according to debo dylan humberger did not feel really well according to him i just got that update okay yeah he looked like he was a little more worse for the wear so i don't think it's the fact that chris is turning it up because he's staying pretty consistent with what i thought the winner was going to run today and he hasn't deviated from that but it looks like dylan is i mean i don't want to say fading that's a really disrespectful term on this section of the course but it seems yeah. like he's the the miles are starting to show up in his legs a little bit more um yeah it's usually around that time in the race that i i always think about you know people might come back to me whereas like the human body starts running out of sugar a bit and that fatigue starts setting in a bit around the 20-ish mile mark and uh these guys are throwing down and it's it's inspiring to see them get, you know take some risks and go for it push push all their chips in so to speak yeah, it's it's so amazing to see, and I think that that's one of my favorite parts of of a fifty k is you you make bit you take bigger risks. You know, the bigger the speed, the bigger the risk, yep. the bigger the crash. But uh, you know, you yeah. are going to take some risks in a fifty k of uh, you know throwing it out there a little bit more because nothing's more daunting than looking at a hundred miles and knowing that if you take a big risk and you've got. Yeah. 50 miles to go and oh. you feel like trash that's terrible but when you got yeah. five to go and you feel a little blown up that's doable that's a tuesday afternoon run so we should have we've got eyes on i'm not sure if this is michelle lutz in first place or if we are looking uh if she's past sarah beal or if our runner cam is just running with uh, Michelle and Sarah has already passed, but I believe you should get uh, our women coming through. They're they're taking that single track section down. I think coming off that climb. Yeah, they're coming off that climb out of the aid station. So beautiful, beautiful course. Everything's looking amazing. We've got the ever affable. Mr. Yassine DeBoon sitting at the Cascade Locks <laughs> aid station. Huge shout out to Y East Wolfpack for you. putting it out there and for making that aid station so great. Year after year after year, it is nothing but the finest champagne flutes <laughs> and chocolate fondue. Appreciate the shout out. We, we love it. We absolutely love it. We do a lot of these races ourselves and it's a great way to spend our weekend in a beautiful setting and connect with everybody i mean we love this community we love the trail culture so 
pleasure to be here. Mr. Mr. DeBoon, you are getting a lot of love in the chat right now. You and the oh, rest really? of the YS crew, people love you. We all love you. Are you are in front of my uh, suit or anything like that. <laughs> absolutely. Dude, fly AF, dude. Fly AF. We we absolutely love it. I wear this suit once a year right here in this parking lot. You look you look like you wear it every single day just going to work, man. It is you're make you're pulling it off. You're making it look 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 comfy. Well, I appreciate I appreciate the kind words making me boosting my ego up a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, someone needs to brag for you. If those of you who don't know you seen, you are a legend of the sport, my man. Just oh, an absolute yeah. legend. Both Thank you. both Thank in you human so character and in talent. <laughs> I always wonder, you know, my daughter, she sees me leaving sometimes on the weekends and she's just like, what's the theme this weekend? And, you know, I'm <laughs> leaving, and, and she just kind of rolls her eyes as a teenager and she thinks it's pretty funny. I just imagine what it's like to grow up with a dad that disappears into the forest, uh, dressing up and, you know, as a cowboy or whatever the theme is that weekend. I love it, though. It's a great, you know, and I, I've raced, I've had the good fortune of uh, racing all over the world. And I, you know, got to race in Europe a bunch where I would come into these aid stations, into these villages. And it just, people would just get me so amped up mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, ale, 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 you know, and it was just like, I wanted to bring some of that back to where, to our communities. Right. And kind of really stoke that fire. Yeah, um, well, you're doing a fantastic job, my dude. That that aid station is always fire. <laughs> always fun. Is, is that Mr. Is that Dylan walking back out there? He's got a little little hitching that giddy up. Ask him how those yeah. hamstrings are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you know. I think we all are a little bit. Uh, our throats are a little bit sore from yelling. Um, our um, maybe a little bit caloric, you know, caloric deficit going on here. So I did notice that Dylan grabbed a couple quesadillas after, <laughs> after running, he's recovered. He's waiting. <laughs> he's ready to go again. Oh, we can let, cool. pan over, pan over to that aid station. What, what fantastic treats yep. do we have there at Cascade locks? Yep. Hey guys, say hi to the camera. Yeah. We've got the champagne flutes almost blew over just now in the wind. Be careful. It, it is quite windy here in the gorge. Um, those people might not know, but Hood River, just about 15, 20 miles down the road, is is literally the mecca for kite surfing, windsurfing. Um, and we're feeling some of these. Uh, it's like a wind tunnel coming down here in between the Washington Mountains over here and the Oregon side of the gorge. It's just, yeah, we had to really anchor down our tents with water jugs. I literally, as you panned over, some of those champagne flutes like tipped over on the side and almost dumped. I was like, no, not on camera. But, uh, <laughs> we can't lose it on camera. I think you might yeah. have third right, place you, coming, you in coming in here. We got third place coming in here. Amazing. This is Matthew Bigman. Yeah. Here you go, Matt. Good job, buddy. Bigman well still crushing. Holding strong in third. Bigman is doing a quick handoff. Bang. Spring energy, awesome sauce, and a fresh bottle, and he's moving right through. Yeah, what a strong transition. He's Very, he's got he's got one, one thing one. on the mind, and it's go. Did not waste one second. That was amazing. Do we have a time split on uh, from Dylan to Matt? Because with how how Matt Bigman was running and kind of that conviction in his face, I'm I'm getting some. I don't know. I'm kind of getting some uh, Matt Daniels vibes. Yeah. If you give me one second, I can get the time split. Oh, we have it now. Uh, two, oh, two, two forty-seven it? ten. So ten minutes. Okay. He's ten minutes almost. Well, just under ten minutes behind Dylan Humberger. Who? Okay. Was so he's got ten minutes to make minutes, up. Yeah. Who was four minutes behind our race leader, Chris? And if Myers. if Dylan was feeling a little rough for the wear, that ten minutes can get eaten up pretty quick on these climbs. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be exciting. So we anticipate Alex and Mike, Alex King and Mike Moore should be coming in relatively quickly. Um, and they were, they were neck and neck at the last aid station. Um, I don't know if a lot of separation may have occurred between now and then. All right. Oh, look at those beautiful, beautiful, beautiful views. 
Oh, here we go. I believe that's Alex King. Is no, no, that is not. Is that Mike? Mike Moore? Mike Moore that in is, and out. Uh, that is a good friend of mine, Mike Nanazzo, and he just moved into fourth. Here we go. Oh, that's Mike Nanazzo. Yes. Oh, wow. Exactly. Okay, so he's just jumped up. 623, moving really well. Okay, up to the right, 623, moving really well. Jared Foreman. Okay, so there's been quite a lot of change in that top 10. If Mike Moore and Alex King are not through yet. I've uh, gotten on some on some good adventures with Mike. I know what a what a amazing mountain athlete he is. He is uh, typically really strong on the longer races. Uh, he's passed me several times uh, at the end of races, and I, at one point I remember uh, doing a race in Europe, and I I heard somebody yelling my name, and I didn't even have to turn around. I was like, "That's you, Mike!" And uh, sure enough, he was closing hard. But he's looking really strong. Yeah, he he just Moving he did this aid station. He made a number of moves out there based on where he was at uh last aid station to now. He knows so he, this gorge very well. He runs out here quite a bit. He lives down in the Salem, Oregon area, but he uh comes up here quite a bit, climbing up on Mount Hood, all over through the gorge. We've got it looks like this is Alex coming in here. Yep. Nice. Here's Alex King. So it looks right. it looks like our former Okay. Oh nice. Because Alex. Alex being Alex. Alex being Alex. Alex. Welcome back, buddy. She's Glad got uh Alex Borsick and Matt Hosnor as a crew yep. there, also local shredders. Yep. And there he goes. Off for the out and back. Nice, which get get that boy ready for a big climb and a big descent. He's probably just been chomping at the bit to hit this. If he's got legs, this is <laughs> yeah. where you're going to see him. You're exactly right. He just took off. He did. He looked, you know, he had that look in his eye where he was thinking, oh, man, might be feeling, you know, coming back from that injury, back into race mode, knocking some of that rust off. Yeah, he's he's in a, just as you said, he is in a, uh, you know, a, a loosening up mode, a, a shake it off mode, if you will, busting that rust and kind of letting his body get back to what it's like to race. Cause you can train all you want, but race day is a whole different thing. Yeah. And you need that experience to handle race day. Cause it is, it's just a, it's just a little bit different than training. You know, you can train and train and train, but until you race and put it all together, that's, that's the big show when all of the days of training come together, not just, you know, executing each specific day but you're you're putting all the tools together and making it happen so you know it might just be a little rusty from that but he's still crushing cruising doing exactly what we expect him to do absolutely it's starting to fill up here quite a bit in the aid station area we've got this is a brand new parking lot brand new concrete slab which is nice you can see Folks sitting on the side here, welcoming these runners in. Got the parking lot closed off for our aid station. We got kids, dogs running around. It's just a, it's just a vibe down here. I got to get some higher energy music going here, though. Get these people pumped up. Any requests? <laughs> none, <laughs> none, none from us over here. We, it's more about the runners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So just to, just to add a bit of detail there, Michael, your friend there, Mike Nanasco. Yes, yes. Uh, he came, oops, oh, goodness me. I'm having okay, a Okay, here we go, moment. number 785. It's like he's... Uh, Michael awesome Moore. Awesome job, Michael. Yeah, this is Michael Moore. Good work, buddy. So Mike Nanasco yeah. came out of Ainsworth in ninth, Waclella in sixth, and left you in fourth place. Yes, sir. That's correct. So he's, he's working his way up. He's moving his way up. He's being a, being a smart runner, talented runner, smart guy. It looks like he's really just picking off, picking off all the youngins in front of him. So yeah, Lud there's, a thing, there's a thing. It's the old man strength. That's what I'm always talking about, you know? 
you yeah. know, old you man seeing strength. The, the older the older I get, the more I recognize it's not necessarily more strength. It's just more intelligence and wisdom. <laughs> that's what I truly feel. That's the old man strength yeah. is the wisdom you gain yeah. in doing this time yeah. and time again. Yeah. Agreed. I'm still waiting for that to kick in, and I'm nearly 50. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're getting practice. we're getting some requests. What we, we can't we can't get up. if they get music on the live stream for uh, some music requests. No, no music requests. Rick, Rick, oh. request request for, denied. Yeah, request denied on that one. Uh, we absolutely are gonna have to take take Tay Tay and say sorry. We are not gonna play that. I'm just kidding. She's a queen and one of the best. Um, but yeah, let's see. Let's see how. Uh, Here we go. We've got another runner coming in. So the women's race is shaking out. Um, they should be now. Let's take a quick gander. All right, we got five nine two. Two runners coming in together. Five nine two and eight seven three. Hey, Reese Desmond and eight seven three is Matt Spear. Yeah, looking good, smiling, right on. Which means good Sarah job, Beal, our women's leader, <laughs> should be shortly. Got a little ways to go, but you're doing great. <laughs> he asked if I'm almost done. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta. From here to the start, the finish line is pretty quick, but you just got to make it out and back first. I like that he was keeping it light, though, and smile on his face and making jokes. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, keeps you rolling through at this point, right? If you take it too yeah. serious, the miles might kill you. Yeah. So after uh, the last aid station, Mr. Matt Spear that just went through uh, right behind him was Sarah Beal, our women's leader, and okay. uh, they were less than a minute apart. So I would anticipate that if that holds true, you will probably see Sarah Beal in not too long. There she is actually yeah. on our screen, just popped up. I believe she's paralleling the highway. Yep, she is. She's All got right. that fence to her left. So she's paralleling That's the highway right next to you. Josh Fry. Mr. Josh Fry coming into Cascade Locks Aid Station. This is mile 20.6, and it is brought to you by the wonderful folks over at Y East Wolf Pack. They are giving nothing but the finest treatment here at the Gorge <laughs> Waterfalls 50K today. Sarah Beal absolutely shredding the course apart, our women's leader. Mr. DeBoon, you might want to roll out the red carpet because you are going to have our women's leader in very shortly. Excellent. Let's roll out the red carpet for her. We're always excited to see the first female come through. I want to get the crowd pumped up. I was going to say, get that get crowd going. Up. There she get is. Let's go. Yeah, there we go. That's how you Stand do it. You've seen. Welcome her in. Yes. Yes. This is what it's all about right here. Yeah. Bang. Water. Oh, I love those flip caps on those uh, oh, hydro too. packs. Exactly. I use the same ones. All right. To the right. Up to the right. Yep. I'll be honest. It's it. not the best handheld in terms of how it sits on your hand, but that flip top is like freaking clutch. Yeah. I use the ones that I put in my front pocket of the pack, and it's just so convenient to flip them open, pour, close, snap, done. So you seen you got that up close and personal feel. Tell me, how did she yeah. look? She, I mean, she looked like she was all smiles, but you give it to me was, as a man on the ground. Yeah, she just looked like she was running with joy, bouncing through the aid station. You know, I mean, anytime you got the crowd giving you lots of love, you're leading the charge, first place, it's got to feel good. I mean, that's what that's what you're trained for. That's what you, you know, you're shooting for us as a foot race, and she's she's doing it. She's living the dream right now. She's got a little ways to go, but do we have an update on the gap from the last aid station of second women behind her? Uh, at the last aid station, uh, Michelle Lutz was second place behind her, and like if I remember minutes. correctly, it was uh, yeah, about a three-minute three gap. Minutes. Okay. So it was a it was a pretty 
pretty short, uh, pretty small gap. It wasn't massive. Uh, but you know, yeah. this is the time of the race where moves can be made. Um, either you're fading or you're getting stronger. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if I mean, Michelle looks strong. So let's see if she kept, she held on to that. Right. Okay. We've got another runner coming in here. Okay. This is, uh, Nick Hughes, another one another of our fine dudes who, making their way he through was, uh, in the March Mudness. He had a great March Mudness tournament. <laughs> awesome job, Nick. Right. That's some canterberries over there. Yeah. All right. Throwing out some of that delicious, delicious spring energy. Yeah. So good. Okay, number 710 is coming in. Looks like he's going to bypass Nick Hughes here. All right, good job, 710. Mr. Kyle Kamura. All right, Nick. Good job, buddy. So if the positions right. have held, then the next athlete coming through is Michelle Lutz. Yeah, yeah. So if, if everything holds true, Michelle should be coming through next barring any passes. So yeah, let's keep an eye on women's second place. And behind her was Tara Fraga in third place, North face athlete out of Issaquah, Washington. Um, just really making a mark in the sport lately in terms of throwing down some serious competition in world-class events, CCC, yep. um, you know, top tens there. She's just an incredible athlete. So it'll be really fun to see how she does today. And it is all just a training day for her to get herself to another UTMB race. Um, I don't know, I believe UTMB Argentina. So Argentina, yeah. nice. this will be a fun one for just, just prepping for that. Arguably, I'd say she's more comfortable in the mountains, and this this race is a little more runny okay. than what she's super strong at. However, her second place time here a couple years ago in the hundred k is uh, it was a phenomenal day. Yeah. So she should be there in third place. Let's see how yeah. Michelle Lutz has fared. She should be coming through soon. Yeah, and if you are a good climber, because this course does not have a lot of long climbs, but if you are a good climber, these punchy climbs that you otherwise might, a lot of runners might drop into a power hike, if you can climb those, that's where people make moves and, and toggle positions. So guys like Mike Nanazzo, who just moved up several spots, I think that's what, probably what he was doing, that he knows this course so well, that he was probably just hammering up these short, you know, 200, 300, 400 foot climbs where others might be maybe dropping into a power hike and that's where you change positions. Yeah, uh -oh. exactly. We got, we got an update here. Matthew Bigman coming back into the aid station, dropping out 534 Matt, Matt Bigman. Oh, big Not update happy. there. Not looking happy. He, uh, looks like he's got a Chopat strap on his lower leg knee under his knee and limping a little bit and he gave the done done for the day done he gave All right. the done so that yeah. was huge update for those of you that are listening at home that was mr matthew bigman our third place male just came back into the aid station and is yep. calling it a day after having such a fantastic first part of the race and really running intelligently and smoothly yep putting himself in a position to really fight for, uh, you know, maybe even another spot on that, that podium. Um, unfortunately, again, the gorge has teeth, it bites back and yeah. that's just the way it goes. You're absolutely right. I'm, I'm kind of bummed. I was really pulling for him as a local Portland guy, kind of flying under, under the radar a bit. He, I was, I, he was also my pick to win in the March Mudness trail running tournament that we had, but he had some travel, uh, come up so he couldn't uh, participate in the second round so he got eliminated um, but yeah it's always a bummer it's such a you know I've been there myself I know what a frustrating feeling that can be to deal with injuries you know get super fit try to come back and then have it rear its head again um, so he's young man he's he's driven he'll get back out there but uh, good effort out there today for Bigman also I mean also early season right 
Yeah, I mean, early he might season. be thinking, yeah. Yeah. you know, I don't need to. It's it's April. He might have races coming up later in the year, and just think better to just not push it too hard, and then and then end up taking the whole season off, take the rest of the year off if if necessary. All right, here we go. Second woman come. Second woman coming in. Debo out in front, trying not to face plant. That is that is going to be Michelle Lutz still doing her thing. Seven forty four. Yes. Taking her All time, right. swapping bottles. She's looking happy. She's got tongue out, tongue wagon. Salt tabs. Looking for salty. Yeah, we some... mentioned we mentioned earlier how technical this course can be, and especially being an early season race. Uh, you know, some of those stability muscles in the you know, the hips, the knees, the calves. Um, they're yeah, not was... quite there yet for mountain season. So to come out and shred on a course this technical that is quite challenging, I I think you're gonna you do see a lot of people start to cramp up a little bit and start to really feel it just because it's you're using those muscles in a way they haven't been used all winter mm -hmm. long really, mm -hmm. um, okay. And it is just a challenging um, course. Okay, Michelle's taking a little bit longer She's time here. Her time, yeah. She um, is asking for salty stuff, asking for salt tablets. She looks like she's struggling a little bit, to be honest. Um, she's uh, we're, one of our finest volunteers is pouring pickle brine into her bottle, pickle juice. And off she goes with uh, half, a, half a bottle of pickle juice, chugging that down. And uh, she's got some blood, blood and mud on her as well. So she's having a, she's having a full experience. Another 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 uh 815 coming through blowing through the aid station yeah he ain't got time for that he ain't got he's time got, for he's that got his, he's got his oh. crew oh he's got his there we go right, there we michelle. go michelle's got the the tunes back on and she's got heading back out michelle from issaquah washington she's heading out of there we've got actually second and third place females yeah. are from issaquah washington both michelle lutz and tara fraga so good friends out there proper oh, shredders please. I believe I ran with Michelle last year at the Tiger Claw. Can anybody fact check that for me? She run the Tiger Claw last year. I am would not be shocked. I thought I remember Corinne Malcolm saying something about that. Okay, all right. So I think I ran with her a bunch. She looks familiar. You seen who have you not run in your time <laughs> in the sport here? That also just means i've been i'm getting old i've been doing this for a while Cross 2022 a tiger claw 25 miler she ran okay. and 2023 as well where yeah, she won okay. she won 2023 yep that's right okay i thought so yeah yeah she's an absolute amazing athlete um she definitely feels like she's struggling working through some things right now potentially some cramping she was asking a lot for you know electrolyte tabs drinking pickle juice as i said she has some blood and mud on her um so hopefully she can hang on yeah yeah this course demands a lot so those who are going to succeed really well here are those who are super comfortable running technical trails or have done a lot of the winter workouts the strength training maintained a lot of those stability muscles in the lower limbs like those are who, those are the kind of people's who, uh kind of athletes who's body is going to hold together the best on a on a day like this correct i'm hearing some cheers coming from the forest here we've got right. we've got someone in the chat saying that uh big Min was planning to do canyons 100k this was his final race oh. so maybe he's just being oh, smart bummer. and okay maybe saying hey you know what let's get better water 673 okay, that's tara fraga female. okay here's tara fraga coming in Awesome. Hey, all right. Here we go, Mike. You okay, buddy? All right. All She's right, just going to grab that handheld and go. Go, Tara. And fourth place. Here we go. Oh, man. It is a race. Right. Sophie Anders, right behind Tara. 44, I believe. And she's right on Tara's tail coming through here. Okay. Interesting. So I just saw the woman right on Tara's tail doing some strides up this concrete yesterday and i was like wow okay they're getting ready yeah Let's yeah she's stride. getting ready to throw down and here she is yes. uh-huh 
So for those of you who are joining us, we are here at the 2024 Gorge Waterfalls 50K. We've got eyes on the Cascade Locks aid station hosted by the wonderful Yasin Daboon on camera down there. This is in Cascade Locks, Oregon. We are 20.6 miles into the race. They have a seven and a half mile out and back. They've got to climb up to a turnaround point up on the PCT, flip around, come back down to this aid station. So this is a nice opportunity to kind of keep an eye on your competition and see yeah. where your splits are. Yeah. It either motivates the hell out of you or scares the hell out of you. Uh, these yeah. out and backs do every single time. But then from here, from Cascade Locks to the finish is going to be a very fast 5K that is on this wonderful trail right behind you seeing that they're coming in on they get back to the road where they hang a right go underneath the highway and they have a bike path that leads them all the way here into town into beautiful cascade locks oregon we get front row seats sitting at gorge beer co uh, we are the window we are the comfy uh here watching them we can see them come down the street and then cross uh cross under a bridge to head right into the Marine Park where they are celebrated by awaiting fans, just abated breath, watching to see these runners crush the day. This is brought to you by Speedland. Thank you so much, Speedland, for not only making some of the best shoes in the game, but also for sponsoring this live broadcast. You give us an opportunity to be out here um, and bring the world the competition that we are seeing here being thrown down at the 50k between not only three incredible men but three incredible women uh, all fighting for that second, third, fourth place. We have Michelle Lutz uh, is chasing down uh, Tara or Tara Fraga and Sophie Anders are chasing down Michelle Lutz, who is currently in second place. She was looking a little rough out of that aid station. Tara was looking strong. Sophie Anders yep. was looking strong. I think yeah. we've got. I don't. I don't think that's going to be our top. Our same top four. In that order. In that order, returning to the aid station. And then in the in the I men's, agree with you. In the men's race, we had Chris Chris Myers. Uh, being chased by Dylan Humberger, there was a bit of a gap that opened up there, more more so than and than in the the last age station at Wakella, the the gap had grown a bit. Matthew Bigman went out after them, but he's actually come back now. He's decided that uh, perhaps uh, discretion is the better part of valor, and he's going to just rest. Looked as though maybe there was a knee thing going on, so he's decided. So that puts Michael Nanasco. Um, 42 years old from Salem, Oregon into third place. Yeah, he's been running a smart race, moving himself up yeah, all day yeah, long. Yeah. And he's being chased um, by Jared Foreman and Alex King and Michael Moore rounding out our top seven dudes. So it's going to be very interesting to see. It looks like it's Chris's race to win at this point. He's in the driver's yeah. seat. He is in control. Um, he is... He's doing what needs to be done, and at this point, it's a uh, I don't need to I don't need to hurt any harder than the rest of you. You all have to hurt harder to catch me. Yeah. Well, and I think again, just to the point that you were making about this this section that they're on now, which is this out and back. Um, now, now they'll get a sense of how what the gap is, it, it, which is really right. interesting. You know, do I need to sort of put the hammer right. down to try and eight twenty seven? Uh, Lauren, female coming in. Awesome job. To the right. To the right. Yep. Lauren Puritz out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. She's looking looking strong. Grab that, a quick gel. She's looked absolutely Dang. the same at every aid station, just yeah. smooth and consistent. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. S efficient is smooth, smooth is fast. And Yasin, yesterday when we were when we were with you for the hundred K, when I was with you for the hundred K, you know, watching the guy the, the, the lead athletes coming through on their way back. Um, as Zach was just saying, you know, once they pass you, having done the out and back, the last 5K was so fast. Like, it was it, unbelievable. It really they seemed is. to pass you, and then suddenly they were in the window. We could see them up the road here. Like, yes. it was, it was yeah. crazy fast. At that point, they are smelling the barn. It is <laughs> yeah. downhill. It is uh, about a little over a mile, about a mile of trail. And then, as Zach said, it's kind of a hairpin right turn onto pavement underneath the highway. Um, and it's bike path 
and pavement. All right, this guy's moving well. Yeah. Awesome job. Um, yeah, and then you've got that bike path right through the middle of Cascade Locks, and you've got you know cheering from the you know tourists that are out on the street, locals, and whatnot, and then downhill into Marine Park. It is a fast finish for sure. I did the 30k last year as well, and that was really kind of a uh, closing hard. It felt good to come through town like that. Open yeah, up. no, it is so much fun. Running all these rocks, you know, you're running these rocks all day. It feels nice to stretch out the legs on some of these paved sections. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's kind of like one of the fun things about this course is you've got that two miles of paved in the middle of the course that mm -hmm. once yes. you get through the waterfalls and you get off that technical section up until you hit trail 400, it's, you've got a two mile road that is just like, you can really just kind of stretch it out, open up and kind of get ready to take on the next section of chunky trail. Um, and then again here, once you get to the finish, you get out of cascade locks the second time and you're running to the finish, you've got that mile and a half oh, to almost two miles, about a mile and a half of, uh, just really, really runnable bike path that is mm -hmm. slightly rolling downhill. There's a couple kicks in there. I don't want to, don't want to be fooled. It's yeah. not all downhill. There's a few uphill right. grinds, but, yep. uh, it is mostly downhill to the finish. In fact, you seen from where you are, we can practically see your aid station from the finish line. That's how that's how painful this is that you yeah, run past the finish line <laughs> to another 5K. Totally. I agree. And you know, I was here till late last night until the last runners come through, right? And I was making sure that I told them that it's mostly downhill. There are, it's not all downhill. <laughs> it's, that's important because I don't want them to be mad at me and say, I told them it was all downhill. There is, like you said, there is a slight rise on that bike path going, coming, climbing back into cascade locks. Um, but like you said, it is fast. And if you got the legs, you can push as we've seen, you know, Ryan Miller over the years, Matt Daniel, some of these guys just show their leg speed, that marathon speed. Oh, absolutely. And I think that, you know, the, the final 5k really favors that, that marathon runner, that strong, high turnover, high cadence, yeah. strong power kind of guy or gal. And so it'll be really mm -hmm. fun to see what happens here. I mean, just like Mr. Matt, Matt Bigman, who, you know, just pulled out of the race, uh, you know, anything can happen. You never know, but man, it's, uh, it's going to be a fun race. I think to me, this is the most exciting part of the race. I think everyone's racing to get here. And then we're all excited to see this final race, this final portion of the race take place, That's because this is where the moves are made. This is yeah, where things absolutely. are either solidified or they shake up. And generally here at the Gorge Waterfalls 50 K, it is shaken up. It very rarely absolutely. stays consistent. A lot, a lot can happen in that out and back. So we expect got, we got a, the unexpected. Expect got a bit of the unexpected. Crew team update. We're being told that Corinne is just a few minutes out from you, Yasin. Okay, okay. And Debo's just arrived in the studio, looking. Uh, he's he's eating. He's he's eating, and he's got <laughs> seltzer water. You were Excellent. you were you were puffing when you got into uh, Cascade Locks. <laughs> Yeah, we cannot wait to have uh, you know, our our fearless leader, Mr. Free Trail himself, the the okay, king of Nar. Got another, got another female coming in here. Mr. Dylan Bone will join us here in a little bit. He's gonna get some food and some water in him while we are hey, watching these women strong. shred. Eight Who fifty is this? seven. Looking really strong, smiling. Soda. Eight fifty seven. Shh. I'm going to kill this name. Chantal Schultz Rathbun okay, from to Colorado the right, Springs. To the right, to the right. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay. She's looking focused and strong. She grabbed some Coke, a couple gels, and she is out. And another woman right on her heels. Looks like a couple more coming in here. Yeah. This, um, part, of, this part of the women's race was really, really packed. We've got 519 coming in. Awesome job. Carmen, well yep. Carmen Bango. Yep. And there's another woman right on her tail. Okay. This is Jenna coming in here. 
All right, so now that we've got uh, a handful of the men and women that have come through there at Cascade Locks, and we are awaiting our most adored Corinne Malcolm to come through, we are going to cut to a quick (laughs) ad break. So, Yassine, hang tight. Keep an eye out for Corinne, and we will come back to you shortly. Sounds good. Today's broadcast is also brought to you by Speedland, the best trail shoes ever created. This is the brand new commission, the GS PDX, the sixth model in Speedland's short but illustrious history. You'll notice it's a throwback to the initial colorway of the first model, the SL PDX, though this is built on the GS platform. Plenty of cushioning to take you as long as you want to go on the trail. Everything you've come to expect, the double boa fit system, the HTPU midsole, the drop-in P-backs, uh, secondary midsole, also removable carbon plate, nothing better than the Speedland. Go pick up a pair of the GS PDX. You'll find a link and a discount code here in the description on YouTube. And we are back here at the Gorge Waterfalls 50K. I'm Zach Marion in the studio, joined by Yassine DeBoon out at Cascade Locks Aid Station. I am in Cascade Locks, uh, Oregon, watching this amazing race unfold from Gorge Beer Co., our HQ for the day. It is a gorgeous day. It's got a nice, cool breeze coming through here. The sun's poking in and out. Beautiful trail running conditions here. Excellent job, man. Stay to the right, up there, good work. Folks have to be careful coming through these aid stations new with the new construction. There's a lot of loose rock. The course kind of dog legs right here. Um, so a lot of runners are confused on which way to go. Um, coming back down, it's the same thing. They've got to come down the trail. They've got to make these kind of split second decisions. There's a lot of sensory overload. There's people yelling at you. What do you need? What do you need? There's crew. You're looking for your people. And you got to kind of zigzag through this aid station to get back to where you're going. So it takes a lot of focus here. Well, I mean, you you guys in the Y Wolf Y East Wolf Pack there at Cascade Locks manning that aid station, bringing nothing but top tier service, <laughs> all with a suit. I mean, look at that. You guys Thank are you. legitimately the best dressed okay. of all aid stations. I don't oh. know the Cowgill the Cowgill crew definitely has had a cool vibe going there, but you okay. you've got them outclassed oh, for thank sure. You. I appreciate that. We've been reminding people when they take the champagne flutes. All right, here we go. High five, bang. Been reminding folks when they take a drink of the champagne flutes that they have to keep their pinkies up, uh, uh, keep it classy. Keep as it if, classy. As if they don't have up. enough to think about. <laughs> <laughs> we usually get a good smile, you know, on their face, and that's our goal. We we were talking a little. Less. I was talking with Corinne a little bit yesterday about you know when when you're really uh, when you when you're burning the matches, you're really putting in the effort. Sometimes you start to think, did I really just see that? And I just wonder whether there's a bunch of people who are like, yeah, I was told to sort of just keep yeah. keep to the right, follow the guy in the tux, go towards the guy. And they're like, did that really happen? That doesn't feel like a normal thing to see during a, during a trail race. So you seen, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a heads up here. I had predicted okay. that our men's leader would come through just okay. about 1130. Now we had a 15 minute, uh, delay on the start. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. I would anticipate that in the next, I would it's say in the, 91? in the, okay. in the next, nice. uh, 10, five, 10 minutes. Could yeah. I, I want to, I want to, I want to give it, I'm, I've been trying to predict the times all day. I'm going to say three hours and 28 minutes elapsed, which will be in about five minutes. Okay. So we've got to see whether Sounds we can right. whether we can drag Dylan Bowman in for a word before the before the first man comes back into Cascade Locks. We've got five minutes, maybe. And you know, as I mentioned yesterday, you know, some of these courses where you do have the out and backs, it can be very motivating for folks. Maybe you see, maybe you're in second or third place, and you see first or second coming at you. 
and you notice the distress on their face like a wounded animal and that primal hunting mode comes in it can be um hang on a second it looks like we have a female potentially dropping out here heading down to the medic here um, let's even get eyes on that yeah dang dylan hamburger's only 24 years old yeah, I think she might be out. I think she might have dropped. Matt Bigman dropped and came back. Oh, brutal. So, so talking, talking of animals, we've got Dylan Bowman with us. Wild animal. Wild an animal, animal out of the wild. we got Dylan Bowman with us here in studio. Dylan, tell me a little bit. How was it out there, my guy? The boys. Oh, my goodness. Best day ever. Best weekend ever. I'm exhausted, but... So pumped. I'm so thrilled to just like have a great weekend. So many friends and family in town for Gorge Waterfalls. The community came out to support us and yeah, I mean, here we are. Now the drama evolves on the third day. Come as do a thrilling conclusion. And as always, we've been commenting about this all day long. The 50K is always the most exciting race yep. from Cascade Locks first to the mm. finish. I mean, we've seen third place, Mr. Matt Bigman drop out, come back to the aid station after leaving uh, with a knee injury. We've got the women's yes, top five is just shaking up. Yep. Like everything is happening, but you live on the ground chasing yeah. these chasing these runners. What is Chris doing out there? Yeah. I mean, he was ridiculously strong. I felt like he was clearly right in Adam. control of the race. Job, but behind buddy. him, Dylan Humberger. This young, super tough kid who I had never heard of until he went toe to toe with Dakota Jones last year in the 50K, which you'll remember the dudes were banging heads through the first 20 miles of the 50K here last year. I was like, who is this 23 year old kid last year named Dylan Humberger? His girlfriend was here supporting him. Turns out he lives in Ashland, but grew up in, I think, Bozeman, Montana. Right. He started a season super strong with a third place at Chuck and Nut. I'm really grateful that he would come back and do another race with us here at the Gorge. He did come through the Cascade Locks aid station reporting that he felt like bleep. But he was oh. only three minutes back of the lead. Yeah. and But Chris, man, holy smokes. I had the gimbal on him for the last mile and a half into the aid station. And, man, I was working hard to just hang on. It, it, you seen you seen commented on the, the sweat glistening from, yeah, yeah. from your brow. I mean, I, I did have a long sleeve on plus a waterproof jacket because it's hard to regulate your temperature out there when you're, like, walking down the trail and then you're standing for 20 minutes and, and then you sprint for 20 minutes. <laughs> We're, we're buying like, these. Am I we're cold buying or am I way excuses. too hot? Yeah. We're buying these no, yeah, but absolutely. I was uh, VO2 max intensity just trying to hang on. Yeah. He, I don't this know. This kid is so, he's legit. This I don't know if you know legit. this, Debo, but he, by Thursday, he had like 40 plus miles on his legs with like five or 6,000 feet of yeah, 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 I was like, talking to him yesterday at the Wyeth Aid Station. Kudos to Chris Myers, who was drinking in the vibe of the 100K yesterday. He wasn't just sitting at his hotel room with his heat, feet up. He was enjoying it and cheering people on. And he was saying, yeah, I'm pretty much training straight through this. Obviously, Western States is his main goal of the season after qualifying at the Black Canyon 100K. As we all remember back in February, one of the stories of the day there at Black Canyon. Chris Myers, only 27, now living up between Boulder and Nederland in Colorado. So he is in the mecca of endurance sport and now fully focused on the Western States 100. And I just saw the bottom of his shoe, it seemed like. Yep, yep. Maybe he's there the s lad king. Might be coming back to you, Yassine. He's just so incredibly hey. strong. I have been passed by him a couple times on Gold Hill. Mm. When I think I'm having a good day, he just zips past me and I'm like, who is this guy? Who is yep. this young kid? who's just hopping over rocks. He's having a good time. So he's making his way back to Cascade Locks right now and doing it in quick fashion. Yeah, he's moving. Yeah, it's funny, you know, Zach, I'm sure you sort of have this sense sometimes of like, you know, when you can just like feel the intensity hey. of some runners. It's like you know, we've got with uh, them, you're like, Malcolm. Like there's something different about this guy. Right. I kind of feel that way with Chris. And here's Corinne, Corinne Malcolm Malcolm right. coming, in. coming Corinne into Malcolm Cascade Locks. Yes. Awesome job, Corinne. We are going to have greatness on both screens here between yes. Chris just shredding it. Yeah, we're we going to have a, a greatness pass. Corinne, yes. like Corinne on the way out. <laughs> would you like a champagne flute? <clears throat> grab grab, a, a, grab yeah. a ginger ale champagne flute there. I Pinky think, finger. I think Chris is right. probably in the last like 
400, 800 meters before he drops into the aid state. Oh, he's, oh, yeah. he's I mean, there. He's on that he's, right. he's there. Yeah. I mean, he's almost running the, the burns, the berms. I mean, it's crazy. Which means I'm going to have to hustle coming. to get to the finish line here in just a second. You'll have about 21 minutes by the time, 22 minutes. As you know very in. well, Zach. A big <laughs> shout out to Zach Marion, our host here today. He's helped me out. The last two years, this is your third right, year at Gorge Karen. Waterfalls. Job, last two years, we've just run gimbals in, with Instagram Karen Live on the Free Trail account. Oh, and here we are stepping it up a notch, and you've joined the Mountain Outpost team admirably to bring our game to the next level here. And we appreciate yeah, you. Here we go. There's Chris. Speaking of, we talked <laughs> about the pass. There it is. <clears throat> here we go. Oh man, he's getting the fi he's focus. getting the final oh, bits yeah. of uh, nutrition. Right, yeah, this work. kid's legit. Yeah, twenty seven oh, yeah, years old. Is. Look out oh, for this guy. Put him on your fantasy team for the Western yeah. States one hundred. This is his final tune up race for the last eight week build up to North America's biggest hundred miler. Chris Myers like, grew up in Southern California. I think he's only been in Boulder now for the last I don't know three to five months, something like that. And uh, clearly. You know he's coming into his own as an as an yeah, athlete. I got a bone out here pretty quick here, guys. So I just want to say a couple of things. I want number hear one: it. subscribe to Like the Wind magazine, please. <laughs> if there's one magazine that you subscribe to, it needs to be Like the Wind magazine. A big thank you to our friend Simon Freeman Thanks, here, Dave. who's Thanks in studio. He's on a three month tour of North America. Of course, he and his wife Julie live in Switzerland. And uh, they put together one of the greatest publications in the world with like the it's wind beautiful. Magazine. It's beautiful. It it's a piece of art. It's a piece of Thank art. You, it's gentlemen. not just a magazine. It's a piece of art. Great content. Even the ads are good. I got to say, even the ads are beautiful. Talking of which, your magazine. Yeah, but we're also talking of which your your presentations for <laughs> Speedland are on point. <laughs> on point. Have you guys right. been playing a few of them? Yeah. Well, you perfect segue. Thank Perfect you, segue. media guy. Perfect. I just want to give a big thank you to our presenting sponsor, Speedland. You see the footwear here on the front of the screen. This is a local Lisa. business, right? Portland born, Portland bred on the trails here in the gorge. We tested our first prototype. In fact, I got the first GS prototype at Gorge Waterfalls 2022. You remember this. Absolutely. And it we had that nearly conversation. perfect on the first try. And here we are, multiple commissions in. You see my shoe in the center, the GS Tam, GS PDX on the right. That disappeared. We sold out of all of our inventory in just a week. This is our new shoe, the GS SFD, which is going to be launching on pre-sale May 1st. Go to runspeedland.com and make sure you pick up a pair of shoes. And then we have a brand new product that's coming later in the the spring, early, or I'm sorry, the summer, early fall. Stay tuned. Which is going to be uh, more of a mountain oriented. It's going to be called the GL SVT. It's gonna be, it's gonna blow people's minds. So a big shout out to Dave Dombrow, Kevin Fallon, Clark Morgan, who works at the brand. He was out here racing the 30K this weekend. We really and he was the most excited puppy at the aid station this morning. Oh, he's he the was best. honestly, he was losing it. He's got it perfect crazy. energy. That's what yeah, I said to him. I said, energy. dude, I, uh, can I use you in the live stream because like you've got the he's charisma, the golden you know? retriever. Golden he's got the riz. Commentary, really. He's got the riz. And and by the way, I'm just going to say for my on on my part here as a European, you mentioned I live in Switzerland. Can't get hold of Speedland in Europe yep. yet. So we're working on it. Come on, you guys. know you got to you got to build so you, slow. So all of you Americans, you yeah. can help this shoe come to yeah. Europe. So maybe maybe we'll send you home with a little get gift there, it. Simon. Well, I won't say no. Finally, I just want to say before I head out here, a big thank you to Gorge's Brewery, our friends here who've opened the doors for us all week. Uh, our great, great partners. They even make a, a beer for us this weekend, the LF Gorge, the LF Gorge IPA. IPA. I can't wait to have a couple of them this evening. I've been a good boy and resisted the temptation until now, but we'll have our big after party the, up here. With the lack of sleep afternoon. and the dehydration, I think two beers and we'll be finding oh, you curled up under perfect. a table two somewhere. Beers, I'm going to be <laughs> euphoric <laughs> in heaven. Euphoric and then asleep in short order. Zach Marion, Simon Freeman whole mountain outpost team appreciate you yeah, all very nice. much thank you all for watching back at home too it means a lot to have you here watching our race i'm gonna go to the finish line and greet our champions Dude. hold down we'll the see you over there man peace out so we're still seeing all lots right. of runners coming through yes yes what's the yes, vibes uh, like a little quick Quick update, uh, there's some people really struggling out here. Uh, we had Michael Moore and the men's field walk back into the aid station and drop out. Ah, oh, really? Another okay. another casualty. 
Not another casualty, just shaking his head and just not his day. I don't know exactly what happened. I haven't been able to find that out yet. But uh, as you saw, the leader was blazing through, looking super strong, focused, gave me a smile, looking like he's not even really working that hard and a really fast time. Uh, he might beat Debo to the finish uh, if Debo's not careful. So I don't, uh, I don't want to brag, but I did say 328 honestly, he rolled through, and honestly, 329 he rolled. What did he through. run through? 329 34. <laughs> I mean, the predict, the first prediction, you were only 30 seconds out. You, you, you're getting worse. But not I, I, I messed up the middle one a little bit, but this one, you know, the 15 minute late start, the time kind yeah, of threw me a little you. bit. That but but did we did see, did we see, did we see a Corinne Malcolm come through? Yeah, you seen? I was just going to say, Corinne Malcolm came through, and she looked very focused. I, I tried to engage her a little bit, but she was just dialed, uh, laser focus, grabbed some gels, filled up her bottles, and headed out for the yeah, outback. Yep. So D Dylan Humberger, as he yeah, left, well as he left you, Yassine, Dylan was Dylan Humberger in second place was about four and a half minutes behind. Uh, Chris Myers, as he left you to go out on the out and back. So on the way out. Yes. So if that holds. So you should be seeing him really soon. Now, in fact. And this is the exciting part to see if any moves are being made as we sit here and wait in anticipation. And we think that Michael Nanasco, who you called out earlier, yep. uh, had moved up into third because Matthew Bigman. Yeah, so with Matthew Bigman right dropping time. out, that leaves third yes. place wide open between Michael Nanasco, Jared Foreman, Alex King, Michael Moore, all all within striking distance of that. Like, well, not it would Moore's not be also. shocking if any one of them. Yeah. Well, Michael, through. you said Michael Moore is, has. Oh, that's right. Michael Moore did come back, and he's that so he it is. Moore came back, and Matthew Bigman came back, and the both of them DNF. Right. So Dylan Humberger, and if you know if what Dylan said was true, he he felt like trash. Mm. Um then, you know, that is a big amount of climbing and descending that if you don't have the quads and someone around you does, that can be minutes of time to to drop. So I'm anticipating Absolutely. Chris Myers has pretty much solidified his lead at this point. He is just yes. he's just having his own day. He's driving the car. This is his race to have. But behind him in the back seat, we've got Dylan, Michael, Jared, and Alex all battling for the top spot, the other top spots on that podium, uh, top spots of the day. So it could be anybody's second and third. And when you have that right. motivation between running into uh, that the top of the podium, I think the biggest battle is going to be between third and fourth today. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree I, with that analysis. I think it's going to be it's going to be super exciting. And as we've said a number of times, you know, they get back to you, Yasin, and it's and it's basically an all out sprint. Yeah, you know, it's it's a five k. Like, let's go. Yep. It's as you said, very much downhill. It's like take the brakes off. There's nothing. There's, you don't need to hold on to anything at that point. You just go. Yeah, there's one section when you when you're going through the trail because you've already been on that trail before, so you kind of know it having run into Cascade Locks. Mm -hmm. So when you're leaving, you're like, I I, I kind of know where I'm at right now. You you're familiar with it. Uh, you you're reminded on some of those little downhills that you had exactly how much uphill it is getting out to the road. But then once you get the road, you just you just know it's right there. Yeah. And it's just so easy. You can shut the brain off and just turn and like just let yourself get there but there is a small section of uphill leading back into cascade locks that you kind of yeah. you you hit you crest uh that that bike path and then you have that downhill flow to the finish but you're running through the city that you just get so energized and that last yeah. half mile is just <laughs> super jazz it's i mean you're just so stoked you're you're both so incredibly spent but so stoked yeah to get there that it's it's just it goes by in a heartbeat the, and as um, simon pointed out yesterday there are a few steps that go down into marine park that you got to make sure you don't uh yard sale on right before the finish line i've got i've got old knees you seen i see steps and they and they and they make me wince <laughs> I think these young kids will just take it in one leap. They they, they won't even think about it. They'll just poof, straight over the. They'll just, just jump parkour, down. Just parkour, yeah, just parkour running. Yeah, they'll just jump down. Yes, it. I yes. mean, yeah. I can't. I can't compare. I can't oh compare. man, the race is happening. And then on top of that, let's 
Let's shoot over to the women's race where we've got Sarah Beal in a commanding lead, just having fun, all smiles, doing what she does best, which is shred every all course right, she touches. Folks. I just want to interrupt you, uh, legendary Oregon runner, Hal Kerner. Is this Hal? Hal. Is Hal. Oh, yeah, Hal, that is. yo. Yeah, buddy. That Come beard is looking in. epic. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> He's well going done, in man. for all the high fives. <laughs> Legend. Uh, Still more runner. ripped than That's almost any ultra runner I've ever seen. <laughs> the thought that we, he and now. I are within a few months of each other age-wise just makes me feel a bit sick. Yeah, <laughs> he honest. is... The only thing, the only thing comparable is that my beard has got as much gray as his. That's it. Uh, Hell is an absolute legend in our sport. Um, he's been doing this for a very long time. A lot of mountain miles on those legs, but he's still oiling that machine, getting after it. Um, coming at you from Ashland, Oregon, down at the border of California, Oregon. Little pinkies up, Hal. Remember, pinkies up. Keep it classy. Keep it classy, Hal. You got it. Pinkies up, Hal. Pinkies up. There you go. <laughs> someone yes, called someone called it. Jory Boswell on the chat is saying Hal is jacked. Yeah, good work, buddy. Is he yeah, got? Hal's is he got? Good. Hal's all smiles, heading it, out for the out and back. He's just headed out. Someone called Brett in the live chat has said that Hal raced a ten mile road race yesterday. Oh, of course he did. What? Of course he did. Mr. Brett Hornig chiming in. What's up, Brett? Uh, sad you're not okay, here. Like we We'd got, love to right, have you around. Second place. Second place coming through Ooh, here. Dylan. Dylan. Yes. Look he's maintained awesome that lead. Buddy. Yeah, he's looking good. He's looking good. He gave me a thumbs up. And okay, that's he's great. He's on news. his way. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of uh, Hal Corner and Ashland, Oregon, uh -huh. he knows Dylan Humberger well. Uh, okay. Dylan is from Ashland, Oregon, just an absolute oh. young gun, 24 years old, complete shredder. Um, so incredibly fast, strong, strong, strong athlete wanting to really make his mark. I mean, last year, as Dylan said, he went toe to toe with the legend Dakota Jones. Dakota, I, I was here. I saw it. I, I witnessed that. And I, I, to be honest, when he came out the first time, I was a little worried about him, the way he looked, the way he was a little right. uh, panicky and he looked in full control just now as he's heading for the final 5k yeah i mean any i think yeah i hate to say it out loud but anyone can fake a 5k that finish is like <laughs> man it's just it's so you know it's there that you can smell it quite literally because i think we're starting to throw some fries into the fryer here at, at gorgeous beer co so that's gonna be wafting through the air but yeah it's it's gonna be awesome to see him and i'm excited to see who ends up behind him? Is anyone chasing him? I am super excited to see what's happening at third place right now. And we're, we're expecting them pretty soon here. And like I said, we don't know what's going on in the forest right now. The magic of the PCT. Who knows? Who's going to show up? Who's going to pop out of the woods? Like I said, the biggest battle of the day is going to be three and four, three and four for the for men. lost spot on the podium. For sure. Yep. They're going to fight for it, um, which... I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna put out my hope here. I hope it's Alex King and Mike Nanasco. I hope I hope those two are just just battling it out. And for no other reason than he than than he's in his forties. I'm I'm gonna I'm pitching. I want to I want to see the young gun and, and, and the uh, the aged athlete, the seasoned Let's go athlete. Masters. I want I want yeah Michael Nanasco for third. It's like a couple of <laughs> kids who are gonna be first and second. We need an, an old man. Yeah, to we, need, we, need, we, need, we need to bring need the, the average runners. age up a little bit. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, I had my first experience at a a road marathon a couple like a month and a half ago. I was running next to a 22 year old recent graduate out of university, and was just like, "Yeah, I ran, I ran the 800 in college. I'm so stoked to get into these marathons." And he was like, so jazzed. <laughs> His second marathon, he was asking me about like, "What was the last race you did?" I was like, "Uh, Leadville 100." <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he gave me, he gave me the, oh man, like, how old are you? Yeah. I like, oh, and I'm, I'm 38, you know, thanks. Thanks for asking. He's like, dude, you're doing so good for your age. <laughs> First time I got it, it broke my heart, but, uh, but I also had to did, recognize did, did it's he, so did true. He, did he suddenly trip just after that? Like he had a, he someone had a kicked out his back yeah. leg. I don't know what happened. He went down, <laughs> didn't see him again. No, he's a great kid, but just. As a 22 year old, giving you the, you're doing so good for your age. I don't know, you seen when was the first time you got that? 
He's never had it. Uh, He's never heard that. No one has ever said that. Yassine to him. is ageless. Come on. Oh uh, man, I, I I just shave off all my gray hairs. Yes. Uh huh. You t- uh, no, I tell you what I- happens after this, after that point that you've just described. What happens now when you get to my age is people very condescendingly say, "Oh crumbs, you don't look your age." Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for that one. <laughs> That'll come. So we. We've got about 10 minutes. No, I don't know what gap. you're talking about, man. I still beat, you know, I'm in my mid 40s. I still beat the 22 year olds in races. So I don't know what right. you're talking about. Yeah, Guys, not all of us can say that, my, my man. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> joking. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm racing the Masters category these days. Oh, I love it. I love it. Still you, Ian Sharman. Oh, man. Yep. Ian the legends. Thank you, man. I appreciate you saying that. You know, and I look up to the guys, as I mentioned yesterday, and gals that are doing this at a high level into their 50s. I mean, I know, you know, Jeff Browning for a long time. Um, he is still absolutely throwing down into his 50s. Several others. Um, it's it's amazing to see. It really, really yeah, is. it really is. But the story of today is, and I hate to say it, Yassine, you might agree with me. It is the changing <laughs> of the guard, my man. Yeah. These young guns are coming in, the Chris Myers, the Dylan Humbergers. I mean, even, you know, Sarah Beal at 30, and we have, you know, so many young athletes coming yeah, in and for crushing. Sure. For sure. It's, it's amazing to see. You and I have seen the sport completely yeah. evolve over the last 12, 15 years. Totally. I mean, it, it happens with most sports. You know, you see the, the, the young talent come in. And, you know, the, the old heads in the sport, so to speak, um, have the respect and they have the wisdom and experience. But then they, you know, you get this young talent and youthful exuberance come in and just kind of it is the changing of the guards. And it's 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 kind of fun to see. It's exciting to see uh, people push the, the limits of human potential as well. Um, you know, I remember when Jim Walmsley came on the scene. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, OK, here we go. 623 we've got third place a new third place 623 looks like a uh, foreman this way 623 jared foreman 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 right up for the podium that yes. was impressive folks he dropped the bottle his crew person threw the bottle mid-air he caught it one hand and he's off to i'm, the I'm wondering line. if he knows that means someone's very close behind him that's why he's yes. hustling to get out of there but there, on the live stream we've got eyes on chris over. myers Okay. Making his way into Cascade Locks. He's on that bike path uh, that leads into Cascade Locks. He's on the final edge of it. So he'll then cross under the under the highway, right? And then- no, he's already crossed on the highway. He is on the bike path. He's at the very top. I mean, ah, you and we'll I will be him. able to yeah, see, we'll him see him shortly coming, coming through the window. Mm. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, he is. And he's just still motoring. Like, I think he's going to finish this race like legitimately on empty he's leaving it all out there which is so fantastic to see i mean he's racing like he's got someone on his heels and he he is clearly clearly just dominating the day i just wanted to say that uh i just read in the chat that um dylan Humberger is an employee of Hal, and he just passed Hal. Hal was just going for the out and back, and Dylan was coming back in. And Brett Hornick said, you're fired, Dylan. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's going to be – I was going to make a comment to that for uh, you know the fact that Hal just watched his employee <laughs> just <laughs> smash him in a race. <laughs> He's just going to dock his pace. Someone's going to get like, the night shifts yeah, every do, night yeah. shift. You got the graveyard shift now. Oh man, I absolutely love Road it. Valley runners. So we're just waiting on a time split for the for for Jared in third place. How far back behind Dylan Humberger he is? We just wait for that. Yeah, we'll we'll get that, that time split, split shortly. Jared Foreman update. was absolutely charging too, coming through here. He he was on a mission. He, I mean, he looked through everybody. Where is the trail? And charged out of here. Heading for Marine Park in Cascade Lodge. Awesome. We've got Chris Myers. We've got amazing drone footage of Chris Myers crossing out front of the Best Western right now. 
I am looking out the window of Gorge Beer Co. and I am watching him charge down. Yeah, we it's a slight downhill into the uh, finish line. We can see, and him. the dude is just absolutely wrecking it. I mean, at this point, with the downhill on the pavement, and there's a very sort of there's a breeze, a, a strong breeze behind him. This must feel great. Oh, I mean, <laughs> must feel the, amazing. the joy of it, the excitement of it, I can guarantee it, he's following, just following so jazzed wins. right now. He is so lit up, and since getting that golden ticket, he is just on fire. He yeah. is just burning super hot. It's amazing. Oh, here he comes. We're going to get some amazing drone coverage of him. Hoping to get Yassine, that. we are going to cut to watch him make this finish. Thank you for joining us at Cascade Locks. We're going to cut back to you here shortly okay. to catch those women come through but we're going to give chris his moment to shine uh Roger you go that. take care of those runners and we'll be back to you shortly sounds great see you soon so you got that beautiful drone footage of chris making his way through town here i mean he's got enough time to stop and get a burger he's going to make this uh this left hand turn just past the uh, the burger shop there. I mean, if I were him, I'd just place an order for like a double cheese and a milkshake and uh, pick it up on my way back. There was uh, one of the UTMB races, the PTL, it's like this five-day race. And the guys that were winning it last year, they stopped at a sports bar for a beer on their way to the finish line. They just decided, Absolutely. well, you know, we're not in a rush. Just... So there he is making that final descent. He's going to take those, the Simon, your stairs right there. Yeah, he's going to the final look, thing of the day. Just... Oh, he actually took him as stairs, but. I was going to say, I would have just, I don't know. I wouldn't have jumped him because I'd have cramped everywhere. No, exactly. Uh, he's making this final turn onto the grass to the finish line. And Holy main man Dylan cow. Bowman will be there to There he to is turning him in. on the Jets. <laughs> Mr. Chris Myers, our line to line leader of the 2024 Gorge Waterfalls 50K, coming in, making himself his presence known in the sport. What a dude. Uh, that looks there great. That was you a great. are, wow. ladies Good and gentlemen. Him. That is your 2024 Gorge Waterfalls 50K winner. Line to line today. I mean, he never let up, did he? No, absolutely not. He I don't think just, there was any moment where he decided no, he was going to... No, there was no conversation. He was just... He climbed that first big... 1400 foot climb really well he seemed to handle the downhill brilliantly from there and there was there was no question after that i don't think and look at him the, the stoke is just just high he's he's jazzed to be out there we can see him on the drone cover he's just you know finally taking a breath talking he's excited I can only imagine the conversation between him and Debo. And Debo is just They're probably chatting about the mile that Debo kept up with him. Yeah. You know, what a what an epic part of the race that was. You absolutely shredded me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I can just, I can read lips. I can tell you right <laughs> yeah, now exactly you know, what he's saying. He's like... <laughs> Hell F Gorge, bro. Hell F Gorge, but I was wearing uh, two jackets. Yeah. It, I was wearing, that's why I was sweating. It was two jackets and, and a puffy. And... Awesome, awesome, awesome. So fantastic to see him there. We should be expecting the other men's leaders. We're going to keep an eye on that. Let's see if we can go back to Mr. Yassine to Boone and catch those women coming through. Fantastic, fantastic. We're going to keep an eye there at Cascade Locks to see what happens with the women's race. Good job, man. Last we saw, we had 
We had Sarah Beal in a commanding lead, being chased down by Michelle Lutz and Tara Fraga and Sophie Anders. The three of those last four were kind of really, really close together. It was close-knit, so it'll be really exciting to see what happens there. Uh, it is, again, Sarah in the driver's seat. She's got uh, full command of the day. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited for that. Some Issaquah queens over here, Michelle and Tara, representing Issaquah, Washington, extremely well in second and third place, respectively. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Yassine, but have we not seen uh, Sarah yet? Correct. We have not seen Sarah. We're expecting them shortly and also very excited to see how it all pans out. Yeah, I would anticipate uh, Sarah Beal should be coming through, I would say, within the next four minutes. If I'm a betting well, man, I'm going to say four the, minutes. I mean, you are the uh, the king of predictions, so I'm going with what you say. I mean, I, I did have uh, men's finishing time in... What did I say? Three, three fifty. Let's see, see where I was at according to my my spreadsheets. I think he was close. I think he was like three fifty two. Well, where was his final question? Is are three fifty one? Three. Are you playing the free trail fantasy? No, I sh I should have. See, I guessed overall winner <laughs> times. I didn't guess who was going to do it. Okay, gotcha. And I have okay. to say, everybody, I have been cheating a little bit. My, uh, <laughs> I have spent the last two months predicting when times were going to come in and uh so i could make sure everybody was in place so i really have just i just know what it takes to win this race and i know about where they are and my predictions i will say they were right we had everyone where we needed them to be at the right times to cat to capture these guys just absolutely crush it so we're, we're waiting awesome. um we're waiting for a bit of an update from the live tracking we know that jared foreman went through in third fourth yasin who was the fourth man that went to go through uh we have not seen number four come through yet so that so we're, 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 we're thinking it's either alex king or michael nanasco will be correct. fourth or fifth yes that's correct so we're just Waiting. We've got a nice crowd here that are kind of at the mouth of the trailhead, and you know I can can always hear uh, when somebody's coming. There's a like a loud uproar, and then who is going to pop out of the woods? That is yeah. If I part. if I remember correctly, having been out there the last couple of years running cameras myself, usually there's like I don't know a dozen people, half a dozen people sitting on the trail right behind you, kind of watching from you know, trail yeah. side. So you, sh you should totally. hear them give some cheers for sure. Yeah. And as I said, this whole parking lot has been opened up and paved. So we have even more room now, whereas last year it was a more narrow gravel road. Awesome job, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> got a nice compliment on my suit there. Thank you. Amazing. We actually got visual of Mr. Dylan Humberger making his way into Cascade Locks. He's up along the highway there on the bike path where we pretty much where we picked up Chris Myers. So he's going to have another 10 minutes before he's at the finish, uh, maybe a little less than that. So we're going to keep an eye on him. And also, Yasin, you're still on screen. So we've got you down there waiting for the women. It should be roughly yeah. the same time yeah. um, that the podium was wrapping up, that the women's uh, leaders would hit Cascade. So... As predicted, they should be crossing. We should be seeing both, uh, both on the stream here. It's gonna be amazing. We got the excitement of the men's podium coming into town, and we're gonna have the women shredding down that trail into Cascade Locks for the final time. Dylan Humberger looks like he's moving well, but you've oh, he's he's, he's Jared worse for the wear. Foreman looked like he was absolutely flying as he came past you yesterday, you know. Yeah, he's. Okay. I wonder whether there's any chance that he's going to suddenly. Uh, I've I've appear. seen it happen here. I have seen it happen here in this final mile. You know, he's he does still have a decent amount of time to to get into town. He hasn't quite made it to the intersection yet, um, or under the bridge. So we could see a sprint for for second on the grass. 
Right and you know it's super easy you, to yeah. get complacent. You know that uh, you know Chris was so far ahead of you. You're not going to mm-hmm. chase him, mm-hmm. so you're just kind of focused on survival Second. mode, getting yeah. there. Yeah, you've 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 gotten complacent, and you've pretty much uh, accepted, you know, second place. So you, it's easy to not push hard at this point. Um, I mean, I, I mean, he's now at a half mile out. So the, the, the chances of him getting sniped at this point are pretty minimal if, but I don't know, man, if, uh, if Michael went for it, then you never know. (laughs) You never know. Send it, leave everything out there. I mean, it just reconfirms the idea of just never, ever, ever count yourself out uh, until the finish line because you never know what is going to happen in front of you. Wrong turns, bonks, all that kind of stuff. Well, and we've seen and we've seen a lot of change, you know, a few changes in the in the men's field at the front uh, today. I mean, you know, a couple of people. Um, yeah. Calling it a day. And and uh, we've had some DNFs. We've had, you know, some some shakeups. It's just it is the nature of the beast. It is what happens out here. You you get into the arena and you you throw down and you see what happens. So we've got um Okay, here we go. Oh we got Alex seen... King. Alex oh. King. So this is Alex Ban King's friggin' tastic. In, in fourth. Oh. Alex King line. in fourth. Is is that is that a Mr. Chris Myers? Hello, hello. What is going on, buddy? It is me, Zach Marion, here in the studio. Hey, Zach. Uh, how are you doing after such an incredible shred? Uh, I feel pretty good. I, I, I guess Dylan's saying something about a course record. I, I feel like the course changes a little bit every year, so this might be one, but I feel pretty good. I mean, it was really, really pretty out there. I was just enjoying myself. Yeah, no, you you look fantastic, and I'm a little embarrassed that uh, people are allowed to finish 50Ks and not look as terrible as I do afterwards. If you look that good, that can only mean one thing. It means that you are training for something big. I don't know what that would be. How about you tell me about what's next for you? I don't know. Uh, It's this race. It's like a point-to-point Tahoe to Auburn. Oh, sounds Uh, interesting. this is a, a, a training race that I'm, I'm doing for Western States. Um, I just uh, wanted to try and run fast for a little bit, you know, get those uh, long, long hours on feet and pound the downhills because I got to prepare for a net downhill course. But yeah, that's 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 the that's the inside scoop. The inside scoop. You heard it here first. Chris Myers is going to throw down at Western States. Uh, for those of you who don't know. You know, Chris, you've been getting a lot of love as one of the the young shredders of the sport that's coming up. You've had a recent move to the trail running Mecca out near Boulder, Colorado. I myself have been humbled by you crushing me on Gold Hill uh, as I thought I was having a good day and you shred past me. Uh, You're yeah. getting some good laps out there with some amazing athletes. What has that move been like for you? And, you know, like how how jazzed are you right now on the sport? Oh, it's been great. Um, I have heard from a few people that they thought it was kind of a stupid move to move out like a month and a half before uh, a golden ticket race to elevation because of just, you know, the recovery that comes with being at higher elevation. But I thought a month was enough time. And so far it's been paying off and it's just an amazing community of really great runners and just just being around those really awesome runners is just going to give you like a couple of percentage points of fitness just right there. I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now, you've gotten a lot of love from a one Justin Grunewald who has repeatedly messaged me saying, Chris is my guy. He is the dark horse. I don't think you can consider yourself a dark horse anymore. You are, you are an athlete in the sport that people are going to recognize. They know that half Asian Chris is showing up and he is, he is here to throw down and shred as you did today. I will. I got to ask you. I mean, you took the lead from literally the first couple steps, and you never gave it up. Were you at all focused no, on the competition, like, uh, or were you going? Dil- Dylan, who just finished right now, he led the entire climb up, and I was just uh, I was in second and third behind him, just like floating along. And then I just uh, on the downhill just took it took it away on the technical descent, and then. 
I glimpsed him a few times when we I would be leaving one of the gorges and or one of the little canyons, and he'd be coming in. I, I see him like, oh god, I I got to keep running fast. I can't relax. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's definitely, he didn't give you a lot of cushion. He made you work hard. Yeah, I didn't know that I was like, I had a decent lead on him until I hit the turnaround at mile 24. Um, but yeah, then I kind of like settled in for a little bit. I was like, okay, I can kind of relax a little bit because I'm not trying to like burn all my matches right now. So I just settled in and then I just kind of found a groove towards the end and just pushed it and had a good finish. Everybody should be on notice that you just did what you did and your words out of your mouth were, I cruised it in, I could relax a little. That is a scary, scary thing coming from someone with so much talent and fitness such as yourself. I got to ask you, what was your favorite part out on the course today? What did you, what did you um, enjoy the most? Running behind those waterfalls. It was pretty great. Um, I think I, I like almost took like a wrong turn and I think Ryan Thrower was trying to get footage of me, but I, I probably ruined it. <laughs> and we just like, we're like, where do I go? Um, but yeah, going behind the waterfalls is so cool because this, the temps here aren't, you know, too much warmer than Boulder, but um, I was feeling the heat a little bit and just getting like a nice little misty, cool vista. It was really awesome. Just, you know, just being out here in the trees and in the waterfalls. Ah, oh, fantastic. My last question for you, buddy. I noticed your uh, aid station stops were incredibly fast, incredibly smooth. I got to know, who did you bring out for uh, your crew? Are they your crew for Western States? Or would you guys do a little, little no, prep this there? No, a happy accident. Um, well, not a happy accident. But uh, yeah, no, I had some friends who raced the 100K, uh, and crewed the 100K the day before, and we're just good friends. They're just uh, some good friends from Flagstaff. And I asked them if they wanted to hand me some bottles, and that's pretty much all I needed. And uh, they won't be crewing me at Western, but they'll be cheering for me. They'll be crewing other people. But, I mean, I can really get by with, you know, the bare minimum. Not that they did the bare minimum. They were awesome. But, uh, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Way to get out there and shred today. You gave us a show all day long here in studio. It was an honor calling your race and to watch you just come out and dominate a race in such great fashion with a you know we're looking at course record times we're looking at great competition and you you my man are now a sight to be seen on the uh the gorge top yeah. or not the gorge the western states top 10 list i think people are gonna yeah. they know to watch out for chris myers yeah <laughs> no pressure no so pressure. so much so much humility there thank you today for giving us a great show uh you know go go give your uh your fellow competitors and your podium uh friends there some high fives uh thanks for joining us and we can't wait to see you at western my man thank you thanks for having me so so from one likely uh up up and coming legend we've got a little bit of news it looks as though sarah beal it looks as though sarah beal has come through um cascade cascade locks for the second time in fifth place overall so she's not not flying. at all shocked not at flying. all shocked she is flying and speaking of flying it looks like we've got uh our podium has made their they've made their way into the aid station or into the finish line there yeah i actually thought that we saw jared foreman go through past yasin now on the on the live tracker it looks as though alex king uh is potentially that, coming in that for could third. that could be a you know just the bib Chip not thing. getting chipped yeah we'll uh, see through because it looks uh, like he's fallen back a little bit but i'm pretty sure yasin did capture that it was jared foreman yeah. so we will await with abated breath to see exactly what the top finishers are well we know for sure this is not alex king coming in because alex king was wearing it, that blue, that dark blue, blue top. dark top so that is going to be jared foreman from what i we're trying I to hit dylan and announce it yeah let's, let's listen to dylan a little bit <laughs> six two three yep six, that is jared, three, foreman. jared foreman and he picked up a puppy on the way well done I mean, what a fantastic pacer for that final little bit. Yeah, the last 20 meters. No paces allowed in this race. Yeah, no paces allowed. What is he doing? No, I absolutely <laughs> love it. There he is collapsing after putting on an absolute clinic on how to move forward through the entire race. Came out, started off 
ended strong, just kept going. Yeah, he looked really strong when we saw him just briefly on the footage with with uh, Yassim when he, he he caught the bottle mid air, right? As yeah, he was he was the him. infamous bottle catch through Cascade Locks, just yeah. absolutely dominated that. Fantastic. What a dude absolutely throwing down to round out that top podium spot. And it looks like, I mean, honestly, he left and crushed. Like Really he, close to gap. He he went out on a mission to do if he wasn't gonna catch him, he was gonna he was gonna work damn hard and you yeah. know and, and make try to make it happen. So Yeah. Yeah, if he wasn't gonna catch him, he was gonna die trying, and he absolutely got himself to that finish line and left every ounce on the course. So what what a great race, Mr. Jared Foreman. Congratulations. He is our third place finisher overall on the podium here for the Gorge Waterfalls 50K. Yeah. I love the comments. Chris Course Record Myers. I think that needs to be his uh his, his new moniker. He would hate that. The dude's so humble. Yeah. Um, you know, you gotta love it. He's he's young, he's talented. He's not letting it go to his head. He knows he has to continue to work super hard to compete with the best of the best. I don't think he has any any intentions otherwise. So he's yeah, not here absolutely. just to cruise it. He wants to prove it. We're back with you, Yassine. How's it going? Good. We had some great action here. Uh, we have uh, Lutz, first female, fly through here, joyfully running, heading towards the finish line, as well as Alex King moving ahead of Mike Nadasco, both of them in the aid station at the same time, but Alex King left before Mike. Mike, I got an update from a mutual friend, climbed Mount Hood yesterday. Of course. So, of course, because why not? Because <laughs> why not? We so, go, we'll, go uh, back to this, we'll go back to this age thing, Yassine. I mean, so we, <laughs> we, got, we got aging athletes running 10-mile road races the day before they come and do a 50K. We've got gentlemen in their 40s who are climbing mount hood before coming and doing a 50k what is wrong i with take us? back everything i said about old man strength being wisdom because that is not <laughs> wisdom is, no, nothing wise about it that. is what i think it is is you start hitting middle age and you know you start having that little bit of a crisis and you start thinking like i just got to do everything now before it's too late i got to get all the adventures in so you know you seen <laughs> you said something that uh that struck me a little our women's leader, can you reconfirm who that was? Lutz. Yes. So Michelle First. Lutz has passed Sarah Beal. Um, shoot, I'm sorry. No, no, no it's, it's, I, I just want to double check. Sarah Beal was in that bright pink top, like orangey yes, pink. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Uh, my apologies. My apologies. Uh, I misspoke. It was the same leader as the first way out. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. So it is Sarah yeah. Beal. We apologize, Sarah everybody. Beal. We my, my fault. we thought we had to change it. We're just going to go ahead and blame Yassine. That was that yes. was Yassine's fault. That was my fault. I I need another cup of coffee. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think we have a cold brew waiting for me in the in the camper van. So um, my apologies. But there's a lot of action going on here, and she was looking just as strong as she came through the first time and she's probably hitting the bike path as we speak she came through here eight minutes ago so she's on her way into into town if into she if she passed too. you eight minutes ago i would say that yep. she's going to be a couple yep. minutes away from the bike path and we should see yep. her exactly. probably in 10 minutes get within range of uh of the city here so we'll keep an eye out for her we've got eyes in the sky thank you to our wonderful drone team for providing not only some amazing views and vistas but ah these these guys have been crushing it all day giving us everything they can weaving in and out of trees doing absolutely the most to bring you all the action that is the gorge waterfalls 50k i would be remiss if i did not shout out speedland shoes for making not only great product but making this live stream possible they are the ones that we have partnered with to make this happen not only because we share a common bond in being young shoes with so much tenacity All right terra fraga there terra yes fraga. that's a terra fraga move right there terra fraga right there flying quick handoff 
bang, in and out, charging. Absolutely not amazing. Let, that girl is not shredding. letting anybody. I mean, slamming the door shut on this race. Yeah, no, she's going to leave nothing out there as she usually does. But again, shout out, thank you, Speedland, for uh, for for partnering with us to make this broadcast happen. Both young companies wanting to make big moves in this in our respective spaces, and we we share that. We share top quality. We share all nothing but giving our best foot forward with our products both us here at mountain out outpost and also speedland so thank you guys for being a part of this also we got a shout out to free trail and to daybreak racing for partnering on to make this race happen so many great memories are being made this weekend because of what they were able to pull off because what they were able to do with this race and the community event that they've made it also, I'm just going to shout it out one more time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yasin and the wife Wolf, Wolfpack for not only giving us great coverage out there at Cascade Locks, but for supporting all of these runners and making dreams happen. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate the shout out. Thank you all for asking me to be a part of it. And on that note, Yasin, we're going to cut from you for a hot minute. You hang tight. We've got one quick ad that we want to show, and then we are going to catch our women's podium coming into Cascade Locks to the finish line. Roger that. Today's broadcast is also brought to you by Speedland, the best trail shoes ever created. This is the brand new commission, the GS PDX, the sixth model in Speedland's short but illustrious history. You'll notice it's a throwback to the initial colorway of the first model, the SL PDX, though this is built on the GS platform. Plenty of cushioning to take you as long as you want to go on the trail. Everything you've come to expect, the double boa fit system, the HTPU midsole, the drop-in P-backs, uh, secondary midsole, also removable carbon plate, nothing better in the speed lane. Go pick up a pair of the GS PDX. You'll find a link and a discount code here in the description on YouTube. And we are back here at the Gorge Waterfalls 50K here at Cascade Locks, Oregon. I'm Zach Marion, joined by my co-host, Simon. How are you doing, Simon? I'm having the day of my life. You know what this is? I thought yesterday, yesterday was great. Yay. Today, I, here we I go. Oh, hold here on. Go. What do we got? We got action here. This way, this way, this way. Third this woman. Way. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, Michelle Lutz uh, just came through here 35 seconds ago. And, oh, folks, I think there's a chance that she could catch Michelle. Um, oh, yes. So this is we've got a second race and on third. Our hands, folks. I absolutely told you, it is third and fourth place that is going third to be the race of the day. Yes, That is third and fourth right there, folks. And Michelle Lutz looked a little bit frazzled, to be honest. Like, she didn't know which way to go. She was looking a little complacent. Um, obviously fatigued, rightly so. Um, but we're going to have a race for the podium. They're Amazing. literally like 35 seconds apart. And Tara didn't go through that long ago. I mean, she literally ripped through. There was a little gap. And then these two girls are shooting for third and fourth. So Tara obviously yeah. made some moves to put herself up there. Tara, Tara made a move and Tara was absolutely charging. Tara was looking really strong and light on her feet. Um, so I think like, as you said, I think it's going to be third and fourth for that podium, rounding out that podium. That That's my prediction. So we just saw Lauren... Puritz, who yes, just went Laura. through. Yes, correct. Amazing. That is going to be a that is going to be a, a race of the day. We're so excited to see yeah, it. I think I'm we've so got good. eyes right now on. Let's see who that is. That's not Sarah Beal. It might be bike. Those are bikers. They're moving way too fast. Yeah. Got a little excited for a hot second. Oh, but there is a runner right there behind. Just coming in. Who have we got here? We think this might be either Alex King. That's going to be Alex King. That is Mike the dark Bonanet. blue top. Oh, it's Alex King in the blue top. Yep. We've got Alex King coming in right now. Oh, fantastic to see him have a great day. Coming back after a full Achilles rupture. Uh, 
doing that thing that we all do, a sport that we have, probably have no business playing yeah. <laughs> outside yeah. of running. Uh, playing basketball sounds like he ruptured his Achilles, had his, uh, he had a family member, I believe, like an, either an uncle or a grandpa or something like that, sew it back together for him. Wait, in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bite on, weird bite on this wood surgery. spoon, son. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, he, so he's coming back from a pretty sizable injury, and to come back in this form and to, you know, put the podium on notice that he's chasing him all day. 100%. What a fantastic dude. Not only that, but he is just genuinely one of the best human beings you're ever going to meet. Super kind, super amazing. We even saw him earlier today reach on the table and grab some gels and remembered that there was the, the two gel two. rule yeah. and he wanted to keep them for everyone behind him to make sure they didn't run so out of put stock. Two back. So mid-race, just like grabbed a handful, ended up putting two back. There he's looking back, making sure no one's chasing. Something tells me he's not going to let up either way. No. So to, to go back to your question, today has been fantastic. And I think the thing that I'm most excited about is, is all the stories behind the performances. You know, I'm, a, I'm sort of obsessed as an editor of a long form running magazine with hey. this whole idea of, uh, of the stories behind That's the tough. athletes. You know, I mean, what you were just describing about, you know, coming back from an Achilles injury and you can just imagine all of the physical and mental work that it's taken for yeah, um, for Alex to get to this point. Yes, and correct. I just find that absolutely inspiring. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And that's that's one of our goals here at Mountain Outpost as we bring these races live and showcase them to the world. It's not just because, you know, the action is nonstop and amazing um, and it's a sport we all love and the community is quite literally the best community in any sport in the world challenge me fight me whatever you want i will die on that hill trail running is the best community ever but it's to tell the stories of all of these athletes and tell the stories of not only the race but but the people behind that and so that's part of our goal here is to make sure we we do share those stories and that you know these athletes are getting the moments that they deserve that you know their their highlights of their their career right here um, and stuff that they can show their posterity. Yeah, and one of the other fantastic things about running is is how the athletes at the very sharp end of the sport, the elite athletes, also want to be part of the community. They'll be hanging around at the finish line, cheering in the runners who are going to be taking three or four or five hours longer. I mean, Yassine doing his stint at the at the aid station, you know, cheering everyone through. Um, you know, how Kern are turning out and 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 participating in these sorts of races. That's an amazing aspect an amazing element of this sport you know it's not like for, as a brit obviously our national sport is soccer and those soccer players in the main are, are very uh uh separated from the fans whereas here um you know it's all we're all doing the same thing on the same course at the same moment crumbs just saw yes. just saw alex king barely squeeze past a couple of pedestrians who yes, are strolling what? down the high street there on his way in yeah, fantastic. So yeah, I think uh, also for, for us as, you know, for me as a European and coming here and, you know, having the opportunity to meet athletes and talk to them, you know, over the last few days has just been wonderful. I'm just really stoked. Am I allowed to say that? As You're a allowed to say stoked. We'll let you, we'll let you borrow that. I'm going to start stealing crumbs. I like that. Oh. That's, that's not one that I've, I've used regularly, <laughs> but. Uh, People will be like, oh, do we, where have you been on holiday recently? Oh, crumbs. Uh, right. Uh, no, this is fantastic. We're, we're going to see Alex make his way to the finish. Our fourth place male who gave it everything he had today coming back from, from his injury. Fantastic. Go, sir. That is amazing. And while we are awaiting him, it looks like we've got, Hey guys, can you hear us? Yeah, we got you loud and clear. My, my man. Hey, hey I got, I got second place finisher for you here at the interview. Fantastic. Thank you, my sir. Uh, are you, are you going to interview him or you want us to? No, 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 no. You, he's got the, he's got the everybody for you guys to ask him whatever you want. So <laughs> Fantastic. Go. We've got you, buddy. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that as we watch Alex King make his way to the finish here. So Dylan, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. It was uh, you made for a very exciting race for us here in the studio. We thoroughly enjoyed when we could catch the the time splits 
uh, it was super exciting to to watch the race unfold. Yeah, Had it was able to stay relatively close until just the last bit there. How but did you How did you feel the race? Fun. How did the race play out against your sort of plans for it before you started? Um. Oh my gosh! Sorry, it's very windy. Uh, quite honestly, it it didn't go like quite quite as planned. I was not able to push as much on climbs as I wanted, but I my main focus was just on fueling enough because that's that's something I've tr had trouble with. So I was just even when I was feeling kind of bad going on a climb or something like that, trying to get the gels in, keep drinking water, and uh, I knew if I was able to do that, I'd at least be able to to keep it rolling pretty well, even if it wasn't exactly how quick I wanted to be going. Yeah, and you absolutely had a fantastic day out there. You shredded really well. You went up against, you know, a very formidable opponent in Chris Myers. It sounds like you guys battled it up the climb. Chris was like, dude, he, like Dylan just took it up the climb and I could not keep up with him. Uh, and then he was able to make that pass on the ground. Um, what was it like running out there? You know, it seems like you were kind of in no man's land, not really around anyone for a majority of the race. Were you trying to run scared? Were you running scared? Were you running like more like chasing and hunting? What was your mentality out there? Um, I would say I was just trying to keep it controlled and not redlining too hard on climbs. I, you know, going past folks on the trails, they would, they kept letting me know what the time gap was up to Chris, and it was seeing right around the two minute mark for quite a while there. So, I I knew I didn't need to like absolutely hammer a climb that I was still still making good time and uh, that was that was fun but i didn't didn't try and absolutely send it to try and catch up with him because that that would backfire very quickly yeah i mean as such a young athlete in the sport at 24 years old it sounds like you've got some wisdom in there i'm going to imagine that part of that wisdom comes from uh big daddy hal who i've heard you work for him correct yeah, yeah, I'm one of the one of two other guys that okay, work at Rogue Valley Runners in Let's Ashland, Oregon. Yeah, what a fantastic story. I actually was just out there myself, spent some time in Ashland. You guys have beautiful country to run in, some amazing trails. In fact, I hit Wonder Trail three days in a row just because it was so, so epic and so awesome. How did that type of training, that those trails you have out there, help you for this race? It's... I mean, Ashland is an amazing spot if you want to get really fit. It's, you know, endless uphill and downhill round, round the year. You know, we've got the lower part of the watershed that stays practically snow-free all year. So we're able to get good climbing and relatively steep climbing if you want to, whenever you want. Fantastic. I think we're just going to cut to Sarah coming in. Stay, stay yeah. with us while we just watch Sarah come in uh, to take the win ladies the and gentlemen race. this is your 2024 gorge waterfalls 50k female top podium finisher this is f1 none other than miss sarah beal who quite literally took it out in the lead and held it all day long what a proper shred of a race just crushed it literally finishing in sixth place overall wow none of them the great lottie brinks who was our first place finisher in the 100k crewing her i gotta say some of that luck must have rubbed off a little bit some of that talent rubbed off that or it's just greatness chasing greatness right there yeah. I think she may have come in fifth overall. I think she was fifth overall. Yeah, it looks as, to, as though Michael Nanasco is... Uh, yep, as this, up, as this Michael. updates, that is our fifth overall. So fantastic. Holy do, cow. Do we get to go back to Dylan? Dylan, are She's you still, still here, there? man? Yeah, yeah. He's still here. Oh, he's looking very pro. You looked very pro then as you stepped back into shot. That I love cool. that. Well I love that. You've done this like you've done this before. Yeah. Um, I wanted to... I wanted to, to uh, to account, recount a moment there that we got to witness going into Cascade Locks the second time. You got to pass Hal Kerner as he was leaving and you were coming in. Did he fire you on the spot or was there a any, any words said? Oh, no, I'm sure we'll have a big talk later, later <laughs> next week. 
<laughs> no, no, we we just yeah, give a little shout. You know, he was he was just coming out of the A station, so I think I kind of surprised him because he was just like five steps out of the A station and he turned the corner and I was there. But it was, <laughs> got a little high five was all pretty much. I, yeah. guess, I guess when it comes to how like he's got nothing to prove. He's already he's, proven it all. He's, he's, got he's not going to feel threatened. He's like, I'm, no, I've had my my moment. He's known around uh, Ashland as the big cat, courtesy of his, his two Western States wins. The yeah, big cat. I love that. Yeah, because the, the Cougar trophy for it. Of course. Absolutely so, love yes, it. Do you glean, do you glean like information from him? Do you like, hey, teach me your ways? Are you a young Padawan? What is What is the relationship like there? Oh, it's mostly like, vague analogies but typical you know, typical how about training he'll yeah that's that's pretty typical amongst the the trail runners you know not not taking it too seriously but the, you know we'll talk about they'll like ask me like what i'm doing for a log run and you're like oh are you gonna like push that climb and i'm like sure sure hell i'll push that climb so there's little things but we don't like we don't take the training too too seriously as you know, he knows I take it seriously enough on my own. So, I I love that. I absolutely love that. He's got a wealth of information. Um, you, sir, are one of the up and comers, young guns in the sport, who are really making a name for yourself, specifically out here at Gorge Waterfalls. What was your favorite part of the race this year uh, compared to last year? Um, I think both years. I really love that first climb. Like, it's kind of a brutal way to start it but it is it is a really nice it's not too long the footing's good and it's just a a good way to start it out it keeps keeps you from like absolutely crushing it right at the beginning because you know you're going up pretty steep stuff there so you can't be going too crazy i just yeah that's my favorite part of the course probably Awesome. Fantastic. Mr. Dylan Humberger, thank you so much for joining us here on the Mountain Outpost finish line for a nice little interview, recapping your amazing day out there. Just literally shredding this course yet again. Uh, you had a little chip on your shoulder. You came back, you crushed it. Um, I got to ask before we let you go, what are we going to see you at next? Um, right now, the next race I'm signed up for is Broken Arrow. I'm, yeah, I'm doing the 23K there. So that's, I'm not going to do anything between now and then with the, I just did Chuck Nut four weeks ago. So the Chuck Nut and Gorge 50K double was pretty close together. So I'm kind of stoked to not race for a little bit. I, I do have to say before we let you go, you had a little shout out from Brett Hornig in the chat right here saying you're training in the right direction. Third last year, second this year. I hope we see you back next year to claim that top spot. You, sir, are absolutely a beast and deserving of it. Thank you for joining us. We're going to let you go so you can go enjoy one of those amazing Gorge Beer Company beers. And, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And that is going to be another amazing finisher here. Wow. Oh, man, Simon, it doesn't get much better than this. I'm so jazzed. So much exciting racing, honestly. Um, it's, uh, you know, a relatively new experience for me trying to keep up with the racing and say vaguely intelligent things. I'm sure I had a bit of, <laughs> I had a bit of shade thrown at me yesterday on the in the chat. Thanks to the... Uh, to the people that decided they would critique. If you don't uh, got haters, you're not doing it right. <laughs> I've yeah. got many. I'm doing something right, I suppose that, or they're all they're all correct. I don't know. And really, I don't care because we are doing some amazing work here, bringing everybody. Oh, that was another solid, solid finish line all the way to the line, collapsing, collapsing in just absolute agony of that's what it takes to get the but race stopping done. The watch. I think that is our uh, Michael Nanasco, if I was incorrect, um, after watching all day. But wow, just literally leaving it all out there. Oh, this is fantastic. I love it. I love what we're doing. We're still keeping our eyes on as we, we sat there during uh, our interview. We broke a moment for those that are just tuning back in for Sarah Beals. First place female 
finisher yeah, of the uh, the Gorge Waterfalls 50k. She's just chilling, getting herself. Uh, yeah, together. she's getting her getting herself put together. Probably throwing some warm clothes on. She's just chilling, Indian style, like it ain't no thing. Just cross legged. Just yeah, what, that was fun. What 50k? Yeah, I love, I love it. As pointed out, it is so extremely humbling and also just hilarious to see these athletes like leave it all out there, have an incredible race, and then they get on the interview 30 seconds later like nothing happened. Just, it's fantastic. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, it's been fascinating watching the two two different races unfold. That's ah, Terra Fraga right Terra there Fraga on our screen. Terra Fraga coming in for a third place finish here in the 50K, using this as a training race, as a catapult into the UTMB Argentina races. Um, she's going to go out there and dominate as she has done in the past. So super amazing to see her have a great day. You know, what she considers a training day is still some of the rest of us would consider an amazing race. Achievement of a lifetime in my case. Yeah, absolutely. She's still, she's going to round out that female. I think she might be second. I was going to say, did she make that pass? I think she might be second. I mean, one of the most, again, one of the most exciting things about watching the race is that when we're she left that aid station, she was, she was tearing it. Yeah, she was tearing it. So if she's, so she may have passed, we think, yeah, Lauren yeah, yeah, Perrette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep an eye and third. see. So again, you know, an exciting race in that there's been lots and lots of changes, apart from the top two men, lots of changes throughout the field. Lots of changes, you know, in in people. A couple of people dropping out at the, in the top of the at the sharp end of the race. It makes it for makes for a very exciting spectator experience. And like one thing I know, like Terra Fraga does push hard to every finish. Like she leaves it all out there. In fact, I guarantee you, we're gonna see her almost get hit by a car. This honestly, as we were watching uh, Sarah Beale coming in, she was she dodging cars, dodging left and cars. Right. I like didn't want to say it and break, uh, break our second place finisher interview. Yeah, we were trying to break give, his concentration. But man, I was just like, what he had to say. like biting knuckles, yeah. making sure like, oh, please don't let her get hit. Honestly. This is when the camera guy needs to run like side by side and be like waving down cars. It's incredible. Tara's not letting any of that get in the way of her complete domination of this final stretch of the 50k you know she she pushed really hard on that climb and descended really well with a really strong finish and if if this plays out as we are seeing according to our tracker according to all the information we have she will have taken second place and she will have passed Michelle Lutz and Lauren Puretz. I mean, if she's, if she, I think she's coming in second. She's gone overall from 21st to 19th to 18th to 8th. In true Terra Fraga fashion, just an absolute beast out of Issaquah, Washington. Um, she's no, her and Michelle had a great duel today for almost the entire day. I had a sneaky suspicion that she was going to leave Cascade and use that as her like her grind, her yeah. pass, her move on the first the first on the on the out leg of the out and back. Yes, yeah. and she absolutely did. She closed the gap, came back strong. There she is. Two second place finishes here at Gorge Waterfalls, both in the 100K and the 50K today. Phenomenal. What an amazing athlete. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Tara Fraga, our women's second place finisher in the Gorge Waterfalls 50K, having moved up all day, having played a conservative beginning, using this as her training race to catapult into UTMB Argentina. Safe to say she got a really proper day out there. Yeah, she really did. And not to take anything away from any athlete who goes out in first place and hangs on for the win, but I just find it so impressive when somebody is in third or fourth or fifth place and then works their way through the field and ends so strongly like that. It's uh, 
Really impressive. Oh, wow. Last year's winning time. Lauren Puretz making her way in third as well, having passed Michelle Lutz. She is going to round out our podium. Yeah, she left looking a little frazzled, but like frazzled in that high energy way. Not yeah. frazzled as in like I'm lost, but frazzled as in like, holy crap, I'm throwing it down. Like, and there's I've got to go. Here. Yeah, yeah, I've got to go now. Yeah, yeah. And she made good use of that energy making her way down the final stretch, hitting the grass of the Marine Park. This is such an epic finish line. I love it. It's just going to get more and more crowded yeah, as busier runners and come in and, and their crews come in watching them for the finish. Yeah, Tara. Lauren Puretz Lauren. out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, making her, her way into the final position on the podium. It is official. She is our third place finisher. Third place finisher. Brilliant. What a fantastic race. Another great race of, you know, and a great example of, of racing with a strategy of staying consistent but conservative and then I, leaving it all out there. I can't, I can't wait for us to have an opportunity to talk to them. I mean, I just think uh, both Tara and, and Lauren, you know, coming through the field. I mean, the number of people that they've passed from in, you know, in the case of Tara from 21st up to 10th overall. Yeah, so that uh, that puts three of the top ten being women. Yeah, here at at Gorge Waterfalls 50k. Just wow. Yeah, fantastic. We've got our fearless leader, Mr. Dylan Bowman, the King of Nar, just being doing putting his another hat on and being our MC at the finish line. He's a man of many hats. Man of many hats. All Red Bull, but many hats. Yeah. Uh, and we've got just off to the left there. That was Summer, one of our amazing photographers out on the course. She is going to have so many great photos out there. We saw her earlier at the waterfalls. She snapped a photo of me last year that is to this day one of my most favorite racing photos. So Brilliant. Huge shout out to Summer for being an incredible photographer, capturing some of the most beautiful moments of, you know, of every runner out here. I mean, there's, like Dylan said, 1,200 runners over the weekend, yeah. just laying it all out there, having a dang good time, um, just sh absolutely shredding. And we are all going to congregate there at the Marine Park uh, this afternoon and for more games, more excitement. And then after that, head over here to Gorge Beer Co. for a drink, for some food. It's going to be absolutely amazing. If this race is not on your list already, after seeing this live stream and all of these beautiful shots, I, I hope that you are gearing up for Gorge Waterfalls 2025. Oh I mean, the race was a complete, oh, was completely sold out. Ryan right Challenge absolutely the yeah the race is completely sold out, sold out this year so i would say you know anyone that hasn't been completely uh completely convinced another finisher there uh anyone that isn't completely considering getting their their entry in you know fast because the race sells out as soon as it goes, as soon as that registration goes up within a very short time, it sells out. So be ready to go. When you see that announcement, hop on, make your decisions. Now, what do you want to race? Are you going for 30 K hundred K or 50 K you've got your choice. This is a buffet of ultra running all weekend long. Um, just amazing trail running. You can get whatever you want in. Hey, if you're going to come out and crew someone, sign up for the 30 K, get a good sign day in and then crew, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, or pace guaranteed perfect weather. <clears throat> it's amazing, amazing <clears throat> weather. Guaranteed perfect weather. I would never guarantee it here in the Pacific <laughs> Northwest, uh, but we lucked out with some fantastic weather this year. It has been absolutely amazing. And we're just seeing the runners coming in in a, in a fairly consistent stream now. Um, super exciting. Really hoping that we'll get an opportunity to speak to... Uh, our three podium finishers in the women's 50k race. Just a reminder, Sarah Beal finished first. Uh, 
In second place was Tara Fraga and very close behind Lauren Perrette. So uh, we've had three, uh, the three women are in. We're hoping that we might be able to get a word with one or two or all of them. That would be fantastic. I just barely walked over to get a, uh, a jacket on as we've opened up all the patio doors and windows here at Gorge Beer Co. And I got eyes on our fourth place finisher, female it. finisher. Uh, Michelle Lutz is coming in as we speak, making her way down, uh, down those final three stairs of the course that are the most the dangerous steps of, of the entire fear. thing. So we're getting an update from our team over at the finish line that we're going to be getting Sarah Beal uh, on on a, on the ca on the microphone, so we can uh, hear from her. So hopefully that'll happen soon. She was she was looking very chill at the finish line. She looked as though she was just relaxing and. Today was just a jog for her, man. She just <laughs> went out for a little jaunt. Decided. She rolled into Cascade Locks and decided she just wanted to go for a run. Someone gave her a bib. Just dominated. I'm thinking that she's probably going to have done what you and I are doing now, which is just making sure we've got some warm clothes on. I mean, Debo was was talk, making excuses for his um, sweaty demeanor. Uh, after a mile following our male men's winner, Chris Myers. Not, not the easiest thing to do. And there we are. We have fourth place female coming in after being up there almost all day in that second place position Michelle and pushing is. herself, um, you know, taking, getting, getting, uh, getting it done today, really pushing herself, letting it happen. Just had a fantastic day. Just shy of that podium, but definitely worthy of all the high fives and praise out there because she really really let it out there so we've got some questions i don't know if we can answer this question about when when does the uh let's let's shoot a message over to our uh, our race director and yeah. see, when does registration uh, open yeah. Okay. So it looks as though we're going to get our first placed, first place female. Sophie Anders from Fort Collins, Colorado. Can Alex you guys hear us? We we've got you. Okay. Yes, we do got gotcha. you. Here's Sarah. Sarah, this is Zach over at uh, Gorge Beer Co. I've been on the the feed all day, watching you absolutely shred it. First and foremost. Congratulations on being our Gorge Waterfalls 50K female champion. You have etched your name um, on that list of fantastic performances with some of the best in the world here at this race. Tell me a little bit about your day. How 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 did it go out there? <laughs> well, thank you. Um, it was great. I honestly felt pretty good wire to wire. Um, and my biggest goal coming here it was just to have fun with racing again. And uh, I think mission accomplished. <laughs> the whole day was super fun. You absolutely looked like it. Every time we saw you, you were smiling. You were jazzed. Rich Lockwood and Clark both commented on just how happy you were uh, at the aid stations. You seen to Boone there at Cascade Locks both times was just like, yeah, she's she's got this. Like this is her race to to have right now. She's looking like she's enjoying it and running with a lot of happiness. Um, talk to me a little bit about that. Like your focus was to run with happiness. What like are we anticip were we coming back from something that required you to love running again? Tell me more about that. Yeah, um, I think just yeah, the last yeah, yeah, couple yeah, races yeah, that I've done yeah, yeah. Um, have been a letdown, and uh, I just wanted to have a day where, you know, I, I felt good um, overall, and uh, I just had fun with racing. I think after Black Canyon, um, I was pretty bummed, not uh, super stoked with racing, so I wanted to pick a race that uh that i knew was a good time overall and uh i heard great things about gorge so um this is my first race back and uh yeah i couldn't be more happy with that choice yeah no you you made a decisive move um early on in the race leaving ainsworth the aid station and getting into the driver's seat 
uh, on the road section. Did you make a pass there? Uh, I think it was a little bit before the road section, uh, but I knew that uh, that I could use the the little road section, the couple miles there, to my advantage to get a little bit of a gap. Um, so I. I wanted to do that, but also not get a little carried away on the road as well. Yeah, yeah. Still a lot of race to be had after that road. You don't want to burn all your matches in two miles. Um, yeah. What was your favorite part of the course? You came in looking to run with joy. You found it. But what else did you see out there that really just made you made you stoked on life? I would say the waterfalls for sure. I was trying to like watch them, but also not fall on the rocks. Um, so uh, yeah, but going under the waterfall, that was that was amazing. Yeah, I want to hear from you. Tell the tell the viewers at home what like what were the conditions like out there? How technical was it? How like it seems to be a mix of everything. But but let's hear from you what uh, what it was like. It was definitely a mix of uh, a little bit of everything. I feel like maybe that first section was uh, pretty rocky and technical. Um, and then a little bit of, uh, of that mixed in, but then you had some road sections, some smoother climbs and descents. Um, so uh, kind of get the best of all worlds with, uh, with the race out there. Yeah, you get a little bit of everything, which makes for a fantastic time. At any point in the race, were you running scared? Were you, what was your thought process out there in terms of the competition? Um, yeah, so that last big climb, um, coming down with about four or five miles to go, uh, descending is not my strong suit, and I knew that there were uh, some ladies behind me that were very strong at that, um, and also with four miles to go, I, I had a little bit of a, a, a stomach uh, throw up um, situation. So I was a little scared during that uh, part. Um, and then I hit the last couple miles on road and felt pretty confident with that. But uh, that last little descent um, mixed some stuff up in my stomach and uh, just not my strong suit in general. Well, when you shred that hard, sometimes the stomach definitely feels it. Uh, you know, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to throw you over to Simon. He's got a couple questions for you. I was just, uh, okay. you know, observing how you how you conducted the race. I think one of the most impressive things is your overall position. You went from 17th to 11th to fifth. How did that? You know, was that part of the plan to sort of work your way through the field, perhaps start not conservatively, but start a little easier and then pick people off as you went through? I definitely wanted to run smart, and that was uh, that was the goal. I think that uh, that climb um, out of the I forget which aid station it was, um, but the climb, the last like big climb, uh, that's where I started to pick off some more people. Um, and I like climbing, so I kind of used that to my uh, to my advantage on on that section. So coming out of Cascade Locks on the out and yeah. back, yeah, 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 definitely. You seem to sort of. Come, when you came back and we saw you with Yassine, well, Yassine saw you come through that aid station with the last 5K to go, suddenly your position in the overall field, you'd, you'd moved up massively. So congratulations on that. That was, uh, that was really impressive you. to watch. You're yeah, getting I a little bit really of love here. That. You're getting a little bit of love here in the chat from a Mr. Michael Owen, who says that he's known you since you were 18, and he literally watched this just to see you crush um oh, hi mike <laughs> you're getting hi, mike. so much love um oh. honestly after a race like today and having just the demeanor that you have of smiling on the course and bringing so much greatness to this wonderful sport of trail running thank you so much for sharing some time with us congratulations again on your absolute dominant victory here at the gorge waterfalls 50k we're gonna let you go grab a beer relax a little bit and then we will uh we do have one final question for you where do we see you next uh so i am doing quad rock 50 in a month um but before that i have crew duties at canyons uh for my friend mary so be there and then uh quad rock and we'll we'll let you shout out mary yeah. real quick who 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 are you pays who are you crewing um mary Den denholm uh yeah she's gonna crush uh the 100k Oh, fantastic. We can't wait to see how that plays out. Again, thank you so much. Go go get some well-deserved rest, and uh, we can't wait to see you at your next one. All right. Thank you guys so much. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Always 
always a joy being able to speak with uh, someone as just humble and amazing as Sarah Beale after the day that she put out there. Well, and ta- talented and also clearly competitive. You know, she's somebody that exactly clearly is up for the challenge, which is fantastic. You know, I, always so impressive. Yeah, no, she she definitely decided that she was going to come out here and find her joy. And I have to say that maybe that is the best way to run, running with joy and finding that, like, we all started doing this because we loved it, not necessarily because we were like, oh, man, I'm just naturally really good at this. I'm going to go shred and just try to dominate the world of trail running. Whoa. I think I think by and large, most of us started doing this sport because we loved the community we loved the trails we loved the competition whatever it is it was something that we loved and uh, her getting back to that has proven an extremely successful tactic in her performance because she came out here and dominated in an incredible fashion and had a fantastic race yeah i mean it's an unbeatable combination right to be physically talented put in the work do the training but at the same time just just be like having the the seemingly the best time on the trails i mean you you just can't beat that that's just that's just everything so does this look as though we're going to have an opportunity to speak to tara now if we can go back to the start finish area i think it yeah might let's see if shad can't uh that we're about to get back over there oh here we go yeah call her over tell her to, to fend here. off she's all here. of her friends tell her to- Maybe she needs a jacket. Oh, yeah. oh she looks as though she's going to be. Right. Which, which side is this? Uh, left, left here. Yeah. And then I'm going to let the studio inter- inter- uh, interview you, so you should be able to hear them. Can you guys hear us? Oh, yeah, we, we got you loud and clear. Yep. Zach Marion's voice right there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's, it's like you've heard me before. Uh, first and foremost, Tara, congratulations on a fantastic shred out there on a course that you've already proven yourself to be an amazing athlete on. You moved up really well throughout the race, and I kind of want to hear uh, your experience out there, how that played out. Um, I didn't feel very good, like, most of the day. Um, so I was just trying to... Um, stay calm and like take it just be smart um for like a big chunk of the day um this was like i mean obviously always trying to compete but this was more of like a training piece for me um i have an a race in a couple weeks down in argentina so i was just trying to i was like my fighting legs are there i'll go for it but if they're not i don't want to do anything stupid um so i tried to just play it smart and stay calm and then when I passed through Cascade Locks at mile 20, um, I think I just had enough, like I took enough caffeinated gels that I started feeling all right. Um, <laughs> so I just started chasing people. <laughs> yep. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, you, you made some moves up there and we do know that that climbing and descending uh, the, te- the steep technical stuff tends to be one of your fortes. Um, were you shocked at all when you were moving down the line throughout the day? How did the competition up front? Because we didn't get to see any of the passes be made, but there were they were definitely made. Talk to us about those. Um, <clears throat> well, Sarah and Michelle took it out so freaking hot on the climb. Uh, like within half a mile, I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> they were like already like five minutes up, it felt like. Um, and appreciate you saying that I'm like good at climbing and descending on technical. I'll correct you and say I'm pretty much only good at descending on technical. So um, I knew that was going to be the case. I knew I've there chased were, like, you three... and I know that's false. Patently false. <laughs> um, I knew that these ladies are all really, really speedy on like flowy stuff. Um, and so I, I felt like just raw speed wise, they all definitely had like a huge advantage on me. But um, yeah, like you said, I really like rocks and, um, descending. And so anytime there was like a more technical section or a descent, I just used those sections and was like, this is your only chance to make up any ground. So I tried to just, um, send it on those. And I've like forgotten what your original question was, but I think it was <laughs> where the passes were made. Yes. Um, I passed, um, Sophie, Sophie and I were kind of working together there for a while. Um, somebody's coming through. 
Um, we came in cast through Cascade Locks the first time together. Um, and then a couple miles up, uh, she started cramping. Um, and so we sort of separated there. And then I caught Michelle like right at the turnaround. Um, she was kind of like <clears throat> taking a second to gather herself as she was like turning around. So I just tried to, yeah, uh, make a move and, um, yeah, get out of there, get out of the turnaround before she, she did. We got to see you rip through Cascade Locks the second time, and you came in like a fire was behind you, and you looked determined. Were you running scared at that point, or were you just wanting to get this done? Uh, both. Yeah, for sure, both. <laughs> um, I actually, um, if, you got, if people followed the race from last year, um, Matt Daniels, had like yeah, yeah. this wicked and like really strange performance where he like wasn't it's feeling very good um for most of it and then he like just went berserk on that like final out and back and i remember being at cascade lax when he came back through um the second time and he looked like he was like fleeing a crime scene i remember him just like <laughs> like wild in the eyes just like lying like looking like he was like yeah had cops on his tail or something um and so i was really trying to channel that that matt daniels energy. that was a fantastic matt daniels impersonation and you <laughs> absolutely crushed it to the finish line uh tara i, I definitely don't have matt daniels speed but uh not many of us can run a sub four minute mile anyway. um I do got to ask you before we let you go, you look like you're shivering there. You're a little chilly. So we're going to let you go get some, get some clothes on a uh, jacket on, but I want to ask you before we go, Hey, where are we going to see you next? And who did you bring out to crew and why? Um, you will, well, I answer the second question first. Um, Claire DeVoe was crewing me today. Um, we've had some fun this spring. We do a lot of our training together, and so I got to crew her at Chequenet for her win a couple weeks ago, which was really special. And then we crewed Christina together yesterday, and then, yeah, so I guess Christina and Claire were crewing me today. Um, yeah, it's so fun being able to, like, swap crewing and racing with, with your training partners. And then um, Rich Lockwood was here too, helping out. So, yeah, it was great. Um, sorry, and your first question. Where are we going to see you next? You? Yeah, um, I'm running Argentina by UTMB um, in a couple weeks in hopes to uh, get into UTMB in August, the big one. An another, so. another trip around the mountain for you there in Chamonix. We can't wait to see it. Tara Fraga, congratulations on a fantastic race. Thank you again for taking some time with us. Go get a jacket on, go grab a beer and celebrate this win. And we will, we will see you at, uh, in Argentina. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Tara. Awesome. That was Tara Fraga, our women's second place finish here at Gorge Waterfalls 50K. My brain is just about scrambled at this point. Just so many things have gone on during this race. It was so exciting. It was so incredibly fast. Simon, I'm going to let you take, take away this, uh, this interview here. Well, yeah, we're going to get the opportunity now to speak to our third place woman. Lauren Peretz. Can you hear me, Lauren? I can. Hi, Lauren. Well, you know, uh, first of all, congratulations on a on a podium position. Fantastic. Thank you. We um, so from the studio here, we've basically been following the race on the on the various cameras and the and the drones and what have you. And it, it was really fantastic to see you kind of execute your race and just look so happy whilst doing it. How how was how would you describe the experience of uh, of this fifty kilometer race for you today? Yeah, well, it's way more technical than I was expecting. So a lot of slippery rocks, which had a lot of sharp turns, which was uh, difficult and. My goal was to go out conservative, uh, really focus on fueling uh, and, and, and to have fun because, you know, that's what it's all about. Uh, so I did. I started off real slow. I was uh, not happy with how well I climbed, so I needed some work on that, but I uh, was able to kind of just keep moving uh, and then really started around mile 20 to feel 
finally good uh, and then just did what I could from there trying to catch girls uh, on the way the way back to the finish the mile 20 point um, I was about to say because we saw you come into cascade locks we saw you uh, yeah. pass Yasin uh, in his suit I don't know whether you yeah. took advantage of I the did. <laughs> I did it was one of those things I saw the car mile I was like a suit what is that so yeah a guy in a suit <laughs> Who's yeah. offering people champagne flutes? I mean, it's all a little bit oh, weird man, at that point. I missed. But I, I, you know, as a, I was wondering whether people would enjoy the idea of running, you know, away from the finish to to, to turn around and come back the way they've come. But it, you, clearly, from Cascade Locks out to the turnaround and back again, you made a huge, you made big moves in that in that section. Was that was that a good point in the race for you? Did you feel good? And what was happening in your yeah. in your head? I would say I finally felt good. First 10 miles were rough when I was like, do I just drop? And then I was like, I don't want to do that two mile start again. So maybe I should keep going. Uh, and then after that, it's just kind of like rolling, trying to trying to get going. Then my, mile 20 is when I actually start to feel warmed up. I, well, I think I do longer distances because <laughs> 30, 50K, 30 miles is a bit short. But, but yeah, so finally started to feel good. Like I could push a little bit around uh, mile 20, which is kind of the game plan to kind of start conservative, and then if I felt good around mile 20 to go. And so. you, and 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 you clearly, I mean, you were closing in fast on on Tara. I mean, in the end, yeah. um, just looking here at the, it was uh, well, maybe just just a little under two minutes between you guys. Yeah. Um, but were you aware that that she was not far ahead of you when you came out with the last sort of five kilometers to go? Did you know that that was? I did and I had no idea where she was. Uh, I think I had passed a uh, third place girl maybe, you know, within the last couple of minutes once I got back to that aid station uh, and I kind of didn't know where to go. Uh, so I think I was a little bit confused in there, but, uh, but to the aid station, people kind of pointed me where to go and I forgot to ask how far ahead the next person was. Uh, but no, I didn't know she was that close, uh, maybe. Next time we'll do a 60k. No, well, yeah. <laughs> you were closing fast, and it was very impressive. We we've had the we've yeah, got these amazing uh, overhead drone shots, uh, particularly uh, from when you hit the high street and you're coming down literally past the yeah. gas stations there. So we were able to sort of think to ourselves, well, you're moving. You were moving fantastically at that point, and we were thinking, well, is there a chance that you might actually yeah. close the gap uh, and uh, for second place? But in the end, third place, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I, I hope that you. you're um, super stoked with that. I'm using the word stoked. You can tell from my accent yeah. that stoked is not a word that is normally in my yeah. vocabulary, but I'm going to be using it a lot more. It's all right. That's what the hip kids are doing these days. I hope you're feeling stoked by it. Yeah, I am. I'm super happy that from how I started to how I finished, I could pull off what I did. So. So yeah, I'm happy about that. And a couple of last questions for you, uh, which we've been asking most of the athletes we've been speaking to. Um, who was here with you? Who was crewing you and keeping you upright? And where are we going to see you uh, in your in the next few races? You know, for the rest rest of the summer, say. Yeah. So I came out here with my girlfriend Chantel, who crews me a lot uh, and will be crewing me for Western States. Uh, this is her hometown, and so I jumped in on her race that she was going to do because uh, I kind of wanted one out here. Uh, so uh, her high school friend, Kyle, is uh, crewing us, um, which is super nice of him, last minute. Uh, so uh, that's who I came out here with. And then next couple races will be more training races in Colorado, some Air Viper races like the Royal Gorge, uh, just kind of to get some tempo work in. Okay. But I can't remember what's after that. Yeah, okay. Western States is the big one here. Western States is the big one. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Have you got anything, anything, Zach? No. Uh, honestly, Lauren, fantastic day. Thank you so much for giving yeah. us a show to watch and showing us what being consistent, smooth, competitive, and patient will do out yeah. there. It was honestly a highlight of the day watching you run out oh, of Cascade you. Locks. It was fantastic. So congratulations. Thanks. Awesome. Go 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 warm yeah, up. Go, go have go, a beer yeah. and we'll uh yeah. go celebrate. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. What an absolute pleasure.
to, I mean, to interview her and to talk to her and just honestly, Tara, the ever lovable, ever affable Tara Fraga, incredible athlete, just so much joy, so much excitement. Mm -hmm. I can really tell that, uh, you know, the top, top performing athletes of the race, um, by a majority were all running out there and were stoked they were happy they were running for joy they were trying to find joy in running again and that translated to a fantastic race yeah absolutely so quick recap sarah beale first first woman in followed in by tara fragger and very very close behind a lauren peretz who who who, and and all three of them really made moves up up through the field overall um so really as you just mentioned there to lauren as we finished that interview you know patient considered racing you know they thought about their tactics they knew where their strengths and weaknesses lay and um and it sounds as though they all executed really really well yeah it was a very measured race execution they they dosed appropriately um you know the toxicity is in the dosage so sometimes you run a little hard sometimes you end up putting yourself in a position of making sure you're giving the right dose of effort at the right time yeah. and they all executed that very very well yeah and for anyone sort of joining us chris myers uh was our lead uh, our first man overall winner uh dylan humberger coming in second place so those two guys went out you know in the at the first the first time check they were first and second and at the finish line they were first and second and then jared foreman uh who really came up through the field i mean he was seventh at ainsworth seventh at wachella w- wachella, wachella. <laughs> these names are fantastic yeah. they're a lot of fun fifth, i mean fifth. very smart race right yeah. moving up throughout the day yeah um and working his way to what we get to see right now this beautiful amazing drone coverage of the marine park here at cascade locks Sun Oregon. Soaked. it is a beautiful day Obviously a little windy, but man, I will take that over the conditions we've had in previous years. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a breeze ain't hurt no one, but the sun, the views, the competition, uh, freaking Gorge Waterfalls has it all, man. It, it really has does. everything. And it's got beer at the finish line from Gorge Beer Co. here where we are broadcasting out of. We When we are ready for the podium, we're going to cut it there so we get to see uh, these top podium finishers, both male and female, the, the awards ceremony that we are going to have here. Um, just an absolute day, Simon. It has been a pleasure to be able to call this race with you, yeah, an honor. to Thank enjoy you. that that amazing uh, accent that we don't get to hear too often here. <laughs> Thankfully. Uh, like, another oh, huge goodness. another huge shout out to uh, Run Like the Wind magazine, uh, you know, if, if Dylan and I have not confirmed how amazing this is, uh, check it out, uh, support this guy. Um, you know, he's gotten his, his three month tour of the U S here and he graciously provided us with, uh, copy 37 or 38. Was oh, it? we've, we, yeah, yeah. We've been handing them out. Uh, we've got lots of copies in the boot of our hire car. We're hoping to to distribute them. If if anyone's interested in where we're going to be, they can go to likethewindmagazine.com and there's a list of uh, there's a list of all of the spots that we'll be hitting. Um, we're going sort of towards the Bay Area from here, and then LA, and then oh, all over the shop. So we'd we'd love to meet runners um, as far and wide around this amazing country as as possible. But thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. And wonderful. as as Dylan and I have mentioned, those. Uh, those magazines are, are are more of a tabletop book than a magazine. It's absolutely beautiful, high quality, nothing but the best. Speaking of high quality, we also have Speedland, the presenters of this presentation of our Mountain Outpost broadcast, offering nothing but the best quality, highest quality footwear out there in the trail running game. Um, as you've seen on our desk all day long, we've got uh, three of the GS models, the PDX, which you can no longer get a hold of because that thing sold out immediately, the original TAM, and then we've got a new beautiful SFD on its way, uh, the black shoe. So incredible, so amazing. Um, yeah. It's been a fantastic day. We've seen both the men and the women throw down. We saw shakeups happen um, outside of the 
top male and female. Beyond that, it was just kind of a little shake up throughout most of the day, um, especially as it petered off into the top five, six, just everyone really kind of throwing it down out there and, and making their moves and taking their shots whenever they came along. And that is one of the beautiful things of the Gorge Waterfalls races is you've got a little bit of everything. If you want some vert, you've got some vert in there. If you want some road, they've got a little bit of road in there. You've got beautiful, smooth track where you can throw down some fast miles. And you've got some of the most technical, aggressive trails that I've ever been on. In fact, I rolled my ankle just yesterday going on a little shakeout. So it's got everything. So it makes the day fantastic. And this is one of the greatest weekends in all of the sport. Yeah. We've got a 30K. We've got a 100K. We've got a 50K. Whatever flavor you want, they've got. We're going to cut live yep. to the finish line here for the awards presentation. Straight from the interview, straight over to picking up her award. Here in second place. She was second place at the Gorge 100K two years ago. When she finished, she said, one of these days I'm going to win one of these. And I have no doubt that she eventually will. From Seattle, Washington, four hours, 37 minutes, 12 seconds. You can hear Dylan Bowman out there giving the shout outs, announcing everyone. Tara Fraga in second place. For the weekend here for our champion on the women's side. Unbelievable. She's got the course record at JFK. And here she is coming to the Pacific Northwest for the third time. She looks incredible every time I was trying to hang on to her on the course. She finishes in a huge course record here today, six, uh, 13 minutes faster than last year's winner from Boulder, Colorado, finishing it on the 426-27, Sarah Beal. <laughs> Get your Instagrams ready. Take some photos. That is Miss Sarah Beal taking the top spot the of the podium here at the Gorge Waterfalls 50K. Presented by Speedland. There is your podium. Just three lady crushers out there who put down a heck of a day. Sarah Beal, Tara Fraga, Lauren Puritz. Absolute shredders. How'd you feel out there today? It felt like it was a really smooth day, start to finish. Tell us about it, maybe where we could see an F. Um, yeah, I felt good uh, from the very beginning, and um, my goal was just to uh, like have fun racing, and uh, I feel like I accomplished that 100%. And uh, yeah, I'll be at Quad Rock in a month. Quad Rock in Fort Collins, Colorado. A final round of applause for our women's podium in the 50K. And thank you all for coming to our race. We are honored to have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Just hopping off that podium like it was like nothing. hop off the podium just like it's nothing. I would have died. That's Stephen White. Good job, Stephen. Okay, let's go to the men. Straight to the men. Yeah, this dude looks so good today. He steadily moved through the field. Until finally at the Cascade Locks aid station, he made his move, move while other athletes faltered. From the San Francisco Bay Area, facing in four hours, seven minutes, 42 seconds, Jared Borman. Way to go, Jared. <laughs> Best podium hat of the weekend for sure, too. Best podium hat. Okay. You heard me rave about this young kid from Austin, Oregon. He was third place here in the 50K last year. Oh, it's going down, down, oh my God! It's just like poetry, right? We're in Malcolm arrives right when we're doing the podium presentation. She probably wants to add a few words. It's just, it's just, it's just, yeah. I'm sure it's such a job of all to have a lot to do. It's so awesome to have her here. Great, also put a 12-hour on the broadcast yesterday. 
That's an ultra marathon. Double ultra marathon. Okay, back to the podium. You heard me last year in the 50K. He went toe to toe with Dakota Jones. They both sort of blew up, but he blew up a little less last year. He's back here today. I just really respect how this kid puts his nose in the fight. Only 24 years old. He's got the world ahead of him. He was third at Chuck and Nut. And here he is. Four hours, two minutes, 41 seconds, five minutes faster than last year. Dylan Humberger. Let's go, Dylan. He told me he's getting married on Western State weekend. All right, Dylan. And holy smokes, again, one of the performances of the weekend here from our men's champion. This guy was a surprise, potentially, of the Black King 100K, where he got third place, punched his golden ticket to the Western State. Coming here to Globe Waterfalls, we were very happy to have him on his journey towards North America's most important 100 miler. From SoCal, but recently moving to Boulder, Colorado, where it seems like he's finding his groove, finishing in a time of three hours, 51 minutes, six seconds, a new course record for Mr. Chris Myers. Snap those pics, post them on your Instagram stories. Tell your friends and family that you saw these legends dominate the gorge today. And then we're going to make Chris give a speech. Once I give you the thumbs up. Chris, I'm a speech guy. Dude, trying to hang on you today. I was going VOT max pace. It felt like it was a smooth day, start to finish. You ran, I think, seven minutes faster than Matt Daniels last year. Matt Daniels is here in his attendance. He broke the 30K course record. Tell us about your day, and then tell us about your build towards Western States. I had a great day. I was running uh, scarce with this guy for most of the day. I could uh, see him every time I, I left one of those canyons. I'm like, oh, I just want to run easy, but he wouldn't let me. But yeah, it was it was a pretty smooth day. Um, I felt pretty good the whole time. Um, could, could, uh, could be faster, could be faster than that, nice, but it was, it was a ton of fun. And the Boca Western continues. I uh, it's a few more miles now. I'm really left it fast. It's like a four hour run. <laughs> Amazing. Final round of applause for our men's podium here. Thank you all for coming to Gorge. It's an honor to have you here. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, that is your men's you podium for there. the Gorge Waterfalls 50K. Simon. What a day. What a day. Amazing. Any final thoughts on what just transpired? Well, I mean, as, any, as everyone can tell, um, this, is, this race is new to me. This area is relatively new to me. Uh, it's just been an absolute honor to come out here. I love this area. I think it's the most beautiful uh, part of the world. And, and just generally, I think the vibe around this race has just been fantastic. I mean, it's Dylan obviously does a fantastic job. I think the race organizers at Daybreak do a brilliant job. Uh, it was a pleasure having the opportunity to co-present uh, with Corinne yesterday and equally a great pleasure to, to co-present with you today. Equal is gracious. Um, Equal is gracious. So, yeah, it's just been a fantastic weekend. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the racing. I've enjoyed meeting so many passionate and, and uh, joy-filled athletes who are out here making the most of this glorious place. Absolutely amazing. I couldn't have said it better myself. It has been a fantastic 50K race today. Just shredders from start to finish. It has been a joy and a pleasure and an honor calling this race and being a part of it, not only organizing the broadcast here with Mountain Outpost, but being able to present with you today, Simon, was fantastic and call such an amazing race. Um, first and foremost, thank you to our community that has left the chat so lively all day long. We sincerely appreciate that. We don't have, uh, we don't have a job without a community. And we don't have a reason to be here without you guys. So thank you all. Round of applause to all of you. Round of applause to the rest of the Mountain Outpost crew. We've had drone pilots. We have had videographers. We have had field reporters. We've had a production crew, both Jamil and Jordan, behind the scenes making things happen. It has been an absolute banger of a broadcast. Uh, I am so stoked on it. If you didn't get inspired to come run this race next year off of seeing what we got to see today then you weren't watching close enough this has been amazing which of course we couldn't have put on without speedland again thank you so much speedland for 
presenting, uh, sponsoring this race and being the presenting sponsor of our broadcast. Uh, nothing but the highest quality footwear, trail footwear in the game. Amazing shoes, as you can see by the plethora in front of us. They make greatness happen um, on your feet out on the trails. Also, another huge shout out to Gorge Beer Co. Thank you for hosting us and letting us be here. And as you can see, drink in the views. Um, it has been a an amazing race. You guys have been an amazing venue supplying us with great food and beverages along the way um after party here tonight so if you are within the sound of my voice please come out here grab a drink grab some food um many of our yesterday's runners are out here enjoying it's been awesome to see all of you so we just want to end with the final thank you to free trail and daybreak for inviting us out and allowing us to be part of this incredible race and the broadcast team for it uh, free trail and daybreak resurrecting this race and making things happen. It has been an incredible weekend. I invite every single one of you to look forward to the 2025 iteration of this race because it ain't going anywhere soon. Race entries open September. Race opens should have their entries in September. Ready. September. Be ready because this does it sell out. out. Yeah. And as uh, they continue to make this race better and better every year, our broadcast will continue to be better and better every year for it. So thank all of you. Man, what is there left to do other than go and s go grab ourselves a beer? Yeah, for and sure. Enjoy that, Simon. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. Awesome. To everyone out there, I am Zach Marion with Mountain Outpost, joined by Simon with Run Like the Wind. Simon, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you at the next race.
Thank you.